Dumb Nation. And to those who bleed orange and black, Good morning. This is Murph and Marcus. Brian Murphy and Marcus the Waterboy Boucher. Streaming live at twitch.tv slash the sports leader. Live from the Golden One Center. Courtside. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're not at Golden One. We're here at our studio in San Francisco. Mine's on the beam, baby. Warriors, Kings tonight, 7 o'clock. What do you think? Road trip, buddy? Want a road trip? I mean, it is the battle of I-80, right? It is. Should we hop in the car right after the show, head one up to go snuff the beam up in Sacramento? That is if the freeways aren't shut down. Oh, friend, yes. shout out to you on the five-hour closure of the Golden State Bridge. I found a way home. I slithered my way home. Shout out to East Bay. Shout out to Bay Bridge. Shout out to Richmond San Rafael Bridge. And shout out all of us who made it home. So anyway, that's a topic for another day yeah. and another station. But uh, yeah, up, well, they could really disrupt on I-80. But yeah, man, hey, if you're going, have fun. If you're a Kings fan, we got a lot of Kings fans listening. I know. Mm -hmm. I We hear you. We hear you, Purple. We're just going to have to be on different sides tonight. And this is getting familiar, huh? Second straight, second straight spring, Kings and Warriors locking horns. And I, and I know it's not technically a playoff series, but back-to-back -back years, we get the first ever playoff series between the Warriors and the Kings last season, and now we're getting more. Part two of the Electric Boogaloo, part two of the Northern California rivalry. Bring it on, Murph. You actually just said, so is the, it's a great question. We should know this as paid professionals. Is the NBA play-in considered the playoffs? Ooh, are we going technicalities, or are you just asking my opinion? Uh, technicalities. I'm like, do the stats count? Because in my in opinion, playoff stats? the answer is no. Okay, so and it's I don't not, think it does count towards. So what playoff is it? Stats. It's like this little like purgatory. That's it. It's purgatory. It's it's like we're in a season it's, of lost. It's we're the right here in the middle of the purgatory, trying to <laughs> were figure you out. Were a lost guy? Not when it came out live, but I went back and watched it on Netflix. Oh, how did it? So I, I dove it, into it. How did it stand up all these years later? I thought like, the as first a, couple seasons were great. Yeah, and then they started time traveling, yeah, and I was yeah, like, "What yeah. the hell is going on?" I think here? you're right on point. So there, that's buddy. why I got out and lost. Season one was blowing people's doors off. We were like, we were like, what, dude? Ready for this? We had, season one, when it started in the fall of 04 or 05, we had J.J. Abrams on the show. No way. On the show. Front of the program, well, huh? Bob Agnew's vision was that this show was going to be an all-encompassing, like, he wanted to have, like, a handyman segment. <laughs> Dude, ready for this? <laughs> With you and yeah, Polly? Yeah. No, it was segment? free Polly. Oh, okay. Free Polly. Yeah. This is like, that makes it even worse. Yeah, free Polly. He Polly's. wants you to do a handyman segment. Uh, hey, brother, you, what, you need your roof cocked? <laughs> yeah. I'll be there, bro. You're a roof I, cocker. Last time I saw you, you weren't on my roof cocking <laughs> windows. Right. I was, buddy. But anyway, no, we would have a handyman on, my ah, friend, as a guest. Okay. Uh, tool time, we were going to do a TV review. We had a USA Today TV reviewer weekly, dude, to talk about the latest and greatest in TV. No joke. <laughs> your boy's been through some iterations here over to your right. All right, man? So, uh, yeah. Well, at that time, we were still Susquehanna. Oh, wow. We Pre-cumulus. Pre-cumulus. Cumulus would never be so creative uh, as to have a handyman segment. I was going to say, that explains a lot. The tool time segment. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, this is how we get on Lost, I forget. Oh, anyway, Purgatory. Purgatory, yeah. Of whether or not the playing <laughs> game is a playoff game or not. Well, I actually truly don't even know if the stats count, at, and I should have boned up before. I did all my prep for the show. That's the one question I forgot to look up. Anyway, we won't worry about it. We'll figure, we'll get you that answer shortly. That's what our producer's here for, and he's back. True. Should he be giving us that answer? Mm. Young Tony, if you can figure it out. Welcome back, John, Joe, and Murph. Yeah, I'm not sure if the stats count, but I know the results count, and yeah. that's all that matters, whether or not the Warriors can extend their season and get into round two of the play-in after oh, tonight. And what's crazy is I can't find anybody who thinks the Kings are going to win. Oh. I, I was listening on the way in. The national guys, they were like, yeah, Warriors win this game. And I was like, okay. And then we saw the line opened as the Warriors at minus one. It went up to about two, minus two and a half. Do you know what it is this morning? Minus three and a half this Ooh. morning, Murph. Money's coming in and on the And they play dubs. such close games. You might be smart to take the Kings and the points, right? I mean, when you look at the last three games all being decided by one point each, mm -hmm. three combined points that's crazy. in the last three games. Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, yesterday we were talking about the spread two and a half. And I'm not a big spread guy when it comes to the NBA. I'll either do a live bet with the spread spread or I'll take money line before no, the game starts. That? I just think it's too it's too hard to predict, especially yeah. with the amount of free throws at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. You'll see spreads fluctuate left and right. Guys will just throw up a, a random buzzer beater yeah, for no damn yeah, reason. Yeah. At least like in football, you know, like, all right, a touchdown gets you seven. 
you know you need to score. It seems like it's basic math, but I, in basketball, the scores get wonky. At are the you end. a baseball spread guy? Baseball, I will take the run line. It's usually always minus one and a half runs for a team that's favored, and I'll look for a good spot to take it. But even baseball, basketball, a more money line versus football I'll do spreads. So the Giants didn't cover yesterday? No, the Giants did not cover the well, spread. Well, they covered the win, that's for sure. That's we should it. probably at some point call that in. Will we be calling in a Warriors win tomorrow? Should be fascinating. There's so many different threads. A, it's who's not playing for the Kings, Malik Monk mm-hmm. and Kevin Herter, and it's who is playing for the Warriors who didn't play last time, Trace Jackson Davis. Those are the uh, the, the key names going into tonight. And then in the end, too, you still got Steph and De'Aaron Fox. It, they've gotten so little chatter going into this game. Everybody's talking about TJD versus Sabonis, or what do the Kings do without Herter and Monk, or you know, who, how do the how, does Looney play the same way he played last time? We're just sitting here, Curry and Fox, two of the most electric guys Correct. in the NBA, and nobody's talking about how they decide the game. Well, Murph, tonight. I'll talk about it. De'Aaron Fox is an absolute dog. He was the NBA Clutch Player of the Year last year. Steph Curry might be that guy mm. this season. But having those two guys square off, especially when you throw in the factor of GP2 being rolled yes, out with a calf strain. Yeah. We mentioned it a little bit yesterday. Without GP2 on the court, good luck trying to slow down De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, in fact, we that's absolutely... Uh, great you brought that up because I think we left yesterday's show thinking he was going to play. Well, I remember talking to yeah. Scott Osler yeah, yeah. and J.D., and I was like, yo, what's the deal? If he doesn't play, how do you slow him down? Now yeah. Andrew Wiggins would be the obvious answer, but yeah. the feeling was that he was going to play, but after missing back-to-back games to end the season, he's officially been ruled out already. Uh, did I read? Did they? Okay, so they haven't given out the awards yet. Somebody was saying they were going to give Clutch Player of the Year. I was, I was just an essayist uh, uh, talking about it. Um, some people were saying SGA over Steph, but Ooh. we can get into that later. Clutch Player of the Year, 808 KMBR. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably, before we go, uh, uh, christen the good news in Miami, what I'm calling controversially, Ooh. as I've met resistance from two, two sources, I'm calling it the win of the year. That's right, by the way, they only have seven. Yeah. They only have seven yeah, wins. Not so a lot to choose from. Most. Choose your seven. <laughs> but to me, the Giants yesterday down 3 nothing to objectively speaking, the worst team in Major League Baseball, coming off a lost series in Tampa Bay, rocking a 6-10 and 10 record, and losing 3-0 to the Marlins. They lose that game, and I know it's April 16th. I get it. But vibes would start to sour, and they pulled it out. Biggest comeback of the year. San Francisco Giants calling it in. We had uh, – who? We're having him. Who do we have calling him in? We have Pat, Pat, Pat the, bat. the Bat. Pat the Bat, yeah. He stepped outside the blind pig or the tipsy pig. That's it. Down in the marina. He's like, hey, hey, man, for my team struck out 10 times against your starter, but we still won the game, baby. <laughs> That's right. Hey, how about that, by the yeah. way? Calls Rob Manfred. Manfred said, wait, you guys were down 3 nothing, and you guys aren't doing anything this year. He said, That's right, empty suit. That's why this is the win of the year. Comeback style. San Francisco Giants 4, Miami Marlins 3. Beautiful baseball. Beautiful baseball. Let's go, San Francisco. Let's go, Giants. I love you. Oh, the cheer is so rebut. Uh, very, very good. Uh, very J.H. Lee heavy. Uh, I'm looking for a little sprinkling of something else, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll, add, on we'll that. add some stuff to it, but our guy Jung Hoo Lee now on a seven-game hit streak. And got the two-out knock that tied the game. Yes, I mean, he, he hit. This, listen, I think we could say how many games in now? 17? Mm-hmm. I think this thing's been an unqualified success, right? Jung Hoo Lee from oh, Korea? I don't think he's been a huge issue, especially after his past weekend where he stole two bags. He's getting active on the base pass. I, mean, I think he's playing good defense. You say I don't think he's been a huge issue. I think the guy's been a major plus. Yeah, well, like, that's what I'm saying because people neutral. were concerned about whether or not it would be an issue him adapting from the right. KBO to And we've MLB. gone from, like, concern to, like, not just concern. He's, like, arguably is he – I don't even know how they judge war – but would you say to your eyes, like, he's been the best overall player on the team? He's given you the most consistent at bats. I mean, he's got one of the best whiff rates in baseball. He's not swinging and missing at all. The yeah. dude barely strikes out. It seems like he's got I mean, a great out of the plate. He's getting on base. I mean, Wade right now, is, Wade has the better numbers. Say, Lamont yes. Wade Jr., but he's not even playing every day. Yeah, but for a leadoff guy and a center fielder and all that, it's just been fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they pulled it. So, you disagree. Not the win of the year. No, I still go home opener, walk off Tyro Estrada, Matt Chapman, round first base. The vibes were high, opening. Day at Oracle Park. Yeah. That's my win of the yeah, year. Yeah, that was the one my kids.
kid hit me with too. Oh, but me, I'm saying, me yeah. and Big D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even on the Sunday game, they had to come back from 2-1 down to San Diego. That is correct. But I'm just saying, things were starting to slip away here. Mm. And if they had lost this game to the Marlins, it would have been bad. Plus, they've now proven they can overcome a three-run deficit, which they haven't all year. They came back, and credit to Bob Melvin making the move, putting in Wilmer well, Flores to pinch it for Lamont Wade yeah. Jr. I will give him credit for that. Yeah. And we can discuss the bullpen issues a little bit later uh, on. I, I'm just going to go ahead and get this riff off at 610. Was Bob Melvin paying tribute to Gabe Kapler with his bullpen? He threw he threw prior. Wow. <laughs> you rarely see a guy like Bob. Now, unless it was entirely on bullpen coach J.P. Martinez, Dovall wasn't even warming up, and Melvin wanted to bring him in. He wasn't even warming up. Yeah, He didn't throw prior. Bob Melvin called for the <laughs> righty. Problem was there wasn't a righty warming up in the bullpen. I mean, they dodged a major bullet yeah. there, man. Uh-huh. They somehow got out of it. But, man, Bob Melvin, either Bob Melvin or J.P. Martinez or Dovall, they didn't really reveal who – as you know, you hear me talk about the old LA radio guy Jim Healy and his mm-hmm. soundboard. Yeah. One of his great ones was uh, "Who goofed? I've got." To, it was a Howard Cosell. "Who goofed? I've got to know." Uh, we might want to look that up. Actually, get that in the store. Go look up the Jim Healy soundboard. Who I'll send goofed. it to you, buddy. But that was a major blank up, and they they got away with it. I mean, Murph, there's a simple explanation. Bob Melvin walked out to the mound and said, let me get number 42 in the game. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, very good. All right, well, listen, big day, man. Warriors, Kings. We got the Giants with the controversial win of the year. And John Joe's back. Juan Jose is back. Juan Jose back back. in the building. How about that? We'll see how the show either dramatically soars or dips with his return. He's not looking Uh, like sexy Kyle, I'll tell you that. No, he's not nearly as sexy as Kyle, that's for sure. Uh, We'll say good morning to Young Tone, get the guest list on the other side on KMBR 104.5 and 680, the Sports Center. You need your roof cocked? Fairfield, shout out to you for supporting KNBR, Fairfield Sports Leader. This report is sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Protect your vehicle's engine with Syntec and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines to dissipate heat and reduce friction and wear. Try Syntec today, exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, now from now, the O'Donnell now. Financial Group Sports Desk, learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Bob Myers stopped by the Pop and Lunch Show yesterday morning to talk about the Warriors and Kings playing game tonight. To hear that podcast and more, check it out now on KMBR.com and the KMBR app. Nearly half of our youth are struggling with mental health, but California is building a new workforce to help them lead happier, healthier lives. Learn more at cawellnesscoach.org. Supported by the California Department of Healthcare Access and Information. at Rayleigh's and Knob Hill, clip your digital member deal to get large packs of Rayleigh's fresh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts with no antibiotics ever for $1.97 a pound, limit two packs. Not a something extra member? Join for free at Rayleigh's.com or download the Rayleigh's app.
Ford. Giants Baseball on KMBR is sponsored by your California Ford dealers. Visit BuyFordNow.com for the latest SUV and truck deals. And now, 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 time for the Protect Your Assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report. is KNBR and this is Murph and Marcus on KNBR 1045 and 680. The sports leader. I hate the play in just so you all. I absolutely hate it. It's the best thing ever created. When you look at the play in and what is done for basketball, it's the best thing ever created. I don't know who came up with it. I know Bron said they need to be fired. If they were fired when Bron said that they need to get their job back because the play-in is insane. Like, since the NBA has added the play-in, it's taken the last month and a half of the season to a totally different level. Like, totally different. And so, I hate the play-in. I especially hate being a 10 seed. But as much as I hate it as a basketball player, as a basketball fan, this play-in is nuts. Okay, Draymond Green set to the... Uh... The sounds of an Elvis Presley ballad. <laughs> I can't help falling in love with you. Generally like a first dance at a wedding in 1960. Ooh. And even by my standards, this is dated. Uh, is this because you told him that the Sacramento Kings and he should play nothing but Elvis, the king of rock and roll? You know, my guy, Young Tony, is trying to learn the ways of a Bobby Boucher on the board. And yeah. I used to always set themes for whoever the 49ers were playing, whoever the Warriors were playing. So my guy yesterday was trying to stick with the theme of the Kings, and he ran out of songs like halfway through Which the show. Is, that's crazy. There's so a million I, Kings songs. So I said, just give me some of the King yeah. Elvis. I was looking for a little something a little more upbeat. Me too, but Murph. A little, a little more I can't tapper, help, you know what I mean? But to start falling in love with the NBA okay. play-in okay. tournament. Okay. Well, nice work, buddy. Just like Draymond Green. You just saved. At first, I hated it, yeah. but now I'm starting to love it. You saved a, a drowning rejoin there, buddy. Good job. Good job. Yeah, I feel like I should go to sleep here, Young Tone. Good morning, Young Tone. How are you, buddy? It's a great song. It is, but it's not perfect exactly. for 619 in the morning, dude. Are you kidding? You're just waking up. The smooth sounds of Elvis. I think I'm drifting right back to sleep is what I'm doing, hugging my pillow and heading back. Maybe a little uh, maybe a little jailhouse rock to pick it up, perhaps. Uh, well, I mean, something. the sound bite this set up perfectly. Okay, that I can't help following. So what did he truly mean by this, that he... He that love and hate are the same emotion, like uh, like Freud told us. Is that it? Yeah. He loves the plan. He hates the plan. I love you. I hate you. He loves me. He loves me not. Well, I would say here's an example of why I love the plan. An example of why I hate the plan: the Western Conference versus the Eastern Conference. Because for the first time ever in NBA history, there were ten teams in one conference who finished the season ten games above 500. So in the West. The playing bracket is working great yeah. because we're getting a chance to see LeBron and Steph and the Kings and all these extra teams that probably wouldn't have made the actual playoffs. So that's what I like about it. What I hate about it is the Eastern Conference. When you have the Atlanta Hawks 10 games underneath 500, 36 and 46. When the Chicago Bulls are 39 and 43, that's when you get a watered down product. That was my complaint about the play-in bracket when they added it, saying that 20 out of 30 teams were going to have 
postseason inspirations. Aspirations. To me, yes. aspirations. Uh, the point being, though, is this is kind of like any expanded playoff. Correct. Any I, expanded I had playoff. the same complaints about same the MLB a- a- adding an extra wild card team. The MLB? There you go again, buddy. Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> don't don't start this at 6 in the morning. You can't I'm say the in front of an acronym. Trying to start We're going to talk here. to bags. Uh, We're start right. a fight here. Are we starting to bags yes. today? On All a right. Tuesday? We'll try to keep it incident free. I don't oh, think we are great. talking to bags oh, today. Oh, bad info. Bad, bad info. Yeah. Was, uh, my bad. I was looking Rejoins, at the guest coordination. All that stuff. Anyway. Can't wait for that, though. But yes, it's, it's any expanded playoffs. The MLB playoffs have too many teams now, in my opinion. MLB playoffs do have too many playoffs. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the expanded playoffs down to 83, 84 wins in baseball. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why that's why players aren't signing Brandon Belts or aren't are given contracts because they don't have to. You can get in with 83 wins. So you're right. In general, you're right. So the, the play-in giveth and it taketh away at the same time. So Correct. It, it creates more of a watered-down product, yeah. but then when by the time the actual play-in game comes around, everybody's kind of infatuated because it's this one game, yeah. win or go home situation. Like, I kind of didn't mind. I was in the minority on this. I didn't mind the baseball wild card one game thing. I actually liked that. I thought this is your penalty for getting for not winning your division. Mm-hmm. You have to play a one game execution game, Roman Coliseum style. We're gonna watch your head get lopped off by a lion or something. And th- and that's what I kind of like about the plan. NBA playoffs, NBA regular season too long. Yes. NBA playoffs too expanded already. Mm-hmm. So yes, it is a double edged sword. We have excitement tonight with teams that are really worthy. Who are one a really worthy team is gonna. Two really worthy team. No, one really worthy team is going to go home tonight because the loser of seven eight still lives on, right? Yeah. So one really worthy team is going to go home tonight, either Sacramento or the Warriors. Mm-hmm. And in the East, you're right. It's a garbage game. Yeah, it's it, a garbage it, game. It, like, yeah, yeah. Those teams should not have any playoff aspirations, Murph. Yeah, absolutely. Like yes. that's where it's the watered down product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, I wonder in the history of the NBA, have you had eight seeds under five hundred in? Haven't you? Close I'm sure to you it, have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the NBA. <laughs> So they're trying to spice up the back end of the NBA playoff bracket, which has always been sort of a uh, a, a, a backwater, as it were, you know. So, mm-hmm. no, it's not perfect. It does create excitement, though. I mean, tonight we're seeing do or die, right? We're seeing do or die. Yeah, not That's only it. for tonight's games, but really over the last month of the season, when we were scoreboard watching every day, seeing if the Warriors can move up from 10 to 9 to 8 to maybe avoid the playing bracket, it's made more of a pennant yes, race correct. down the stretch. Yes, correct. And that was the end game goal for the NBA, it's just to draw up more attention. Yeah, yeah. To make a team like the Houston Rockets – who were thinking at the start of the season that they were a lottery team to make a little bit of a run to maybe at the 10 seed, right? Mm-hmm. You still have those teams at the bottom, your San Antonio. Although San Antonio wound up, I think, 22 wins, I think, second. They climbed out. Are the Spurs a squad next year, by the way? 22 wins, 60 ahead of the Portland Trailblazers. Ahead of Portland, yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know what I looked at? Go look at the E. Do you have the standings in front oh, of yeah, you? Oh, yeah, I got it right in front of me. Go look at oh. Jor- Jordan Poole and James Wiseman. Ah, uh, well, I can give you both of them. Jordan Poole and the Washington Wizards, 15 and 67. James Wiseman and the Detroit Pistons, 14 and 68. Bro. Ugh. Siberia. Yeah. Siberia. For it's a little two different teams. when you don't got Steph and Clay on the court. Whereas I think the Spurs might, you know, next year are going to be intriguing well, with they Wemby got, year they two. Got Wemby, so they have something to look forward to in the future. I don't see the Pistons and Wizards turning anything around anytime yeah, soon. Right? It's not a pool party in the East, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and he didn't wind up leading the NBA in scoring. No. No, he did. Who did? Was it SGA? Oh, no. uh, SGA or was it Luca? We never was it Luca? Might Probably Luca, Luca, right? Yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. was Luca. We didn't. We Probably. never went over like uh, all the NBA. We never went over uh, all the NBA. Who won the NBA scoring title? Joel oh, Embiid. Embiid won it. Is that huh? right? No, is this one we're looking? At? No, it's last year's. Dude, you do a Google search and they give you the 2023. <laughs> Come on, Google, step it up, man. Come on. Uh, let's see. Ta, ta, ta. Points per game was Luca. Okay. Thirty-three point nine Props points to per Luka. game. Mm-hmm. Congratulations there. Uh, anyway, excitement um, for the Warriors and Kings tonight. But yeah, you're right. The play-in, the play-in is a is a is a mixed bag. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. And and then how much? Like, are you dialed into the to the Bulls Hawks game? Not at all. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> give a single God. damn about it. But over in the Western Maybe you Conference, you bet on it just for fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's gonna make the only. That's the only thing What's that's gonna the make seven, me interested. Seven eight game in the East. Seven a, eight game in the East is gonna be between the 76ers be, uh, and the Heat. And, and, uh, Sixers, well, that's an outstanding game. That's a really good game. Right, right, right. And that's a case where the play-in works because both of those teams are worthy. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when you get Jimmy Butler calling out the 76ers for, you're going to go with Tobias Harris over me? Yeah. Tobias Harris over me? Yeah. So that should be a fun game. And everybody's talking about, we talked about it yesterday, whether or not a team like the New York Knicks out in the East should have tanked the game to get out of the two seed to not face the winner of Miami By in the way, still a vibrant topic on National Sports Radio, should the Lakers tank tonight? <sighs> I, I, should the Lakers no. tank today? The answer is no. You should never tank. I'm surprised in a by your take game. on that, actually, because usually I'm like the I'm the guy yeah. with like the 
I'm very conservative. Like, you got to do, the, you know, you got to honor the traditions. You got to win the game. <laughs> and you guys, your generation's always like, you know, the moon landing's fake, yeah, all this stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, so you guys are always looking for the extra, sort of the extra. The, your generation, I'm raising one right now in the house, is always like, no, man, I'm going to reject the traditional take and come up with something unusual. See, that's the problem, Murph. Everybody's out here trying to play 4D chess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just stick to checkers. Just go old school. Just win the damn game and you get into the playoffs. It's too damn risky to risk your playoff life to put yourself in a do-or-die situation potentially against Steph Curry, just win the damn game against the Pelicans and you're in the actual playoffs. Yeah, uh, that is correct. Yeah, so, uh, but then you go play the Nuggets and, yeah. you know, I heard, you know, the king of this kind of thing is Green Mike Greenberg on ESPN and on the way in, he was adamantly insisting that the Lakers should lose tonight. Wow. And Tim Legler was like, bro. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. He, he said, uh, he, and, and Legler's argument was, you're going to tell LeBron James, yes. a man of LeBron James's mm -hmm. caliber, that he's not good enough to play the Denver Nuggets and he should tank a game. Yeah. He's like, that dog don't hunt. Yes. So there you go. All right, let's get the guest list on a Tuesday, April 16, 2024. Look at those even numbers. 4, 16, 24. I don't know if those are prime numbers or divisible numbers. They're divisible, I think. I can do that kind of math. I'm not very good at math, as you know. <laughs> By the way, my discussion of my advanced algebra cheating with Sandy, Sandy Murray has rekindled my friendship with Sandy. I hadn't heard from him in a while. Somebody told him he's in the South Pacific right now, by the way. By the way, I love the fact that Sandy is in the South Pacific, yeah. but got the message somehow that he got a Murph and Marcus shout out. This is the, the reach of the leader, my friend. 50,000 watts, Marcus, baby. you're huge in Tahiti. Dude. Did you know that? Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. I'll see you in Tahiti this summer, Murph. And you know who's down in Tahiti? Is your, your gal, Sandy Cheeks. Oh, Sandy Cheeks. She's down there, no, right? she's down in Bikini Bottom, okay. Murph. Oh, nice. Very good. <laughs> uh, Young Tone, good morning, dude. Good morning. How are you, brother? Fantastic. Uh, and you, you still, you ready for a morning of Elvis Regis? It's going to be all Elvis all morning? Stoked, man, yeah. Well, listen, you're talking to an Elvis guy here now. I mean, I'm kind of a, I don't want to say I'm a PhD but I'm a college graduate in Elvis. I am. I got you. And did you guys see the movie, the Baz Luhrmann mm -hmm. flick? Yeah, yeah. It well, I saw bad. it. It wasn't bad. I thought it was good. Fairly entertaining, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, yeah, And that kid, Austin Scott, that kid's got some chops. He's a good actor. Yeah, yeah, I liked him as Tex in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Ooh, haunting. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You like your murderers, huh? I do, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know me, Murph. Uh, what do you think tonight, Young Tone? Guaranteeing a Warrior win? Ooh, I don't know about guaranteeing. I guarantee. I think it's going to be a close fight, honestly. I think it's going to be a close, close game. I think Warriors may pull it out with the experience, but I also, you know, Kings are a good team. It's their home floor. Come on, you man. Never you're know. supposed to come with a hot take. No, nah, but Kings I'm not. Kings win. I'm not going to, what am I, Charles Barkley? I'm guaranteeing something. I'm going to get clown for being wrong. Uh, all right. Well, we, I asked for a hot take. You didn't give us one. So give us the guest list instead, buddy. Uh, we got uh, Mark Spears coming on at 7 o'clock this it's morning. It's got to be the earliest we've ever had Spears. Yep. yep. All right. Because he's got a flight to Phoenix, right? Correct. All Big right. game tonight as well. Yep. Dwayne Kuyper at 7 30. Hey, uh, we got Kuyper after a win. Let's go. We Woo! got Kuyper win. And on a favorable time zone, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Kuyper's in, um, Kipe came home. He oh. was in Tampa, but he last night was Dave and Javi, right? You are correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get Kipe, though, after a win. Good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big hit 750. Yeah. We're thinking Warriors. With 100% yeah. Warriors. It's got to be Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll get Stan Van Gundy's perspective on the game tonight. He's calling the game for TNT this uh, evening. Nice. That's good book in there, John Joe. John Joe Curley back in the so, studio. Okay. Uh, big, big get here. Kyle Harrison, 9 o'clock this morning. Giants lefty. How about that? The winner from last night. What about we need to discuss his performance on the other side? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Six innings last night, three earned runs. Yeah, but we'll talk about it. Go ahead. Gary St. Jean at 9.30 to Saint, close the show out. Or as Papa calls, St. Lee. St. Lee. St. Lee. Saint Lee. Lee. Why are you doing the morning show, St. Lee? <laughs> uh, all right. Hey, on the other side. Oh, go ahead. Well, Murph, that guest list is sponsored, of course, by Redwood Credit Union. Watch your money grow with a high-yield savings certificate at Redwood Credit Union. See how much you you can earn at redwoodcu.org. Well said. Now, Marcus is a Kyle Harrison guy. I'm a guy. I want his take on Kyle Harrison's performance last night and the Giants next on the Sports Leader. We're not worried about the Sacramento Queens. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free from credit cards, car loan, and personal loans. Hey, it's Greg Papa. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's A AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes. With almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home, use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards or get some money for home improvement. 
Hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. Call now, 415-808-5721, 415-808-5721, com. 415-808-5721. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Donate your car today at carsforkids.org. Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day. No title, no problem. Call eight seven seven cars for kids or go online at carsforkids.org to donate today. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids, one eight seven seven cars for kids donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. Streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 1045. Right hander. Bob motion for a right hander. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, I'm i fairly sure I saw him put his right arm in the air. All right, well, now you've got the Giants manager talking to the four umpires. Now, Skip I Schumacher's mean, on the field in front of home plate in fair territory. Camilo Doval's out there as well. Taylor Rogers, I mean, he came in and got almost all the way to the infield. He just assumed he was the guy. And he's going back now. He is. You ever seen something like this before? I have not. Joe Rizzo and F.P. Santangelo, I, they were my conduits. I was in the car as that was happening, so I did not get the visual. I was getting the audio. I was going, what's going on here? What's going on? And, and they didn't have an answer, and I think the answer is Giants screwed up. And they got away with it. They won the game last night, and Bob Melvin or J.P. Martinez or both screwed up and did not have Doval warmed up when he wanted Doval in the game. Very, like I said, 
in honor of the return to where Gabe Kapler is now working, a tribute to Gabe Kapler <laughs> yeah. last night on the mound. So, yeah, really, I mean, were you, really? Is that what you imagined? Were you watching live? I was watching live. And what, what was your sort of live breakdown as it was happening? Well, at first, Murph, I felt like Jason Kidd sitting on my couch. Because it was confusing. Big time. It was Kidd a made little move. confusing. Kidd, Kidd signaled to the bullpen. And I'm like, wait. Are the Giants getting an advantage out of this? Are they getting a disadvantage? Because Skip was out here losing his mind with a mouthful of sunflower seeds chewing out the umpire. He was losing his mind. But Camilo Duvall comes in and faces off against a lefty, which you're never really doing, especially after Taylor Rogers started walking in from the bullpen after Bob Melvin walks out to the mound. But Bob throws up the right arm, yes, yes. which makes the field umpire turn around and say, no, Taylor Rogers, you can't come in unless you're ambidextrous all of a sudden. Yeah. We got to go to the right-handed arm in the bullpen. So uh, that's actually a whole new angle I hadn't even thought of. So it's the manager indicates he's not just – he doesn't point to the bullpen just to point. It's specifically which arm Correct. he points and with. Now, the, the who's umpire in. holds him to that? Yes, so that's why Camilo Duvall had to come in. I was wondering if when he saw, I don't think, the ump can't hold you to whether you choose your right or your lefty, can you? I thought it was when Ty- Taylor Rogers came in, Melvin was like, no, that's not who I want. No, I think he wanted Taylor Rogers in that situation because Miami had a lefty coming up the bat. That's what I would have thought too, but then they were saying, no, he wanted him for a four-out save. Somebody no. wrote somebody wrote that or said that. That's, that and ultimately, he did want Duvall. Really? Yeah. In a righty-lefty matchup when you had Taylor ready to yeah, go? Yeah, I know. Huh. I agree with you on that. I would have thought you wanted Taylor Rogers unless Melvin was covering someone's A. Mm. He said he wanted Dovall. I have a, there's a quote in here somewhere from here. But anyway, the whole thing, the, the, if the Giants had lost that game somehow, some way, oh, boy. Yeah. You would have had not just – got to find that uh, quote. But anyway, um, they – Skip Schumacher, I think, was right, basically. And he was by the losing way. his mind. I think once Taylor Rogers comes in, he either has to pitch in that game or Doval has to be penalized for not getting out there in time. I know, and it sounds crazy, but in that situation, if you're Miami, wouldn't you rather face Camilo Doval because of that lefty righty matchup? Uh, like, that's why I was confused because I was like, all right, does Skip want him to stick with Taylor Rogers or he's arguing that he, he has said he to put wanted in Camilo? At minimum a 1 0 count on it. We actually have the sound. So we have Skip Schumacher sound. Nice. Not Bob Melvin. Skip yeah. Schumacher. Said. Don't find Bob By the way, here. I want to go on record as saying, I, I, I noticed Skip Schumacher last year in the Marlins dugout, and he's such a red ass. I'm like, I love this guy. I love my Kim Mulkeys. I love my Danny Hurleys, and I love my Skip Schumachers. Give me the red ass. I love him. And so he, he will, Skip Schumacher, even though he's managing probably the most depressing franchise in North American sports, <laughs> right there with like the Atlanta Hawks and uh, oh, some other hockey Miami, team. Miami. San Jose Sharks. Oh, uh, come on. He's right there. But, dude, Schumacher loses his mind. And after the game, he gave a long explanation of why he was so mad. He called for a righty. A lefty came out. Um, Rodgers came out. Obviously, they wanted Duvall out there. And Duvall wasn't coming out. There was extra time, obviously, because once you signal, you're supposed to start the clock and come out. Rogers comes out, the clock starts. He called the wrong guy, or the wrong guy came out. I don't know exactly what happened. Duvall should be coming out right behind him if they called the wrong pitcher. He got an extra couple minutes to get loose, which that is, we have been called for ball one many times when our pitchers are been getting extra pitches in the bullpen. So we didn't even get a ball called. Uh, on Gordon, it should have been ball one, and he should not have gotten extra pitches. So I'm still trying to figure out what happened. Guys make mistakes and calling different arms. I got no problem with the mistake or whatever it was, the miscommunication. That I don't care about that. I care about what happened after that. At the very minimum, it should have been 1-0. Tough that we don't get the win um, after such a great outing by Cabby. He was just... Um, against a good lineup, righties, lefties, up and down the lineup, he he was um, as good as if I as I've ever seen him, honestly. And yeah, so Skip Schumacher saying, and again, I'm reading Maria Guardado on MLB.com. Bob Melvin wanted to bring in Doval mm. for that precise situation, even though it was a lefty-righty matchup. So this is more of a screw up on the umpire, whoever sent in Taylor Rogers from the bullpen, or JP Martinez, who was out in the bullpen, and Garvin Alston, their regular bullpen yeah. coach, was away from the team for mm. personal reasons. 
Now, I hate to throw, I'm not trying to throw J.P. Martinez under the no. bus, but maybe Melvin needs to in, in bone up on his communication with J.P. Martinez. Or J.P. Martinez needs to figure out the difference between a left arm and a right <laughs> well, arm. Duvall wasn't even warming up. Oh, that's, that's the weird thing. And Melvin says he couldn't see down there and couldn't see that Duvall wasn't warming up. Oh. So, bro, was J.P. doing like a Sudoku or was he doing Wordle yeah. or something? What's what he going, going on? Get Camilo he, up and ready to go. Is he like my kids on his phone <laughs> instead yeah. of doing that? Yeah. But isn't that interesting to your point? That he wanted the righty versus the lefty. Correct. Yeah. You would think in that situation, that's why you have Taylor Rogers in your bullpen. Would have made sense to bring in Taylor to finish the eighth and then Duvall for the ninth. Correct. Right? Then you get a fresh inning Camilo Duvall righty righty matchup. But he wanted him for the four out save. He wanted Camilo. Interesting. I mean, what are Camilo's splits? Is he is he equally effective against righties and lefties? I haven't looked it up. I mean, he's one of the best closers in baseball, and I have confidence about him going against both guys. I'll but that's always the question with Camilo Duvall especially when you get into these four-out situations. When you get him up, you get him warm. That's if he is warming up in the bullpen. Then make him sit back down and then come back out for the ninth inning. He has gotten himself in a little bit of trouble there. Shout-out to Bruce Bochy. Uh, Brian Wilson did a lot of four-out saves back in the day. He did back in the day. Uh, that said, the Giants escaped it. By the way, the ninth inning was no bargain either. Camilo, Matt Chapman on a 3-2 count to, I think, Jazz Chisholm with a runner on. You see Chapman had to call time with one second left on the top shot clock. Yeah. Like an NBA game. Uh, with, he had to call time. With Camilo. Football. It was like a football game. If, if, uh, so Brock Purdy didn't get a false start. Camilo Duvall is essentially going to be Giannis at the free throw line when everybody's <laughs> counting out. 10, 9, 8. Like, Camilo's pushing the clock to its boundaries every single time. He came close a lot last year, and then when they cut two seconds off the clock, it's going to be something to keep an eye on with Camilo And then there's another long. time Pat Bailey told him, you got to step off. You got to step off because he was going to violate it twice. Yeah. So a little too tranquilo, Camilo, and that could be a storyline in bigger games in yeah, October. Let or my September. guy be tranquilo. All right, <laughs> get rid of the pitch clock. In the I line. have the answer. In his career, lefties are slightly better than righties. They hit right. two twenty three to righties two hundred one. <laughs> they have a seven hundred OPS to righties five thirty one. So. It is interesting that he wanted him to face a lefty when, in fact, lefties do have better numbers against him than righties do. Well, Murph, when you're going for the biggest win of the year, ah, it is. you got to put your guy in. Hey, and I teased it. I want to get your take in. on Kyle Harrison. Ooh, let's talk Kyle. Because first inning, bomb. Right? Right away. I was listening to a award-winning. Well, I award think it was second inning. I thought it was the first. Lead-off home run. Either mm -hmm. way, early on, bomb. Correct. Um, and it wasn't even Rene Pinto. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> your guy, Pinto. Um. I was listening to award-winning Diamond Notes in my car. Award-winning. And Copes had pointed out that Kyle Harrison has given up a home run in every outing. Yes. And then right away, he gave up another home run. Yeah, second inning, home run bomb. And and so what were you thinking at that point? And then the ball, that could you, could you make an argument? Conforto kind of monkey-blanked that ball in left field. Yeah. I mean, I mean maybe, maybe I think he monkey-blanked it for the second run to come in. I think he should have played it off a hop. Correct. In that situation, that's do or die. If you're going to lay out, you have but he didn't to even make come close, the play. Though. It wasn't close. I agree. But no, Murph, I really wasn't too concerned. Kyle, yesterday, actually, what stood out to me, his velocity was only like 91, 92 early on. Velocity was down a little bit. Now, maybe that's a strategy to go deeper in games and maybe ramp it up a little bit later. And then on the home run, just kind of left the slider spinning a little bit over the plate. The base knock on the RBI that Conforto ripped on was a changeup that was hanging over a couple of plate. So just a couple mistakes. But at that I was, point in time, so if we freeze frame right then, and it's 3 nothing Marlins bottom two, right then, after the double that Conforto jumps on, are you thinking, damn, Kyle's, Kyle's messing the bed. No, 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 no. Not after just three runs. Because, again, I think he just missed on a couple pitches. I was glad to see him shut down that inning. And then the way he responded showed a lot to me. For a kid to go through a little bit of adversity, not let it get to his head, and to bounce back and to have three more, four more shutout innings after that, I like the way he responded Huge. in that inning. Huge. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, again, if they lose this game to the Marlins, who are, what, three and whatever, three and 14 now. Ugh. Uh, and you know you get, and it's Kyle spins out and cuffs up like five runs in four innings or something. In other words, if he pitches like Blake Snell, oh, oh, look at me You're taking shots uh, at Snell. <laughs> so he drove off the road for that. I'm one. very happy. Harrison deserves a lot of credit, and by the way, we'll give him that credit at 9 a.m. Damn right, when he we comes will. on the show today from Miami. Mm -hmm. But so it's interesting. You weren't. I got to confess, I was pissed in the second inning. And when he gave up the solo shot, I was kind of like, okay, whatever. That's. I mean, it's going to happen. You got to condition yourself. He's gonna. He's a fly ball pitcher. He pitches up in the zone. He's gonna give up. But if you give up a solo shot, that's okay. It was the two runs after, because that, that annoyed me. And then I started to worry about what can this guy make of his outing 
and he stitched it together. Yeah, he, he did, got the quality start, got the win at the end of the day. I thought it was an impressive performance for Kyle, especially battling through the adversity. So, I mean, he did it. So you can't give up in the second inning, kids. No. No matter how pissed you are. A lot of baseball <laughs> left, Murph. A lot and of baseball left. And he did it. He left. did his thing. So he's uh, he'll join us at 9 a.m. today. All right, back to the big game in Sacramento tonight. Does anybody, anybody have an argument for the Kings to win this game? Vegas thinks the Warriors will win. National basketball guys thinks the Warriors will win. And Tim Kawakami raised an interesting question. What would constitute success mm. for this Warriors team? 808 KMBR is the phone number. 415-808-5627 is the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. Warriors Kings next on the Sports Leader. Oh, Mark Spears at 7 a.m. Mark Spears. So Warriors Kings from 650 to 7 and then Spears at 7 a.m. There's your roadmap on the Sports Leader. Who goof? I've got to know. Chilton Auto Body Traffic Desk. Yes, honey. Did you pack everything? Yes. Kids in the car? Check. The dog? Check. Wait, did I forget to... Don't tell me you forgot. To sell the house? <laughs> oh, great. We'll just live in the car. Don't worry. I'll just call John Buys Bay Area Houses. He can buy our house in just 10 days. No hassle, fast cash. Moving and need to sell your home fast? Call John Buys Bay Area Houses. 510-722-7000. That's 510-722-7000. John Buys Bay Area Houses. Sell your house the easy way. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free from credit cards, car loan, and personal loans. Hey, it's Greg Papa. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes. With almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards 
yards or get some money for home improvement. Hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. Call now. 415-808-5721. 415-808-5721. LoanPronto.com. 415-808-5721. NMLS 1661781. Subject to lender approval. Equal housing lender. Opening Bell Report, sponsored by Protect Your Assets with David Hollander. Concerned inflation will ruin your dream retirement? Learn more. Listen to David's show every Saturday morning or call 1-866-PROTECT. It's Car Care Month, and Summit Racing has what you need for bumper-to-bumper -bumper care. Revive the interior, exterior, underhood, and more. Shop SummitRacing.com. Use promo code RADIO for $10 off an order of $100 or more. Exclusions apply. Offer ends May 5th, 2024. Domination. Murph and Marcus keep rolling on the sports leader. And streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 104.5. These are playoff games, you know. I think we just, I, I, don't, I can't believe they're not included in the stats. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the stats just disappear into the ether. It's uh, crazy. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know, if I don't, if I have a terrible coaching job tomorrow night and I completely screw up the whole game, at least it's invisible and nobody will ever remember. Kerr has jokes. Kerr has jokes. By the way, shout out this rejoin. Sounds to me like a... Uh... This would be a very dated reference for a very sliver demo, but like uh, the old Bob Wagner ABC show, Heart to Heart. Ooh. Sounds like like one of the theme songs to Heart to Heart here. Like, let's have a Heart to Heart. Yeah, yeah, it is. What is this? This right here is Big Crit with the song Booby Miles. And if we're going with the King's theme, the acronym Crit stands for King Remembered in Time. Okay. I'll buy it. I'll buy it 100%. I like the groove. Mm -hmm. Little uh, Grover Washington Jr. sound like jazz here, yes. music here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. smooth exactly what it is. Tony. Perfect 6 a.m. music, right? Very good. Waterboy Low Key has great vibes. Facts. Great vibes. He, is it all White Mike, your bro? Oh, it's all Big Brother. He yeah. put me on game. He took me to my first Rock the Bells concert when I go went to go see Tribe Called yeah, Quest and Rock all the, the Bells, legends. Though, is it? Oh, Rock the Bells was a great festival. Okay, I right. saw Big Crit one time okay, at Rock the Bells. All right. It's actually the first Maybe time I gone to Rock the, the first Bells. time I ever ditched a group of friends at Rock the Bells at a concert because they had multiple stages and I wanted to go see Big Crit in person. So I left the the friend group, went by myself to go see Big Crit. See, that's you finding yourself, that's young man. Murph. I thought Rock the Bells was at Shoreline. It is, Shoreline. How can you have multiple stages at Shoreline? Well, they had the Shoreline stage, and then they had extra stages in the parking lot also. Oh, in the parking lot? Yeah, uh-huh. How atmospheric. Yeah, great. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. It's a great scene I'm not right a next huge to the Shoreline. Shoreline oh, guy. Oh, come on. Don't disrespect Shoreline, Well, I'm Murph. not disrespecting it. I'm just saying I'm not a huge Shoreline guy. Well, you're a North Bay like guy. It's kind of like the Sandlot of... Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Which means it's one of the greatest amphitheaters in hey, the world. did you see Madonna in 1987 in Shoreline? Because I did. No. Uh, I missed that one, Murph. I've seen I've seen many great shows there. It's just not my favorite venue. It can well, be a little chilly at night. Yeah. Um, oh, it's great vibes. I once saw a hologram of Easy e at Shoreline. Ah, respect. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Seen Van Halen there. Seen Madonna there. Seen Prince there. Ooh. 
Uh, I've seen others, too. I've seen Kid Rock and ZZ Top there. So one of my favorites. Uh, Kid Rock and ZZ Top. Yeah, yeah, you told me that ZZ Top <laughs> opened for Kid Rock, and I'm still pissed about that, by the way. You just ruined my morning at 6.54. Hey. How can any of those... How can... Oh, anyway, don't get me going. Uh, Mark Spears is going to join us at 7 o'clock talking Warriors. And Warriors Kings, man, feels good. Uh, listen, my man Platzi checked in. He feels like the the team, the Warriors are too determined. The Kings have not enough bodies. Although Mikey V checked in from Petaluma saying, how about the concern of no Gary Payton yes. guarding De'Aaron Fox tonight? That's my number one concern, Mikey yeah. V. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been talking about it all week long. What are they going to do without GP2? The obvious answer is Andrew Wiggins, but GP2 is just such a valuable piece off the bench to put on the best point guards in the league. And if you don't have him versus De'Aaron Fox, stay tuned, folks. Fox might be in for a big night. Listen, I told you guys, man, I'm a De'Aaron Fox head ever since he ran Lonzo Ball and the Bruins out of the gym in the Sweet 16 in Kentucky way back when. He is so freaking good, and we haven't talked about him enough. And I don't know if he gets I don't know if he gets enough respect around the league. I mean, he does from his peers, I'm sure. I'm talking about from the media, et cetera, how significant he can be. Uh, here's another 813 checks in. It says the key tonight is will Keegan Murray show up for Sacramento? Ooh. He says, low key, the Kings are better without Herder. How about, oh. that? How about that? Well, that's How about if Keegan that? Murray is hitting his three pointers, which uh, he has shown the ability to do, but I don't think he's as good as a shooter as Kevin Herder. Malik Monk has been a problem for the Warriors. Malik so. Monk was in the running for six man of the year this year before so for I got hurt. Him being out is a big deal. Let's get some Draymond sound in just a second after I tell you you're listening to KMBR AM, KMBR FM San Francisco, the sports leader, a cumulus media station. So Draymond wouldn't miss the moment. He's got a, an audience. It is the most compelling of the four playing games for sure. Uh, we're going to go with Draymond's podcast. Does he have a name for it? It's just called the Draymond Green it's Show. It's the Draymond Green Show. You're okay. going to get this podcast. So here he is uh, talking about preparing for the Kings. And no turnovers, everybody, says Draymond. So uh, We had great film sessions today on them. Uh, it's a game I'm ex- extremely excited about. Um, <clears throat> and a game that, you know, I think we're more than capable of winning. Uh you know, every time we play these guys, it goes down to the wire. So we're expecting a very physical game, intense game. Um, and we just got to come out and get it done. I think for us to win a uh, very young, fast team, uh, one of the most important things for us to win this game would be we we really need to take care of the ball. We take care of the ball. We get good shots up. We're then able to play great defense, uh, not be in transition all game. Uh, you play, you know, you play a great you know, get get your defense set. And so it'll be really important for us to take care of the basketball. Uh, that will be the number one key in the game for us. Take care of the ball. Get looks at the rim. Think if we're getting looks at the rim, I like the odds that we'll make them. We have great shooters. We have great scores. Uh, I think that'll be big for us. I mean, that's the Warriors in a nutshell, right? They turn it over. You, you you bang your head against the mm-hmm. wall, and they lose. When they take care of the basketball, their talent soars. Uh, he's talking about looks at the rim. I saw the stat that from Steph's 50-point game in Game 7, 13 twos mm-hmm. in that game. 13 times he took it to the basket. So Yeah, I think he was one of the first players ever to drop 50 while scoring 20 in the paint and 20 from outside the three-point arc also. Great stat. I had not heard that. Uh, it is. Listen, it's going to be so. I, I just listening to Draymond. I already have picture. It's going to be an absolute war tonight. I think this. I think you're right, Young Tone. I think this thing comes down to the final couple minutes. And it's funny, both teams have been plagued by late possession woes. The Kings. The Kings have blown a couple of games in the last couple of weeks by blowing last possessions. Yeah. Then again, so have the Warriors. The Warriors have been last possession mistake kings this year oh this is the same warriors team that blew a 24 point lead yeah. to the kings earlier this season so i mean it's gonna be which team doesn't choke in the final minute tonight right uh, and it's funny because we always joke about when the warriors win all you got to do is look at the box score and see how they shot from three-point range but the draymond's point whenever they lose i look at the box score and i look at the assists versus the turnovers yeah. because yeah. when the warriors are playing their best basketball they're moving the ball and they're taking care of the ball so it's gonna be uh yeah who did watch early on for turnover and definitely watch late game execution for sure. 209 checks in on the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials sex lines. As a Kings fan, this is the worst situation we Kings could be in. Of course it's the Warriors. See, already, yep. if 209's representing that mentality, we don't want to see that psycho from the Bay. Well, all you had to do was not have an epic collapse last two weeks of the season, and you'd be in the playoffs instead of the nine seed in the play-in. 916 says we are not better without Herder, and we have two of our top six guys missing. 
We are seriously leaking oil, guys. I doubt it's close tonight. Look at the Ooh. Kings are already laying down their arms. Well, that's man. why that spread keeps moving up, Murph. <laughs> 530 says, as a Sacramento resident who attends Kings games, the only problem with De'Aaron Fox is sometimes the last few minutes of the game, he's prone to turnovers. Hey, you're talking about the reigning defending clutch player of the year, De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, already we're here. 916 comes in and says, over under 0.5 stomps tonight. <laughs> over under I'll take the under. I think Draymond is going to be uh, under I'll, control. I think the under is the safe bet yeah. there. Like Scotty Scheffler at the Masters, yeah, right? Uh, do yeah, the, good, good odds on that one. Do the stomp shuffle. All right, with connection being made with our buddy Mark Spears. So we usually have Mark much later in the mornings, but he's on a plane going mm-hmm. down to Phoenix to cover this NBA playoff. So... Mark, it's awesome to have you bright and early. You got your boy Murph. You got your boy Marcus. You got the UMA guest line. And we got the play in tonight in sack, man. I know you've been sort of rubbing your chin, furrowing your brow at who these Warriors are this year. Well, now they have a game at sack. So, number one, good morning. And number two, what do you think is going to happen tonight, brother? Hey, morning, Mark. Good morning, good morning. Well, first of all, I'm I'm on my way to Phoenix to interview Bradley Beal for uh, my monthly diary. And I'm sure he'll be in a good mood because <laughs> they're in, mm-hmm. which I'm a little surprised that they got in. But, you know, Pelicans never win big games, right? So we're here. Um, and then I'm on a flight that gets me to sack at 630. Oh, wait a minute. You're going Bay, oh, no, I'm going, bro. Phoenix, I'm going. Phoenix, sack? That's oh, come on, man. Bro. You think I'm gonna miss that? That's come on, man. but that dude, Bradley Beal couldn't get, couldn't hook you up with an interview tomorrow, so you didn't have to go on the same day. Can I hop on a Zoom work? And it's a video component, so it takes a couple days. So it, it's more our fault than his. Okay, yeah. Well, dude, that's that's one of the more baller sports writer moves I've heard. I don't know yeah, if I, I got you yeah. know I got my suit bag in my you know. In my arm right now. What time are you? What time are you wheels up from Sky Harbor to Sac? Four thirty. Okay, so everything's got to go well. No, well, yeah, Bradley can't be late. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then from Sac Airport to to Golden One at that time rush hour. What are we looking at? Uh, well, I don't need parking, right? Uh-huh. So there, there's that part. Um, but you know, I'm not tripping if I miss a couple minutes. You know, so be yeah, it. Yeah, it's the first quarter I, I of an NBA game. Yeah, yeah. Fourth quarter is more important than the first, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, no, I just, uh, my only worry is Bradley getting there on time so I can get to the airport on time. Come on, Bradley. And getting a ride back, so. Yeah, maybe uh, Bradley yeah. will drive you to the airport. Hmm. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother, but, when uh, you walk I, I into the I need yeah. Marcus Thompson or, or, or uh I need Marcus Thompson and Monty Poole to give me a ride home. So yeah, there you go. I asked well, them to help me out. That'll be a good ride home. That'll be some good, good, some good chat on the way home there. All right, so what what are you going to see tonight when you walk in? No Kevin Herter, no Malik Monk. Uh, the emergence of Trace Jackson Davis, the mystery man that is Jonathan Kuminga in this rivalry, De'Aaron Fox and Steph Curry, two alphas going at it. What's the, what's the, what's the controlling storyline going in? Well, I mean, the way I've always looked at it is typically the way that you're playing going into the postseason is the way that you'll play in the postseason. Um, and so while this is technically not the postseason, I do think the Warriors are on an upswing. They're playing well. Uh, they've, they've had some success recently, somewhat on this level, um, against the Kings. And Kings just, I don't know what it is, man. They've just been off. They've been off all season. They've been inconsistent. They play their best against the best uh, um, best opponents typically, but then they usually get duds against the, the bad ones. And so even as inconsistent as the Warriors have been, I have less faith in, uh, in the Kings at this moment. And, you know, losing those two big-time scores, I, I think was really damaged the Kings a lot. So not that I'm a betting man, especially not in today's day and age, <laughs> but – uh, I, I think the Warriors will figure out a way to pull it out. Yeah, and Mark, the Warriors are dealing with a couple injuries themselves. I wanted to ask you about GP2 being rolled out with that calf strain, and how much do you think this impacts the Warriors' game plan of trying to slow down De'Aaron Fox? Well, yeah, I mean, you said it right there. I mean, and, and De'Aaron's a gamer. Things like this going to bring the best out of him. Um, so I know he's, um, you know, chomping at the bit to kind of salvage the season. So, uh I think the question is, like, how do you guard them? Who do you hound them with? I don't know that you really have anybody. Um, another thing is, you know, let's not discount Sabonis. I mean, if there is 
an Achilles heel for the Warriors. It's stopping big, you know, but that's Jackson Davis's problem, man. He's going to have to come through. This is the first time he will have played in a do or die situation like this. I mean, I guess he played it in, in, in Indiana, maybe March Madness. I assume they made it to that. Um, but they're going to need I'm, – I'm more worried about Sabonis than I am Fox. I mean, because at some point Fox is going to go out, and I, I don't think they catch his scoring. Um, but Sabonis, from a scoring standpoint, from a rebounding standpoint, just from a, you know, him and Draymond battling with each other standpoint, I think he could be a problem. All right, Sabonis, we've been warned. Now, that brings to my question about Kavon Looney. Last, just it was one year ago, he played 30 minutes a game in the series against the Kings. He also had three 20 rebound games, the first guy since Dwight Howard in 2008 to do that. And yet the Warriors have moved to a world where they're like, yeah, we don't really need to play this guy. Now, he saved him on Thursday night up in Port- – what was it up in – what was the game Thursday night where they saved him up in Portland or – anyway, yeah, I think it was up in Portland. Anyway, the point is, is Looney – I mean, can you go without him, or do you expect him to be the uh, 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 a wild card off the bench tonight? Man, you made an amazing call. Um, I use him. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the way he him. destroyed the Kings last time, the way he man- manhandled them, and having fans yell "loon" in, in Sacramento. No, nah, man, I'm 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 definitely using him. I think. Um, I, I think Luna could be an X factor. He certainly is rested, right? Oh, so yes. I mean, you you ain't got to worry about that. But you know, maybe maybe the two big fellas, you rotate them both and and try to try to wear out Sabonis uh, the best way possible. Yeah, and you can make the argument that Kevon Looney was the most important piece of that series last year for the Warriors. Now, the argument would be for Steph Curry, who dropped a 50-point performance in Game 7 last year in Sacramento. What do you think Steph Curry's mindset is going into this do-or-die game tonight, Mark? It's, it's survival. It's survival, and he's, he's probably going to need to do that again. Um, you know, Steph is... Uh, the Warriors aren't in the best situation. I'm really, really curious about like what happens in in Lakers Pelicans. Like, um, I'd be curious to ask you two guys if who who if the Warriors win, who would you rather see? Um, that's a great question. I'll take the Pelicans. Yeah, I, I need to know AD. If AD's playing, I'll take the Pelicans. If AD's out, I'll take the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I'm I'm with you on the Pelicans because. And I mentioned this before, I, I just feel like LeBron's going to get, like, 20 free throws tonight. I think he's going to live at the line, and if they don't get past tonight, they'll do it again. I just – I need Zion to have – Zion has not had a signature game in his career. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was in Vegas when uh, they played in the playing tournament semi and got trounced by the Lakers. They had an opportunity to get the sixth spot, right? Brandon Ingram was back. Signature moment available for Zion? No, Lakers trounce them at home. At home, and, and somebody said, "Well, they're, they're they're a little tired. They've been on the road." No, man, you, you can't use fatigue as an excuse at this point. Um, you know, you're trying to make it easier for yourself. Phoenix stepped up in Minnesota. Give them a lot of credit. You know what I mean? Um, and and so I just don't. I hate to say it, man. Like the Pelicans are certainly capable of going far, but against two vet teams, I, I don't, I don't trust them right now. Mark, just we got to do the sports talk radio question. And that is the theory that the Lakers should lose tonight to avoid the Nuggets. Silly, man. Stop, 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 <laughs> right there. Stop it, like, stop. And my coworker threw that out there, right? No, man. This, this, this West is too good to play that game. I mean, no matter what, you're going to get somebody. <laughs> right? Like, yes. you know, if you, if you don't get Hagler, you're going to get hers. If you don't get hers, you're going to get Roberto Duran. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Jokic is, uh, is Sugar Ray Robinson or whatever. You know what I mean? No, so. no. I, I mean, I get that, but I, 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 can you guarantee me they're going to beat these two teams, whoever they that's play? That's Yeah, I mean, that's it. Right. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's not like they're playing Houston. You know, it's, they're playing uh, three teams capable of beating them. So, yeah, you can play that game if you want. And, Mark, when you look at the Western Conference this year, 
I believe it's the first time ever that we're seeing 10 different teams that have a record 10 games above 500. It's a completely stacked conference. Have you ever seen the playoff depth that we're seeing this year in the Western Conference? Well, and that just kind of goes back to, you know, what I, I was just talking about, right? Like, you, you can't play that game. You know, it's um, it's it's uh, it's too talented. We've never seen this before. Um, no, I, I I've never seen this, and and the the uh, parity is outstanding. Everybody is capable of beating anybody. I mean, it's not um, out of the realm of uh, possibility that um, you know, one of these teams that are playing in the play-in could be in the conference final. You know. I mean, they're just um, they're all, all these teams are just that good. I mean, right now Dallas is scary. I don't know if anybody wants to play them, and they're in a fifth spot. Like that, that Clippers, Dallas. <laughs> I know, right? Like that first round. I mean, and, and whoever OKC plays, and you know, everybody is like, we want OKC. I don't know why. They're good. <laughs> You know, like there's no, and that, there's just no gimme. There's no, it's, it's, this is like, as I mentioned before, it's like that old school 80s wrestling battle royal with 20 dudes in the, <laughs> in the cage beating each other up. And that's why I think the Celtics going to win this. Because at the end of this whole thing, somebody is going to come out of that cage and going to be bloody. They're going to have a, a dislocated shoulder. Uh, and they're going to be smelling bad. Fatigue, and then the Celtics gonna be there with a clean white jersey on, ready yeah, to mop them up. That's true story. It's like uh, the 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 eight Niners, like NFC, would get through the NFC or whatever. Test in the or the eight. anyway. I know your analogy you're talking about for sure. I know we're at, running out of time. We're gonna get you to the airport. Just last kind of big picture one is: Are you when you walk into Golden One tonight? Are you thinking at all? Last time I see Steph, Clay, and Dre together could be tonight, or is that not even a possibility? No, it could be. It could be. Okay. Kings could beat them. And, and then, then I'm and then, already, and know, then what, what I'm saying is what I want to write about. And then, know? and then there's a chance those three aren't together in September. I think they will be. Um, well, I mean, I definitely think Draymond and Steph will be there. Um, the thing is, like, what's the market for Clay? Is he willing to start from scratch? I feel like if the Warriors can give him a fair deal, that that he'll figure his way back. I, I just think it's, it'd be too hard for him to start from scratch at this point in time. But this is where, like, ego gets involved if it's not a three-year deal. Like, I think the problem with the last year wasn't the number. It was the years. Like, Draymond got three, and you get him two, right? So I think for him, the years may be more important than the actual number. But, um, yeah, man, we'll see. <laughs> oh, and you'll see after you pull off an all-time sports writer move. Phoenix, well, Bradley Beal, era yeah. sack, Golden yeah, One tonight. Hope it all works out, man. Hey, and then it ends with you <laughs> driving home with Monty and Marcus for an incredible chop and chop it up session in the car on the way down. So I'm well, fired up. Take too long. I'm gonna go rent a car yeah. from there. No, <laughs> it's gonna be one of the great travel days. Can't wait to talk to you next <laughs> time and hear all about it. Go get him. Go say hi to Bradley Beal for us, and we'll look for you courtside tonight, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mark. All right, take care now. Mark Spears. I don't know if I've heard a sports writer pull off that kind of move. Dude, the traveling man that is Mark Spears. Go midday Phoenix Bradley Beal hit on his way to the Sacramento Warriors game. That's incredible. All right, well, we'll discuss what he had to say. Is this possibly the last night for the trio? Next on the Sports Center. We in trouble right now, and don't none of us want to see that psycho in the bank. American Canyon. Shout out to you for supporting KNBR. American Canyon sports leader. Talk to Steve Moskowitz. Well, yesterday was the big day, and Steve, we want to say, what if you didn't file your taxes in time? Now what? Well, it's not the end of the world, 
and maybe you didn't file your taxes by yesterday. And you know what? <clears throat> maybe you didn't file last year's either. And maybe the year before that, maybe five or 10 years. This is such a common situation. Right before April 15th, there, there's so much hoopla in the news and the concentration on it. You see it on things. But now, you know, April 15th has come and gone, and now the news cycle goes to something else. But the bottom line is your problem didn't go away. That's what we want to do. We want to make your problem go away. We have a free attorney-client privilege consultation. What do you have to lose by talking to me? I'll explain all of your options. you got a lot of rights what we want to do for you and then let us take this problem away for you so that you just live a normal life and not be always looking over your shoulder for some IRS agent to come get you. Just call us for your free attorney client privilege consultation. Sounds like a real good idea. Thanks, Steve. For more information, the phone number to call is 1-888-TAX-DEAL, one tax deal You can go online to MoskowitzLLP.com. From the Chilton Auto Body Traffic Desk. Visit Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill to see the full selection of Bosch appliances. From refrigerators with their trademark farm fresh system that extends food freshness so you can make less trips to the grocery store, to dishwashers with precision wash technology that helps to clean, sanitize, and dry dishes and eliminates up to 99.9% .9 of bacteria. You can see all of the Bosch appliances displayed beautifully in live working vignettes at Freedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill or at FreedmansAppliance.com. constantly changing and every day Stanford Medicine advances our understanding our world-class school of medicine and adult and children's health systems work together expanding what we know and sharing what we discover to make breakthroughs both possible and accessible Stanford Medicine advancing knowledge improving lives stanfordmedicine.org There's never been a better time to drive in the moment with Honda. Buy online or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. And now, 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 time for the Protect Your Assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report.
back to Murph and Marcus on the sports leader and streaming live on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. I'm not really concerned about this next season conversation. I think it's be pretty obvious it'd be a disappointment if we're not in a, uh, a playoff series and have an opportunity to, to compete at that level. You can make up whatever narrative that would bring up, but right now I think it would rob the opportunity we have this week and, and hopefully, you know, going into a playoff series to, you know, give ourselves a chance and I think it's it's important that uh we stay in that in that mentality. Don't really worry about anything else. There he is, Steph Curry. Stay present. Be present. Breathe, Marcus, breathe. Stay be where your feet are. <sighs> Are you good at staying present? I try to live in the moment, Murph. I'm not big on, like, planning, like, days and weeks ahead, Murph. All I care about is this show and this very segment. What about when a producer's in you're going, tease Van Gundy, tease yeah. Van Gundy. <laughs> and so, I'm like, I'm not worried about Van Gundy right now. I'm worried about tonight's game. Well, there are. We do want to tell you, Stan Van Gundy is joining us at 8.15. Yes, Kyle Harrison is joining us at 9 a.m. So plan your morning around it, and then you'll be present for the Stan Van Gundy interview and the Stan and the Kyle Harrison interview. Perfect. Just make sure your feet are next to a radio. And 9.30 or, for or, the Saintly interview. Or the KMBR at Murph. Uh, you heard yeah, Well, there you go. Well, as you now know, Marcus tells the lovely ladies of the marina, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. Catch me on YouTube at KMBR. <laughs> I literally met someone yesterday. I was like golfing yesterday. And I was like, yeah, dude, I just, uh, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Did you honestly say that? Yeah, 100%. I love that. How'd it go? Tell He's them, like, oh, oh, what's your YouTube channel? I was like, KMBR. Just I, look us up. You yep. know what? Can we might have a new listener. Shout out to my new listener. I, I'm going to be a total D right yes, now. Yes, please do. Total D. But it's, just, it's, it's a little pet peeve. And just to help you along in the, uh, in the old man world here, uh, the golf community would frown on you saying you were golfing. The true phrase is you were playing golf. Oh, ah, it's like the MLB. The Dude, here, we, here we go well, again. You don't go, go. Do you go baseballing? I mean, I hear you. Do you go basketballing? I was out playing golf. There's multiple yeah, ways well, to say Well, that's the key. It. There's these little, there's these little tells from the golf world where they're like, "This guy's a D. This if guy's you, a loser. If you say you go golfing, yes. Oh, come on. Yes, it shows dude, you. It's already, like the MLB, Mark. Yeah, get off my lawn, dude. Get off my damn lawn already. It's you're playing 24. Golf. There's multiple ways to say it. No, you're playing golf. I hear you. Simple as that. It's not. It's actually technically like a. It's not a. It's like the word is gerund. I don't know. It gets confusing in terms of the verbs. But I'm just helping you out, brother. No, I appreciate it. Because it was confusing. <laughs> Thank you, yes. <laughs> so anyway. The more you know, I told Tony. you guys I was going to be a D. Yeah. I told you. That is I a D take, my shot. yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so you were playing golf and you told a guy you were a YouTuber. Yeah, he's like, That's what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm a YouTuber. That's incredible. He's on YouTube, Do baby. I start saying that now? That's it, 100%. Murph. Holy moly. Uh, after I, uh, I, what if I said I was a roof caulker? How about oh, that? I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think too many people would believe you, to be That's honest. That's from an earlier thread. Uh, all right, back to Steph. Okay, so we asked the question and some people are saying, like, theoretically, there is a possibility this is the last time you see Steph, Clay, and Dre together as Warriors. The last now, dance. that would require them losing the darn game. Correct. Okay, which nobody here thinks is going to happen. No. Man, I think we're, I don't want to say we're cocky. I think we're soundly confident that the Warriors right now are healthier than the Kings mm -hmm. and are playing better than the Kings. I'm like Kyle Harrison on the bump. I'm not cocky. I'm confident, Murph. Okay. And even I'm if he gives up a solo bomb in the second inning? That's it. Even if De'Aaron Fox puts up 30 tonight, I'm still confident in the dubs. The way they're playing right now, finishing the season 10 out of the last 12 games they've won, and you look at the Kings sputtering down the stretch, I mean, missing, losing five out of the last seven. They're missing two of their top six guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the equivalent of the Warriors. I mean, the Warriors are missing Gary Payton mm -hmm. tonight. That's a problem. But I mean, imagine the Warriors missing uh, uh, Wiggins and... Kaminga. Uh, Kaminga, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's their two and their six guys. Yeah. So. I mean, it's just a fact of the matter is that the Kings are diminished right now. Now, they have Sabonis and they have Fox. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and those guys are going to be a problem. And they have some dogs, Davion Mitchell and Keon Ellis. These guys will D up. They're young, hungry defenders for sure. Davion Mitchell uh, was my draft crush that year. I wanted the Warriors to draft Davion Mitchell. I liked, he was a senior, he was a four year guy at Baylor. Mm -hmm. I like four year guys. Trace Jackson Davis. Right? There it is, yep. Um, and I love defenders. And I thought at that time the Warriors were in a win now mode. And I thought maybe he was the guy who could step in and help him the most. He's turned out to be a pretty good player. Mm -hmm. not, not a game-changing all-NBA player. He's not, he's not player, Malik but, Monk, but he's a good option to have when you don't have Monk on the So you got to respect them, and you got to respect the fact that, that, again, Mike Brown will gunk it up or come up with something. But we're all feeling pretty good about 
The Warriors are motivated, very determined. The, the Kings have, are flagging a little bit. Mm -hmm. They kind of have lost their mojo a little bit, right? Yeah, and you look at the difference between these two teams since the last time they faced off. We talked a lot this week about how the last three games have been decided by a combined three points. But the last time they played each other was January 25th. Dude, pre-Super Bowl. It's been three months yeah, yeah, yeah. nearly since they faced off against the Kings. And obviously, you could look at the record and see how different these teams are. We talk about all the injuries. We can talk about the emergence of someone like Trace Jackson Davis, who now is in the starting rotation. He's a guy that played a combined four minutes and 41 seconds in the four previous games against the Kings. He's going to be an X Factor tonight in that front court versus Sabonis. Okay, so, so now that we've established they're going to win, let's go to the question <laughs> about about whether or not this could be the final run of Steph Clay because that's on the table. Correct. I mean, if somehow, some way, something goes wrong tonight, Steph goes two for 20 from the field or whatever, I don't know, and the game ends and the Kings win, did we just witness the end of the greatest group since Joe and Ronnie? Like, mm -hmm. literally, like, like, so they won four championships yeah. together. The only other group in the Bay Area that's ever could say that are Joe and Ronnie. I mean, that's it. Like, that that's what we're talking about. Joe and Ronnie, and, and you can throw in, obviously, uh, Mike Wilson. Eric Wright mm -hmm. was part of that group, too. But that's what we're talking about. Some of the greatest the greatest trio in the history, easily the greatest trio in the history of the Warriors, and, and arguably the greatest trio in the history of Bay Area sports. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody seems the same way we're as confident that the Warriors are going to beat the Kings tonight. We're all confident Clay's going to come back. I am pretty confident. And that is because we just believe that's who he is? I think so. I think Clay fits in perfectly with the Warriors culture, with Steph, with Draymond. He know what he has here in the Bay Area, and literally with the Bay that he could take his boat out on. Like, <laughs> the vibes are too high for him in Northern California. I know there's rumors about Orlando needing a shooter during the offseason, and we'll see if someone throws the bag at Clay Thompson. But to me, Clay Thompson has never been a bag chaser, in my opinion. He's not a guy that prioritizes money so much like other players. Of course, he was born into an NBA family. His financials are taken care of at this point of his career. I think he takes sort of a hometown discount. Now, he has been playing well over the last couple months, so somebody, again, might throw the bag at him, but my belief is that Clay's going to retire as a Warrior. Right. Now, this calls into question Joe Lacob's payroll, too. I mean, do, do you realize, I mean, the money he's spending to be a 10 seed? A lot of money. And so he wants to, I mean, we so much for light years, they want to be more fiscally responsible next year. Mm -hmm. And if that means that Clay's going to ask for, I mean, it's almost like Brandon Ayuk. It's like you feel like, oh, Brandon Ayuk's going to stay, he's going to stay. But at a certain point, you can't pay him all everything. That's right. And, of course, Chris Paul's expiring contract is coming off the books. We'll see what they do with Andrew Wiggins this offseason. That could free up some money right there. And, again, I don't think Clay's going to be asked for $25 million a year. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But I think financially they can make it work with the big three, and it's been my take all along. Those three guys deserve to retire as Golden State Warriors, but you mentioned it. Even Ronnie and Joe and those guys who won three or four here with the Niners moved on to different franchises. Right. So, anyway, just throwing that out there, guys. I mean, I want to get all sentimental. I mean, the Warriors, that's the other thing is what constitutes success. Kawakami wrote an interesting piece in The Athletic. Kawakami's argument was three wins. It was pretty interesting. He said, win tonight, win Friday night. And then he says, if you get one from OKC, mm. then you can call this a success. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Today. Right? Don't you think you want to go beat OKC? Yes. Yes. You should. And I think if you don't, then it's a failure. And I guess it's a big question. Like, if the Warriors don't win a championship, is a failure. A lot of people will say, with well, no, with them being a 10 seed, that's an unrealistic expectation. But that's what Steph Curry's playing for at this point of his career. That's what Clay and Draymond are playing for at this point of the career. To add to their legacy, again, it would be amazing if they did make a championship run. But I'm not calling it a success if they lose 4-1 against OKC. Right. It was interesting they wrote that because Kyle Kami's usually pretty, you know, hard-bitten cynic. But he was saying he was being realistic and saying that that would be enough for Joe Lacob to say, okay, this group still has it, mm. and let's go make a run next year with well, it, with some tweaks. Yeah, I was going to say, they got to tweak the roster right. yeah. somehow, some way over the and, summer. Uh, so anyways, want to throw that out there. All right, guys, well, listen, we continue to talk about it. Stan Van Gundy at 815, the big hit at 750. You guys can call in. Like, I see Heather calling in, but we got to go because we got to get to Dwayne Kuyper. But we got to get to some other calls about that at 750. Is this the last night of the trio? What constitutes success for this Warriors run? That's at 7.50. Stan Van Gundy's at 8.15. And we YouTubers will talk to Dwayne Kuyper next after the biggest win of the year. Next on Esports Leader.
All right, let's talk about River Island. Hey, listen, at River Islands, are we rooting for the Warriors or are we rooting for the Kings? I don't know. We'll go to the boathouse and decide. Because the boathouse is the, sp the spot to start your tour. Get a great lunch. Watch some sports on TV. Play bocce ball. Look at the lake. River Islands is the place to go. Spring is a great season out in Lathrop, Northern California's most successful master planned community. That's River Islands. We got neighbors launching kayaks in the lakes. We got fishing along the San Joaquin River. We're jogging. We're playing jog on the Riverside Trail System. Uh, there's more than a dozen parks at River Islands. They're all in use. Little leaguers are out playing. How great is that? And River Islands High School over at Islanders Field. It's so cool. It's a beautiful. It could be like a minor league diamond, really, honestly. And new models being built in all new neighborhoods on the river alongside a lake close to parks and trails. You really got to go see it for yourself. Homes range in size from three to six bedrooms. Great, uh, prices in the low 600000s to over a million. Great for young families. With so many things to do and see. Really, isn't it time for you to discover the islands? You can start your tour now at riverislands.com. And I'll tell you what, I'll meet you at the boathouse. You're getting into shape? I'm practicing three easy steps to sell our home. One, call us. Two, get a cash offer. Three, sell and get paid. Call John Buys Bay Area Houses. 510-426-8000. John Buys Bay Area Houses. Sell your house the easy way. question we've got the best in the booth that's why we all mimic his call time for murph and marcus to catch up with kite on knbr 104.5 fm and 680 a.m all right, Dwayne Kuyper brought to us by NorCal Honda. Honda is value. You get a great deal now at your NorCal Honda dealers. Kuyper, we always talk about how you draw the Monday night bad games. Not last night. I'm calling it the win of the year. There's only been seven of them, but coming back from three runs down against a team that you probably should have beat and you're kind of feeling bad, and yet you come back and win. You survive a weird bullpen incident in the eighth inning. The win of the year, Dwayne. Good morning. How are you? Morning, Kuyper. Good. How are you guys doing? It's it's good to be home, by the way. I I flew home yesterday from Tampa, so I got a chance to watch the boys uh, sitting on the couch, and uh, and it was great. And I also saw something that I never thought in my life that I would see, and that's a 94-mile-an-hour changeup. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's what that kid, Edward Cabrera, and, and it's not like he just threw it once. I think I uh, – I mean, how do you, how do you sit – on a 94-mile-an-hour changeup and pitch for six innings like he did. Uh, 
it's it's it was absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm I, I'm not sure. I thought it maybe was a video game. <laughs> yeah, I he. Mean, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, I, if that's where this game is going, then I'm playing soccer. I'm I sorry. Know, it's I'm too not, hard, I'm, right? It's too oh hard. My goodness. Yeah, it's too hard. But guys, guys, anyway, yeah. So you got to get into the bullpen, and that's what they did. And and and, and then the, yeah, Marlins bullpen not a strength, and hopefully they can do that again tonight. And and, and Dwayne, that rally. Let's talk about that rally before we get into all the uh, Harrison and the bullpen last night. So sure. Tyro Estrada with a double. Now, that's a guy who had a good series in front of you in Tampa. He went six for twelve, and then yep. Yaz draws a walk from a guy who's not even close. And then I'll tell you what, Pat Bailey will hit a sack fly for you. He's done that a couple times this year. And then with two outs, the big Jung Hoo Lee knock, that opposite field approach, and then and then Bob Melvin makes a move, brings in Wilmer Flores, and he comes through. So, your breakdown of that rally from all parties involved. Well, I mean, the whole point is, is you got to put the ball in play, and uh, they did that. But I mean, they actually actually did a little bit more. They put the ball in play with something on it. Uh, I mean, we're the more we see. Jung Hoo Lee, the more we realize that he's probably not going to hit the ball out of the park, but he's going to give you good at bats, whether the count is 0 and 1, 1 and 1, 0 and 2, uh, and he's going to make contact. Uh, you know, when he strikes out, we're like, really? What's, how did that happen? Uh, so good, solid contact. Uh, take a walk, you know, get on base any way you can, and then get some key hits. And, you know, the key hit has been the one thing that's been missing from this group. I mean, they had a bunch of key hits on the Wednesday game at home uh, when the Giants beat the Nationals. But throughout the course of the season, it's the the one thing that's been missing. I mean, they lose Friday night 2-1, to and they go 0-10 for with men in scoring position. Uh, And, you know, I mean, eventually it's going to change. I mean, it's got to turn around. And we saw last night what you can do when you put hits and walks and base runners together. Uh, and that's what they did. And then, you know, you know, the ball comes in, and we don't even know if he's warmed up. But uh, but he comes in and, and does a terrific job. So, anyway, I know I'm jumping ahead of it for you guys. No, Cop, I want to actually circle back to Jung Hoo Lee real quick because he's actually in the middle of a seven-game hit streak now. But I wanted to ask you about the speed on the base pass because I believe it was a week ago when we were talking about the Giants not having a single stolen bag all season long. Jung Hoo Lee racked up a couple over the weekend, almost had another one yesterday. What did you think about his speed and him stealing so far over the season? Well, I think the guy that got the, the whole running thing going was Tyler Fitzgerald when he got a chance to play. Uh, look, it was just a matter of time before they were going to uh, start ramping up, running a lot more. And, you know, and I, I got a chance to do the manager show uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with Bob Melvin. And one of the questions I asked is, is the stealing and, and running around, is that now, is that a plan? Or is that just something you go game by game? And he said, no, he said, we want to run more. We just want to have the right guys to run more. Uh, you know, we can't be silly and just have guys start to run that that can't steal bases. Uh, but Marcus, in a lot of ways, it's more than just stealing bags. It's scoring from second on a base hit, going first to third on a base hit, tagging up on a fly ball so you can get to third base with less than two outs. I mean, all of those things uh, have everything to do with being smart, and also take advantage of the guys that can run, and uh, and then you're going to see more stolen bases. So I think his answer was simple. Yeah, we're going to steal more, but it's going to have to be with the right people. Yeah, I mean, Tyro Estrada last year stole some bags. He's got to get on base, and, and he's he coming around too. And, and, and we saw Chapman steal a bag uh, against uh, last Wednesday against the Nationals, I think. So, Kype, about this bullpen incident in the eighth inning, I know you weren't in Miami, and, and I think – the the media coverage is pretty light after the game. The only thing we got was communication mistake. <laughs> Skip Schumacher was pretty upset. I, I don't know. Did you have any view of it? It looked like, I don't know, Doval was not warming up, and that's who Melvin wanted, and he couldn't see to the bullpen, and 
Garvin Alston, the regular bullpen coach, was gone for personal reasons, and I don't know. Did he? Weren't you thinking Taylor Rogers against the lefty was what he wanted? But it turns out he didn't want that. He wanted to evolve for four outs. I, I don't know, Cap. I just threw you about six different threads. You can grab any one of them. Yeah, well, I like the, the seventh different thread, and that's maybe they knew Duvall wasn't ready, so they sent somebody else out there. Okay, a ruse. And then w- while they're calling him back, he's got four or five more pitches to throw. That's another thread. Hmm. Uh, and that would be pretty smart. Uh, but it turns out that you learn more about Duvall every day, about what he can and what he can't do. And there aren't many things that he can't do. Uh, I believe that you could bring Duvall in on Christmas morning without throwing a ball, and he could get three outs in the night. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I, I don't. I, I just think he's such a unique guy with all with all this ability. But you know, he's got a rubber arm. I mean, uh, he already told Bob Melvin, you, "You use me any way you want. You want me to get six outs." I'll get six outs. Uh, so, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Look, I don't blame Skip Schumacher. I don't. Because at least, at least the ball should have been charged with a ball. Uh, because it took a lot of time. I mean, and, uh, and really all that time that Rodgers was in and now he's running back, you know, he got a few more pitches to get loose, so. It all worked in the Giants' favor, and, uh, and however it was manipulated, if it was great, uh, figure out a way to get it done, and uh, and they did. It just put a lot of pressure on the umpires to get it right. Kype, the other story with Camilo Duvall so far this season has been the pitch clock, and we saw last night Matt Chapman had to call timeout. Patrick Billy tells him to step off the mound. Are there any concerns moving forward with Camilo Duvall dealing with that 18-second pitch clock? I mean, I think it's always going to be an issue with with the ball. Uh, he's he's just got his own pace, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and you know we watched guys that have their own pace now with the pitch clock, and they've all had to change. And uh, you know he's just going to have to speed it up a little bit. But I don't think you want him to change too much because he's pretty good the way he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also don't want him to fall behind. One and zero, or if you got a two-one count, now it's three and one. You, I mean, you don't want that to happen either. So yeah, he's got to speed it up a little bit, but I don't want him to change too much. Tranquilo Camilo to the next level, being a little too tranquilo. But it was interesting, Chapman. By the way, Dwayne. Now that I, I got to tell you, that's something you've never experienced in your baseball playing career because you never had a clock ticking. Chapman had to call timeout with one second left. That was like the NFL. Hmm. Brock Purdy wasn't going to yeah. get the playoff in time, right? Yeah. So, I mean, look, it's, it's a, you know, it says something about Chapman Mm -hmm. where he's, he's, you know, he's, he's helping Duvall manage the clock, (laughs) you know, (laughs) trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, I don't know if you guys knew the other, uh, the problem that Duvall had in, in, uh, San Diego, where he got a couple of pitch clock violations. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, pitch clock was in English. That's right. Crazy. I mean, it needed to be in Spanish for Duvall. Oh, my gosh. And uh, it really just kind of knocked him out of whack. And it really looked like he had no clue as to what was going on. But there was a reason why, you know, he looked like he had no clue. Because, you know, I get it, right? He probably understands what a fastball is in English, but when you only have a certain amount of time to get things done, uh, a little screw up like a language issue, that's going to be a problem. So, uh, so anyway, uh, it's not all on him, at least that time, this time, you know, he just needs to speed it up a little bit. He hadn't pitched since April 7th. How about that? So it's time to get him going a little bit more. And then last word, we got Kyle Harrison coming on at 9 a.m. today and the kid, you know, th- three runs in the second inning, it's not looking great, and that's a huge step forward for him to calm the waters, huh? Well, I mean, at that point, when you start to see it unravel and you give up three runs, and you know, I saw what he said uh, in the paper this morning that, you know, he's t- you get ticked off. I mean, at that point, what you want to do is you want to still go at least six innings if you can, 
and give your team a chance to win. And uh, and that's what he did. Not only did he give his team a chance to win, but he got the win. And, uh, I mean, when I see Kyle in the clubhouse, I always ask him the same thing. Is your brother still hitting home runs for St. Mary's? <laughs> and the answer is yes, home? by the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he said, yeah, he is. He said he's definitely my dad's favorite uh, son right now. Hey, how about we Giants draft him and we have a future battery? They have a few, yeah. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Who was it, the Nailers in, in your old town in Cleveland? Didn't they both homer on sibling day, the Nailer brother? I think they did. Yeah. I think they did. Yeah. Yep. So we'll do it with uh, the Harrisons in a couple of years. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, look, I mean, every time I turn around, there's so many from St. Mary's in the big leagues. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, Randy, you know. Randy Bennett better watch out. He, the baseball program is going to eclipse him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, got a, they do have a good program. They, and it's a, I mean, look, it's a great campus. I mean, it is, yes. Uh, it, it, but anyway, yeah, you'll have fun with, with Kyle. I mean, you know this. You've talked to him. Uh, he's got, he's, Really a personable kid. Hey, he's and, keeping uh, up with – I'm looking at the stats. Logan Webb, four starts, 23.2. Kyle Harrison, four starts, 23.0. He's trying to keep up with Logan. There's no question. No question. Well, that's the right guy to try to keep up with. <laughs> exactly. They're buddies, uh, yeah. Uh, and you know what? If if you got to pick somebody to show you the ropes on and off the field, uh, Logan Webb would be the guy that I'd follow around. Those are the dudes. They're buddies. All right, yeah. Dwayne. Well, we got you after a win. We're excited. And welcome back from Tampa. Hope you had a great trip. And then uh, we'll watch the rest of this, and then they'll come on home, and we'll talk to you next week. Hey, we got a big Warrior game tonight. Yeah, what do you think? We, we're all a little too confident, Guy. But maybe we're, we need somebody well, to inject some appropriate I fear. Would, I wouldn't be too confident. Okay. Uh, I don't like the fact that uh, Gary Payton – is not playing or is not available. But uh, but I think they got something going. I do. They're kind of motivated. You know, Steph wants to kind of – he doesn't want this party to end right now. You know, he only has a few of these left. So, I mean, I think it'll be a really close game, but, you know, I'm sticking with my guys. Well, Giants at 340, Warriors at 7. You're all set, buddy. I know. There's going to be a dent in – <laughs> My leather chair, like you can't even imagine. A beautiful dent. That's the kind of dent we want. Just yeah. an enjoyable Bay Area yeah. dent. All right, Dwayne. All right, gentlemen. Have a great Have one. A good one. Yeah, Dwayne Kuyper, guy. after a win, everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Warriors, Giants, double dip tonight. 340 Warriors. I've heard me. 340 Giants, 7 o'clock Warriors. Big hit. Are you supremely confident? Is this possibly the last time the trio play together? What would constitute success in this Warrior postseason run? Let's do it all. After we remind you, Dwayne's brought to you by NorCal Honda. Honda is value. You get a great deal now at your NorCal Honda dealers. 808-KMBR is the phone number. Line them up. 415-808-5627 is the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. Big hit. Warriors next on the Sports Leader. Now, from the O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group. Because planning is a process, not a product. Scotty O. Scott Osler stopped by the Murph and Marcus show yesterday morning to preview tonight's Warriors and Kings playing game. To hear that full podcast and more, check it out now on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. Amici's East Coast Pizzeria. Let's eat Amici's Pizza. Sounds good to me. Right now, if you brought me a large cheese pizza, we'd wolf that thing down. 
because the food will be delivered fresh and hot, on time, prompt, courteous, professional delivery. But how about even something bigger than that? What if we had pizza for the entire staff? That's right, Amici's Cheese delivers for large events and to businesses with a full-blown catering menu. So, we're talking about the pastas. Underrated. We're talking about the salads, nice and crunchy. We're talking about the famous flame-roasted lemon chicken wings. Don't throw them on the floor. And other pizzas, too, in larger sizes so your group can help themselves buffet style. It's a more economical way to feed a large group while still offering Amici's full range of menu items. So, here's the dealio. Corporate lunch, Amici's. Food for a special event, Amici's. Great range of options. Customize the perfect menu. Ideal portion sizes for your group. Check out the catering menu at Amici's.com. Two words, Amici's delivers. business. It's all the things that keep this world turning. And behind every one of these companies is a partner helping to keep it all moving. It's why the local flower shop and your favorite pizza joint, the startup in the stadium, hospitals and hotels, banks and restaurants nationwide, all choose the advanced network, cybersecurity solutions, and round-the-clock trusted partnership from Comcast Business, the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. See why Comcast Business powers more small businesses than anyone else. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security for $49.99 a month for 12 months with a two-year contract. Plus, ask how to get up to an $800 prepaid card with a qualifying internet package. Don't wait. Call or go online to switch today. Ends 5524. Restrictions apply. New customers only with 50 megabits per second internet and security edge. Eagle Bell and auto pay required. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. Hey guys, at Prime Mail Medical, their mission is to provide you with the medical care you need to improve your ED, low T, and incontinence. With years dedicated to improving the lifestyle of their patients in the Bay Area, Prime Mail Medical strives to improve your love life and overall health. Listen to Dr. Robert Rowley. We have virtually every medication known to man to help men. We specialize in acoustic wave therapy, sublingual lozenges, which bypass the digestive system, making them work faster and more effectively, injectable medications, and testosterone treatment for those patients who need it. Impotence problems can be treated in just one visit. Why wait? Don't lose hope. Call now. Get a PSA test, testosterone test, Doppler ultrasound, and a full year of free visits for just $99. Call 415-761-4037. That's 415-761-4037. Call now, 415-761-4037, or go to primemailmedical.com. Hold it now. This is the Big Hit. Sponsored by Benjamin Moore Paints. Experience the Benjamin Moore retail difference at their independently owned, authorized retailers today. Or at BenjaminMoore.com. On KNBR 104.5 FM and 680 AM. The sports leader. It's weird because we haven't played them in a long time. Uh, we had a lot of matchups earlier in the year. 
you know, I know they're without Malik and, and Herder, so they have some other guys that haven't been a part of their rotation. We had some guys that stepped up, like Trace and BP, guys that really weren't part of the rotation the last time we played them. So there's some unknowns on both sides, but the known is the core guys who were in that series last year. We play each other four times a year. Like, we know each other pretty well. Coaching staff know, themselves, know each other really well, so it adds a little another dynamic to it, but it should be fun on competition tomorrow. There he is, Steph Curry. Don't have too many more of these sports fans. This is a time to treasure Steph Curry in the postseason. Oh, wait, this isn't the postseason. It's a play-in game. Oh, wait. The stats don't count. Uh Uh-oh. But the result will count. And the Warriors are just trying to live to fight to Friday when they would play another elimination game. Another one. But they got to get through the Sacramento Kings tonight at 7 o'clock. Stan Van Gundy will be on the call. He'll join us at 8.15 today. And you are listening to KMBR AM and KMBR FM San Francisco the sports leader at Cumulus Media Station. I've been trying to stoke some appropriate fear here among the staff, but everybody's in a calm, confident mood, a tranquilo Camilo mood that the Warriors are, A, more motivated than the Kings, who are missing two of their top six guys and sliding in the wrong direction. B, have Steph Curry, the best player, one of the best players in the world on their team. C, are playing better basketball than the Sacramento Kings are right now and d don't mind going up to sacramento a friendly place for them to get a win somebody convinced me otherwise otherwise i got the warriors winning this game and advancing to friday's play-in game marcus what do you got buddy well i think the only chance that the kings have tonight is if De'Aaron fox drops 40 points sabonis grabs 20 boards has a 20 20 double double like those guys have to carry the team and i don't even know if that's enough murph because it's plain and simple all the things you pointed out the Warriors have won 10 out of the last 12. The Kings, a week ago, were thinking about a six seed. Now here they are finishing, losing five of their last seven games, skidding in the wrong direction. And you look at the confidence of the Warriors, and you look at the worry and the fear in the eyes of a lot of Kings fans who have been checking in this morning, saying that they're not confident in this squad and not really playing to the expectation that they sent last year when we got that great seven-game series. And the point being, like, you know in their gut of guts, this is not what the Kings wanted. No. They did not want to no. face the Warriors. Mm-mm. We've been talking about no team. One of the things we talked about in the last couple months was, like, hey, if the Warriors can just get to a certain point, who wants to play them? Mm-hmm. And our big argument was nobody wants to play them. Correct. Maybe Jokic and the Nuggets want to play them. I don't know. But they probably aren't that thrilled Nuggets. about playing them. Thank you. So we're talking about if every team kind of is like, yeah, I'd rather not play the Warriors – Certainly that applies to the Kings, who just lost to them in a seven-game series, are going in the wrong direction, and now, like, got to see that psycho from the Bay. As we said, that's that guy from his uh, few years ago when the Lakers were going to play the Warriors in the play and This guy filmed himself in his car. We used this in the cooler back then. We in trouble right now, and don't none of us want to see that psycho in the Bay. There he is right there. And, and he's right, because the last time that psycho was in Golden 1 Center in a win-or-go-home game, he dropped a 50-burger. Yeah. Put on one of the greatest Game 7 performances in NBA playoff history. And the Warriors are at a point now where, like, a guy like Kevon Looney, who had three 20-rebound games against them, is like a luxury. Like, you're already looking at, like, well, how can we use this incredible pawn, this incredible chess piece, when we have Trace Jackson Davis? Now, that will be interesting. Mm-hmm. Sabonis so takes advantage of TJD early and gets a little mo going the purple way. Then you might have to make a move and bring Loon in. Because that's the thing about Sabonis. So Back-to-back year, he leads the NBA in rebounding. But that was all thrown out the window last year when our guy Loon Dog was absolutely dog walking him on the boards, offensively and defensively. Three different games with 20 plus rebounds. That's why you would think that Looney's going to get some minutes tonight. By the way, dog walking, shout out us trying to get my kids to walk our dogs. Come on, man. Go walk. You're a kid. Walk Come your dog. On. A little you know tricksy, I mean? flashy, yeah, washy. Give him a walk. Very good. Come on. Uh, here's the deal Curry entering this last period of his career how many more times do we get to see Steph Curry play in these big stages and he's like I ain't worried about I gotta stay now this would be cut Tia's and Thomas here about like oh are you guys staying together as a trio how far can you guys go Steph's answer I'm not really concerned about this next season conversation I think it's it'd be pretty obvious it'd be a disappointment if we're not in a uh, a playoff series and have an opportunity to to compete at that level. You can make up whatever narrative that would bring up, but 
right now, I think it would rob the opportunity we have this week and, and hopefully, you know, going into a playoff series to, you know, give ourselves a chance. And I think it's it's important that uh, we stay in that in that mentality. Don't really worry about anything else. That's it, buddy. Stay in the now. He can't worry about it. But he said it's pretty obvious if we don't get to a play, if we don't get to the, the series, that's a disappointment. That's, I mean, we're all in agreement, right? So it's not like a no moral victory no. for making the play. And we were right? talking about Joe Lacob earlier this morning and the amount of money that he's paying for this roster to be the 10 seed in the Western Conference. Now, we should put a little asterisk there that this is maybe the best that the Western Conference has ever been top to bottom. Okay, pause right there because I know Raymond, Raymond, Raymond put me on blast publicly saying, you know, dude, 46 wins is legit and everything, but... 10 is still 10, meaning there's nine GMs and owners and players who did it better than you did. Correct. So, I mean, so I get that you won 46, and that's cool, but you got nine teams out there going, yeah, we did better. So maybe, I mean, if I'm Joe Lacob, that's not an acceptable answer to say, well, 46 wins is a great season. Not when there's nine other teams doing it better than you. But do you think Joe Lacob recognizes the fact that this team won more games this year than the team last year? I don't know. If you're Joe Lacob, you're like, why is Dallas better than me? Why are the Clippers better than me? Why are the Suns better than me? Why are the Thunder better than me? Why are the Timberwolves better than me? Uh, also, by the way, you could also just explain it away by saying Draymond's 16 game suspension might be the difference between yeah. the 10 and the 6. Yeah. Honestly? I, I, I think it definitely impacts it because the team struggled without Draymond Green. And we saw how good this team was when he made his return once they paired him with TJD Bro. in the front course. They're a completely different team since January 20. 27 and 12. Yeah. 27 and 12. And on that pace, you wouldn't be in the play in bracket. Mm-mm. You'd be up there with the uh, the elite of the elite just sitting here filing your nails waiting for these guys also, to come through. That's the craziest part about the Western Conference right now. They did have that 27 and 12 record or whatever it was, and they started in the 10 seed before that, and they still ended up in the 10 seed. So they so, really just couldn't gain any traction all season long. So the five, the four seed, 31 losses. The 10 seed, 36 losses. Mm-hmm. So that's five games. You tell me the 16 yeah. games Draymond missed. That they couldn't have made up five wins there. So I honestly, think it's definitely a factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. All right, we got Heather in San Francisco. Is a Kings fan. Mm. How about the Kings fan in the city? I gotta love it. Heather, good morning. You're on KMBR. Good morning, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Happy to, Heather. What's up? Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to. I know everyone is bagging on my Kings, but I really feel like they're going to give you guys a run for your money. We are at home. We have an ex-Warriors coach, so he knows a lot of the guys on the other team. He knows kind of what's in Steve Kerr's head and what his mentality might be of how to kind of, you know, go against our team. And I really hope Sabonis just gets in Draymond's face so that he ramps up and gets kicked out, and then maybe we would have a shot. But I, I'm going to – I'm always an optimist when our king, where our kings are concerned. We have been loyal fans for 20-plus years of not making it to the playoffs, so the last two years have been great for us. And it's just our home environment. Even though I am in the city now, I, I'm a recent, you know, move to San Francisco, but I'm always going to root for my king. Did you grow so. up in the Sacramento area, Heather? I did. Well, back Vacaville, but then I moved to Sacramento after college. So I've been in Sacramento 32 years. Okay. And I recently became an empty nester and I'm a huge, huge Giants fan. And my sister lives in the city. And so she's like, moved to San nice. Francisco. And nice. I did. How's, how's and I city? live a block from the ballpark, and I go to Giants games all the time, and I love do you, it. Do so. you see Marcus walking past you on his way? Because he's on his way. He'd move to the neighborhood, too. I'm, I'm a couple well, blocks away. I know. Heather. I heard that, and I definitely want to meet up at a bar one you time. You say, I, I hey, a great talk, are so. you that YouTuber? Are you that Twitch guy? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, so. Heather, you seem like a very rational, uh, well-grounded person. First of all, go Giants. And uh, and second of all, good luck to your team tonight. You're going to you're gonna support you. them. And listen, it's it's, exactly. it's it's great. No it's what. it's high. It's a penthouse living compared to the last twenty years for the Kings, right? You guys are in it's the penthouse, totally, right? Totally, yeah. totally. I mean, we and that's and that's the thing is our fans will show up, even though yes, it seems like some of them are a little worried. And I'm not gonna lie, I was like, I didn't really want the Warriors. I know, but, right? That's the thing. You know, yeah, I know, you guys. You know, you guys, Curry. Oh, that, oh God, that Friday that, night yeah. loss to the Suns for you guys, and when it came down to that final oh. possession, and then you guys, uh, you guys, uh, that's the one that killed you. That's the one that killed I know, you. Yeah, all I know. Right. Well, anyway, Heather, but, we'll see you, you know, at the ballpark, okay? Okay, sounds good. All bye, right. bye, guys. Heather, Giants fan. Wonder if she thought last night was the win of the year. Oh, we should I have asked her. I thought. I was going to say Heather did have a good take though when it comes to Mike Brown maybe being the X factor for tonight's game. Yeah, God. I mean, the more we talk about this game, the more I just see the Warriors. I mean, again, missing two of their top six guys, heading in the wrong direction, dreading the Warriors. Steph in all in his present mode, like we're mm-hmm. we're getting on the bus. By the way, they bust up yesterday. 
Uh, uh, Platzi said an interesting thing. He said, discuss great bus rides in Bay Area history. Because, hmm. uh, you know, I mean... <laughs> He says, if you really want to get into it, like, now you're How a fan. You got? Yeah. You're a fan of, you're well, a film historian. I, I was going to say, are we going with the bus ride with, with going around Arrowhead Stadium for the Raiders? Well, that's not bad, but okay. we're talking about actually in the Bay Area. Okay, here in the Bay. Uh, he said, in the movie The Graduate, Ooh. Dustin Hoffman's taking a bus on the Bay Bridge. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> he hops on the bus at the end of the movie. But that's a, uh, pardon me, the bus at the end, right. Yes, He's in correct. a car on the Bay Bridge. They're on a mm-hmm. bus. He and Catherine Ross are on a bus. And they jam up, yeah, the whole yeah, thing. And that's when he gets hit he with says, Simon um, Garfunkel. Don't forget the fur, the Ken Kesey further bus, uh, the buses from Chase to Golden One for winner take all games. Okay, eight away can be our Mount Busmore. I like the buses that they had going down Market Street for the Warriors parade. Nice buddy, those nice. are good buses yeah, with Draymond those... Green with his tequila on top and <laughs> Clay Thompson with his champagne didn't showers. Get, uh, didn't a, a Warrior dad? Jordan Poole's dad stole Triple E's <laughs> cigar. He didn't steal it. Triple E gave it to him. Oh my God. Give me a cackle on that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a hell of a parade with Triple E. <laughs> 925 says, you guys are talking about the 10 seed and the Draymond suspension. What about all the blown leads early oh, in the season? Oh, dude. Which one do you want to talk about? The 24-point lead to the Kings? I mean, the 10 other double-digit leads that they've blown this year? There's a bunch of them, Murph. Uh, 916, don't forget Sabonis had a broken hand during the series mm. last year. Uh, 4 and 5 says, in Dirty Harry, there's a bus to Marin County. Nice. That's outstanding. Nice. Young, young Tug, do you know who Dirty Harry is? Are you down with Dirty yes. Harry? yeah. You do? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Murph, Dirty, ha- good. Dirty Harry's going to be joining the show today at 9 a.m. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Stan Van Gundy. And the other part is Looney tonight. Guys, give me an over-under on how many minutes he plays tonight. Loon Dog? Yeah, Loon Dog. Give me 12 minutes plus. I don't know. What do you think is a reasonable thought process? for? Because the last couple weeks when TJD and Draymond have both been in the rotation, he's been DMP. He's not yeah, even playing yeah, minutes. I, I would say if he plays 20, something's gone wrong. Correct. Right? Then you've kind of had to press the panic button. I don't think it's going to go wrong. I love Looney, and I want him to play. I love. I mean, I'm just I'm, I'm the biggest Loon fan around. I'm kind of hate how he's been sort of marginalized, but it's kind of you know I do like Trace Jackson Davis, yeah. though. I'm a TJD guy. So um, you're 12. I'm around 12, Murph. I'll take the under and say I'll, well, I'll take the over. Ooh, just to, to support Loon. 13. I'm just glad I, I said a good over-under where you're really going good, back and forth. A really good yeah, over Give me 12 and a half. Yeah. It's kind of your calling, buddy. Yeah. Kind of like, you yeah, know, Vegas, you tell it? your team's in Vegas. You're a degen. Uh-huh. I mean, I think this is E-Pay's your... Ipe's in Vegas. Yes. <laughs> uh, who knows where Ipe is right Listen, now? Listen, I'm the guy who got beat in a... In a last, I, last I was seen, I was losing a sports bet to my bride. Yeah, that's right. She rode with Sheffler. I rode with Morikawa. Check, check with Candice. I was going with value, though. Plus 350, right? Yeah, but value doesn't matter when you're cashing checks. Would you rather... Make a bet that gives you bigger value but may not win or go safe and boring and win. You want to win the bets. Okay. It feels better when you get an underdog at plus odds, but at the end of the day, you're gambling to win money. Yeah, that's it. You play to win the game. Thank you. So what we're saying is we don't think this will be the last game that the trio plays together. No, I think, think so. they win tonight. We'll see what happens on Friday. Now, I'm picking the Lakers to win over the Pelicans. Murph, what's your breakdown of the 7-8 game? That's a great question. As, as you heard Mark Spears saying, Zion's never won a big game or performed in a big game. He's never made a playoff I was game. Again, I continue to be shocked by what happened Sunday in New Orleans. The Lakers were in there, and they smacked them around. They did. It wasn't even a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so I, to the point where I started questioning, like, did the Pelicans know their seeding before the game? No. They had to win that game to get the 60s. So the Pelicans had huge motivation, and they got stomped by the Lakers. After so, coming to California and taking down the Kings and Dubs on back-to-back nights. That was so alarming. And it just goes to show you what, when LeBron and AD are engaged, yes. they're good. Well, yeah. <laughs> and so Murph, um, you're talking about the NBA in-season tournament champions. <laughs> <laughs> a kid asked me last night. He said, "Dad, how did how did the Warriors do in the in season tournament? I could, they didn't make it. Well, they didn't make the well. Group, they missed right? out because they blew a twenty four point lead to the Kings. <laughs> oh, I called I called it the worst loss of the season, as opposed to last night's Giants win, the best win of the season, biggest win of the season, Murph. yeah, win of the year. Um, so anyway, um, the point is, is that the 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 Warriors, if they win this game Friday, they probably go to L A. Or pardon me, they probably go to New Orleans because mm-hmm. I got the Lakers winning tonight, and that's been Spears shut down the idea of, yeah. of LeBron tanking it. I, I don't see it happening. Yeah, he's like, I got to do it. I got to do what I got to do. We're going to win this game. We're going to rest up, and then go take on Denver. And correct, and think about what it does for LeBron's legacy. Like he needs anything else to kind of stat pat him at this point of his career. But if he does get into the playoffs and he does take down the Denver Nuggets and Jokic. Then we're praising LeBron even more than we already do. I mean, they played them in the Western Conference Finals last year, got swept. Yes. Right? I mm-hmm. think I read that they've lost eight straight to the Nuggets. Ooh. 
Yeah. Well, the Nuggets seem like they beat everybody. Murphy. I know, right? Nuggets. That's the one team. And somehow, some way, they wound up as the two seed because they lost to the Spurs on Friday night when nobody was paying attention. Wemby, baby. The Spurs beat them with like a last-second bucket. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, there you go, guys. We're all feeling pretty darn good. We think the trio lives to fight another day, and we think the Warriors will advance on Friday. There's your big hit, Warriors. We got more talk. We got Stan Van Gundy in just a matter of moments. Yeah! Of course, former NBA head coach, current TV analyst for NBA and TNT. He's going to be doing the game tonight and a kid out of Alhambra High School in Martinez, California. Kyle Harrison, 9 o'clock out of De La Salle. It's all our East Bay high schools today. And then Saintly, as Papa calls him, Gary St. Jean at 9.30. So Stan Van next on the Sports Leader. We're not worried about the Sacramento Queens. Hayward, shout out to you for supporting KNBR. Hayward Sports Leader. This report is sponsored by Marin Health. Want to know the North Bay's best kept secret? It's home to world-class physicians, surgeons, and clinicians at 53 clinics across the North Bay. All ready to get you closer to your best. Marin Health, world-class care, closer than you think. Now, now from now, the O'Donnell now. Financial Group Sports Desk, learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Well, you just heard the promo. Yesterday, Bob Meyer stopped by the Pop and Lunch Show to preview tonight's Warriors and Kings play-in game. So to hear the full podcast, check it out now on KNBR.com and the KNBR app. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. of a small business owner keeping the lights on calling all the shots and then there's workplace accidents 500 degree ovens rusty nails danger lurks around every corner workplace accidents can happen but there is an easy way to keep your employees covered talk to your agent about workers comp coverage from pi or go to piinsurance.com and get a quote safety first then pi insurance individual rates offerings and savings may vary subject to policy terms and conditions not available in all states and situations
And now, 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 time for the Protect Your Assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report. And Marcus keep rolling on the sports leader and streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 1045. All right, what a pleasure to have Stan Van Gundy on to talk about tonight. Kings hosting the Warriors. Stan, of course, knows his Northern California well. Martinez, California, born and raised. Now he's sort of splitting the difference. We got the Warriors coming from San Francisco. You got the Kings staying in sack, and you got Stan Van courtside. Stan, it's great to have you back on KNBR. Brian Murphy, Marcus Boucher, Murph, and Marcus. How you doing, Stan? Hey, Stan. I'm good. Looking forward to tonight. Right? I mean, and, and it's funny, Stan. We've been talking about it the last couple of days, and and we just kind of, I mean, listen, this Warriors team has been, you know, start and stop and start and stop. But of late, they're playing so well. And I guess my my question to you is, why are we so confident here? I mean, we're supposed to be more worried. Every We all feel like the Warriors are going to handle their business tonight because they're, Stan, they're playing better than the Kings. Is that is that your read? Oh, well, certainly they've ended the season playing better than the Kings. In fact, playing very, very well. I mean, over these last 12 games, fifth best offense in the league, fourth best defense in the league. Um, you know, I think the defense has really been helped by uh, Trace Jackson Davis being in there. It's given them more size, more, more rim protection, um, allowed Draymond Green to roam a little bit more. Uh, defensively, and then the offense, to me, it's been pretty simple. Uh, Clay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins have both started to bounce back and play um, the way they had when, you know, when they were integral parts of these teams and both shooting the ball really well. So, yeah, Golden State's played as well of late as they have any time in the season, but there's still two factors, right? You're playing on the road, and I know Golden State's been great on the road all year, but you're playing on the road, and it's one game. I mean, that I, I say it all the time when we're broadcasting the uh, the NCAA tournament. It's tough to predict in one game. If the Warriors were playing a seven-game series right now against Sacramento like they did a year ago, I think they'd win the series in five games. But – it's not a series, it's one game, and Sacramento's certainly capable of stepping up and having one great night at home. And Stan, it does feel like these two teams are heading in two different directions, but to your point, anything can happen in a one-game elimination uh -huh. playing game, and that's why I wanted to ask you about the X factor that is Mike Brown, a man that maybe knows the Warriors as well as any other coach in the NBA. Last year in that seven-game series, got out to a 2-0 quick start against the Warriors. How much of a factor do you think Mike Brown is with his familiarity of the Warriors? Well, I certainly think it helps uh, Mike and his team. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But regardless of that, I mean, in the last two years, the Warriors have won 9 out of 15 against this team. Um, the thing, though, that I, I just love, and I think we all do, there's just so few rivalries, real rivalries left in the league. And this one, to finally have these two teams in a rivalry as close as they are geographically is great. And, and the rivalries are formed in big games. And so last year... We get a seven-game series. This year, we get what essentially was a buzzer beater for Sacramento to knock Golden State out of the in-season tournament. Um, three, the last three games these teams played were decided by one point this year, and now we've got them in a, uh, another elimination game. It, it's great. It's great for Northern California. It's great for the NBA. 
Talking to Stan Van Gundy, of course. He'll be on the call tonight, NBA on TNT, up in Sacramento. Warriors, Kings having this rivalry, a lot of fun. And so, Stan, the big, the hot sports talk radio question will be like, are, is this, could this be the last time we see the trio? Steph, Dre, and Clay, And obviously, Clay Thompson's contract situation and the Warriors' uncertain result tonight brings that in. Is that something you'll be looking at tonight when you look at those three guys on the floor? No, not really. I, I, I'm just one who pretty much stays in the present. And then when, when rosters get set for next year, I'm not much into the uh, hot stove league myself <laughs> in, uh, in all the sports. I know fans are. Yeah. It seems to me a lot of fans like that stuff even more than they do the yeah, games. Yeah. But, but I'm one who's focused on the games, and uh, that's what I find exciting is the actual – competition on the floor and eventually uh you know joe lake up and mike dunleavy steve kerr they'll work that out with their roster and decide their direction and we've got all next year to to talk about whatever direction they go right now i think it's a it's a team i mean that's got a chance and i said this going into the playoffs the other day to somebody there's really not a series in the west where I would be surprised by the result, you know, I mean, and I don't, I can't remember a year where I would say that there's nothing that I would consider a major upset. You know, I probably the closest would be if the Lakers or new Orleans, whoever wins the night would beat Denver. That might be the most surprising one in the West to me, but even that I wouldn't call a major shock. And Stan, you mentioned the Lakers and Pelicans game tonight. I have to ask you about the other hot stove topic in the NBA right now. It's the theory out there that the Lakers or the Pelicans should throw tonight's game to avoid playing the Denver Nuggets in the first round of the playoffs. Well, that's absolutely absurd. I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean I, I read that and I said, these people have got to be kidding. So you throw the game tonight and you lose. You, you now are in a one-game situation of not even being in the playoffs. And the other part of that, and, and I don't think coaches would do that anyway, the other part of that is if you do that, you're just telling your team that you don't believe in them, that you don't think they're very good, and that you're scared. And if you're scared, I don't know how your team's not going to be. I don't think players and coaches think like that. I think players and coaches – both those teams will be out to get a win tonight, fully believing they can go on and beat Denver in a seven-game series. I know, uh, I know you're in Sacramento tonight, Stan. We're talking Stan Van Gundy, but one more on that Lakers-Pelicans. How surprised were you that the Lakers won that game Sunday in New Orleans? I see, I was, I thought New Orleans had everything to play for, and they got kind of got stomped at home to put themselves in this precarious position. Is it simply that the Lakers, when LeBron and Anthony Davis are engaged, are that good, or Zion is yet to find his moment? What, what was your read on that? Well, I was surprised by the margin, certainly, but the Lakers have been a tough matchup for the Pelicans this year. They they play LeBron James on Zion Williamson, and then they've just used Anthony Davis to meet Zion at the rim when he when he goes. And the Pelicans and Zion have not been able to figure that out yet. I think they'll figure it out enough tonight to get a win myself. I, I think that Great players figure it out over t- over time. I think Willie Green, um, who's a former Warriors assistant, as you know, will figure it out enough to get them past tonight. But but look, when you're going into a, a game and the other team's got LeBron James and Anthony Davis, it's not going to be easy. And I think it's a great example of the parity in the Western Conference that we're seeing this year. There are 10 teams that are 10 games above 500. And that's why it feels like even if you are a fan of one of these teams in the play-in tournament, if you get into the playoffs, you have a chance. So, Stan, with that in mind, I know the Warriors need to win two games before getting into the playoffs. How deep of a run do you think this roster can make this year? You know, I, look, I, I'm with you, and I, I think any of these teams, if you get in, have a chance to – to make a deep run. I, I Look, I, I just think when you look at a Golden State team who's playing the way they are now and you're going in there with a Steph Curry, um, you know, and the other guys are playing better and your defense is playing better, I mean, I, I don't see anybody out there that they couldn't beat. Oklahoma City is very, very good. 
I think people are underrating them. They're probably the most underrated number one seed I remember seeing. I think people are writing them off because of their youth. But if their youth was that big a problem, they wouldn't have been the number one seed. They've got a true MVP candidate. I had him second on my ballot in Shea Gilgis Alexander. They're a top five team at, at both ends of the floor. <clears throat> I'd certainly favor them over the Warriors, but the Warriors are capable of, of beating anyone if they can get in. And I would say that about anybody in the West that gets in is capable of making a run. We saw Miami come out of the East get all the way to the finals from the play-in. We saw the Lakers get to the conference finals last year. Um, that's what's exciting about the play-in. You're not just playing for a chance to be a sacrificial lamb. Um, you're playing for a, a chance to really make some noise in the playoffs. Last couple of minutes with Stan Van Gundy. He'll be a golden one tonight on the call with the NBA on TNT. And, of course, just, uh, just on the play-in. It's been a few years now. And there's like the two arguments. One is that the West has all these great teams and then we get to see 10 wonderful teams. The counter is that in the East, Chicago and Atlanta, who both finished under 500, are still on our TV screens when in the old days they'd be banished. Do you think the plan accepts too many teams and it's better when it's a little more stringent? Or do you like letting more teams in? Well, look, I mean, you're, you, no matter how you do it, you're always going to have things that you don't like in the postseason. I mean, always. Like, I didn't – the tiebreaker rule out in the East is the one that got me this year. Um, you know, Orlando, Indiana, Philly all end up tied, five, six, and seven. So one of them has to go in the play-in. And Orlando got in because they won a weak division ahead of Philly, who had the better record among those three teams. It makes no sense. So – you know, there's always things that you don't like, but, but look, the play-in concept and what's played out has been a major success for the league. It's kept more teams and more fan bases engaged late in the year. It's eliminated at least some of the, of the tanking. There's just more to play for. And the excitement that the fans have felt among the, about the play-in um, – over these last couple of years has been outstanding. So, look, almost everything the league does, um, I was opposed to the play-in when they went to it. It's worked out great. I was skeptical of, you know, the rule changes back in the day to take away a lot of the contact and stuff. It's worked out great. So by the time they got to the in-season tournament, even though I was a little skeptical in my mind, I said, look, Adam Silver and the NBA office know what they're doing. Everything they do turns to gold. So the play-in has been a major success, and we're lucky to have it. And you'll be having a fun one tonight. This is the, the ultimate, really. Two really, really, really good teams, a good, fun NorCal rivalry. And Stan Van, we always look forward to your calls, man. We sure do You appreciate you hopping on KMBR with Murph and Marcus. Enjoy the heck out of the game tonight, and we'll look forward to our next conversation. All right, guys, enjoy. There he is, Stan Van Gundy, solid. He says yes to the plan, everything, you know, more TV, more goodness, more Warriors, mm -hmm. Kings now. Everything that you just gonna have to put up with the Bulls and the Hawks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the East, but I love Stan Van Gundy's breakdown of this Warriors team, and you heard him. He said he believes the Warriors can be they can anybody make a run. They can in the make Western a run. Conference. And uh, you know what's going to make a run? Marin Health, because with top physicians, surgeons, and clinicians right here in the North Bay, Marin Health puts you closer to your best health, world-class care, Closer than you think. All right. Well, he's, you know, he's given the Kings a puncher's chance tonight. Well, more than a puncher's chance. He's given them a, a play-in chance tonight. So, should be really, really fun. Can't wait. 7 o'clock tonight. And uh, what we'll do is we'll talk more about that with Gary St. Jean at 9.30. But Kyle Harrison joins us from Miami at 9 a.m. The De La Salle kid who got the win last night. And then, of course, the best of the world of sound. The cooler of content. Next on KMBR 104.5 and 680 at the Sports Center.
All right, Marin Health in the North Bay, world class. You know, we have world class beauty up there. Well, Marin Health, world class health care. Not just the closest medical care, but the best. With a cardiology team that delivers treatment twice as fast as the national average, a world class maternity care center with doctors and midwives available 24 7, an accomplished orthopedic team to get you back on the trail, and a partnership with UCSF that expands our world class capabilities. It's all right here to get you closer to being at your best. Marin Health, world class care closer than you think. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free from credit cards, car loan, and personal loans. Hey, it's Greg Papa. Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make it happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes. With almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards or get some money for home improvement. Hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. Call now, 415-808-5721, 415-808-5721, LoanPronto.com, 415-808-5721. In MLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. when you buy in bulk at Lowe's. Save 10% on bulk purchases of select roofing shingles because Lowe's knows pros. Selection varies by location while supplies last. Discount taken at time of purchase. See sales associate for details. All right, everyone. Chill. This is the cooler. You're not sending me to the cooler. Of content. Sponsored by Mancini Sleep World. Sleep better, live better. Visit sleepworld.com. And by Marin Health. Marin Health Medical Center and Marin Health Medical Network. World-class care. Closer than you think. On V Sports Leader. All right, with every segment, we get closer to tonight, 7 o'clock at Golden One. Warriors, three and a half point favorites on the road. Steph Curry trying to stay in the present. Draymond Green in the present doing a podcast that makes the cooler of content. You got to love Dre's broadcasting. Okay, there it is. You get that. Nah, it's fine. By the way, are you one of the people upset that Draymond Green will podcast during a playoff series or 24 hours before a play-in game? No. Uh, you know, it seems to be able to, otherwise you're sitting in your hotel room watching uh, Imp- Impractical Joker. Because I remember people were yeah. pissed off during their last title run. Why is Draymond doing a podcast? I'm like, what do you want him to be doing? Hitting the club? Being Seems out like, till 2 in the morning, at least yeah. you know he's in his hotel room yeah, doing yeah, a podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. NBA Finals maybe just has a different feel. Yeah. Like, I feel like you should be getting rub downs and watching film the entire time. <laughs> but uh, playing, maybe, I don't know. Either way, here's what he said mm-hmm. about I hate the play-in. I hate the play-in, just so you all, I absolutely hate it. It's the best thing ever created. When you look at the play-in and what it's done for basketball, it's the best thing ever created. I don't know who came up with it. I know Bron said they need to be fired. If they were fired when Bron said that, they need to get their job back because the play-in is insane. Like, since the NBA has added the play-in, it's taken the last month and a half of the season to a totally different level. Like, totally different. And so, I hate the play-in. I especially hate being a 10 seed. But 
as much as I hate it, as a basketball player, as a basketball fan, this play in is nuts. <laughs> I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I love it. He, I get it. He loves it. He's saying, I hate that we have to go play for our lives. Yeah. Sweat pouring down my face. But he's right about that. I think that it's changed the last month of the season. Correct. Yeah, I mean, yeah. think about all the math lessons we had from Brian Murphy, trying to figure out if the Warriors can move up all the way to number seven or number six or number eight or number and nine. Bro, if Sandy Murray's in Tahiti, I can't do math. I mean, that's, you know I mean? The, that's the problem, yeah, so Murph. Right. So it really has turned into a pennant race. And I'm with Draymond Green. There are things to love about it. The Western Conference, there's things I hate about it, the Eastern Conference. You got I that? hate the play-in. It's the best thing ever created. Didn't, I think Freud said that love and hate are the same emotion. I mean, Draymond I really almost went full like Rick James from the Chappelle show. No, I didn't stomp on Charlie Murphy's couch. Well, why would I do something like that? Of course I stomped on Charlie <laughs> Murphy's couch. <laughs> Young Tony, you know who Freud is? Sigmund Freud? Ooh, it sounds familiar. Okay. All right, good. That's all I got. It <laughs> sounds, sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. <laughs> That was a good one. Pulled the break on that, that one. That one made me laugh. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, hey, did, who watched the WNBA draft last night? The thing was like highly rated. Or, oh. My God, the ladies were walking down the carpet looking like it was the Oscars. Oh, it was big time news, of course. Shout out Caitlin Clark, drafted number one overall Indiana Fever. SNL Murph. star, Murph. Caitlin Clark. Yes. Her jersey sold out. From fanatics within the first hour of her being drafted in like every single size. I got a fever, and the only thing that'll cure it is another Caitlyn jersey. Mm. Uh, by the way, just quick digression: I see people out there saying that the Beavis and Butthead sketch <laughs> has entered more cowbell lore already. Wow! Like, there's a few certain iconic sketches that SNL has had through mm. the years. They're saying, let many people are saying right now, I'll put it up there with more uh, cowbell. It's in the Pantheon. You huh? saw it, huh? I did, dude. It was pretty funny. <laughs> the makeup artist deserves an Oscar yes. or an Emmy. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Jeez. Just the shirt alone. Anyway, uh, so the WNBA, shout out Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, mm -hmm. who's unbelievably stunning on the carpet. Chicago, yeah. How about Cameron Brink out of Stanford? Number two overall, baby. Let's go trees. Number two. Mm hmm. Wow. Go, and, went to the LA Sparks. So the catch is that her mom and Sonia Curry's mom went to college together. Mm -hmm. They're like mates. So Steph and Cameron are like, they're like, so Sonia Curry is Cameron Brink's godmother. Mm -hmm. So this is Steph's gal. This is Steph's homie. So here it is, uh, Steph Curry on his IG story last night, even with the Kings occupying his brain, giving some love to his goddaughter. Let's go, Cam Brink. Talk to him. Yep. Oh, it's coming, don't worry. Oh, yes, sir, versatility, versatility. All right, two cards in the building. Let's go. Cam Brink, top two WNBA draft. Let's go. So crazy seeing you do it. Come on, Cam. Let's go. Oh, let me get a shout out. <laughs> oh, look at him. Look at him. Oh, look at him. I ain't know this was about to happen. This is kind of funny. But that's love. Cam Brink, y'all watch out. She is on the rise. There it is. That was, uh, by the way, I, I misspoke. Sonia's the godmother. So she's basically like a cousin, sort of, to Dre, to Steph. He was filming the, the draft, and then at that time, he was filming it, Cameron Brink was shouting him out. Correct. So he's like, oh, I got to shout And out. we actually have the clip of Cameron Brink giving Steph the shout-out during the WNBA draft last night. You come from a beautiful basketball pedigree from your parents, but also to your God family. Did you get any words of advice, wisdom, how to soak in this moment yes. from your God brothers, Steph oh and God. Seth Curry? Yes, so it's actually funny. Right before I came here, I FaceTimed Steph with Sonia, my godmother, and my mom. And she was saying all these encouraging words, laughing with me. And then we FaceTimed Seth, and he hangs up immediately. What? Why? Oh, <laughs> all that's out. Seth. All him out. He loves Seth. That's just how he is. He can't handle his emotions. No, I love He's him so, so much. You. Both of them. They've just been such great sounding boards for me. They mean the world to me. And and they've been through this, so they know what it's like. Oh, there it is. What a heartwarming story. And damn, damn the WNBA draft's where it's at. Yeah, and I love the support. And it makes sense why Steph Curry was at the Stanford games, the women's basketball yeah. games, so often over the last couple of years. Michael Chase jokes about the WNBA not working these days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, shout out dude. Kevin Graham in the top six. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, dude. Oh, uh, my, my, well, first of all, we had a little breaking news. You want to throw a little breaking news? I'm, I'm, mm. Condolences all around. For uh, a Cardinals fans out there, Whitey Herzog died at the age of 92 this morning. That is a name. Definitely Hall of Famer and a huge name with the Cardinals over here in Oakland right now. Shout out Brandon Crawford, getting some media attention yesterday. Um, and the Cardinals, that's a huge name. Now, for Giants fans, now he threw hands with Roger Craig, bro. With the home baby. He threw hands with Roger <laughs> Craig. It was incredible. They really did. The Will Clark, Ozzie uh, Smith fights, mm. the Candy Maldonado, Mike Kruko, Joaquin Andujar. Dude, those... 
Those were the days. And so Whitey Herzog, obviously a World Series champ, managed our own Willie McGee, Richmond's own Willie McGee. And uh, so my friend Coach Jeff, who's a huge Cardinals fan, said that that's emotional for Cardinals fans. They'll shed one. So RIP to Whitey Herzog, 92 years old. But the other thing that I have to extend condolences to is John Sterling, the voice of the Yankees since... I didn't get the year. Sorry. I mean, you got to go back damn near 5,000 games I to see I, when the guy started. I think I heard Cope say that he he succeeded Hank Greenwald Ooh, on the Yankees. That wow. would have been like 92, I want to say. Wow. Anyway. He's the been the mi- voice of the Yankees my entire life, Murph. In, in, in the middle of the season. Yeah. Just announced his retirement effective immediately. Yeah. Is it health? I don't know. It was, so he had to step away from the club last year for some health okay. issues. Right. I heard Michael K say on the broadcast last night that he's not stepping down for health issues this season. It was just the right time for him to step away from the club. Well, first of all, I want to shout out Triple E, probably best booking ever. We got John Sterling on our show on opening day last year. <laughs> Hands down, best booking. <laughs> See if you can find him. Sterling's like, I like that kid with the giggle. Um, he called more than 5,600 games from 1989 to 2019. And then the pandemic changed things, obviously. Uh, Yankees win. So where Uh, were you with Sterling? I love John Sterling. And I know some people don't like the bits he does, whether we're talking about the thrillers from Godzilla, Hideki Matsui, Burn Baby Burn for Bernie Williams, and A-Bomb from A-Rod, until his latest ones with Juan Soto and Giancarlo Stanton in town. All rise for Aaron Judge. I love his home run calls, Murph. They're classic to me. Do we have his last one? We have his cut B. This is his, turns out on Sunday, this was his last Yankee home run call. And the pitch hit in the air to deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. It's a grand slam. Non dimenti car. That ball sure traveled far. Giancarlo, he hits a grand slam deep in the left field seats. And the Yankees take a 5-1 lead. Well, you know, with Giancarlo, um, Aaron Boone has always said when he gets one, you don't even have to look. And I will tell you that Doc Varsho didn't move. He knew that that was gone. He just... That was Susan Wallman coming at the end there. But uh, first of all, you know what's funny? Susan when I first started hearing him in like the late, I didn't, because the Yankees didn't do anything in the 90s. They didn't do anything until 96, right? Correct. That's and then, his first one. And then he started getting more famous, and I was like, who's this guy? And I thought he was kind of a clown. No. But I have to say a couple things. One, the, the tone and tenor, he yes. has a tremendous pipes. I mean, a tremendous voice pipes. for radio, right. yes. Great pipes. I want to give him that. Two, I ain't going to lie. When he came on our show last year, he was so delightful. Yeah. I really won me over. And three, I started to get it after he wore me over. Like the kick, I got kind of a kick out of his calls. I saw that smile on your face. Yeah. Well, Homer first goal. of all, the Italian on yeah. I me. Mean, my mom's Italian heritage here. Non dimenti car. That ball sure traveled far. <laughs> He's having fun, right? <laughs> what are some of his other ones? Well, let's get the Juan Soto one from earlier this year. This is one of his latest home run calls for the new man in pinstripes, Juan Soto. And the pitch hit in the air down the left field line toward the wall. It's gone. It went over the high wall. Juan Soto's first home run as a Yankee. A fly ball down the left field line. There is a Soto photo. A home run in the left field seats. He's wonderful. <laughs> Marvelous. And the Yankees have now taken a 4-3 uh, lead. Uh, yes, that's my era, like the great American song. No, you should care. That's Gershwin. That's George Gershwin. Wow. wonderful from whatever musical it's it was. So. wonderful. <laughs> that's old school. That's the great American songbook. Uh, uh, so anyway, the Yankees said uh, a, he was a Goliath of sports broadcasting. Yeah. And uh, showing up to perform virtually every single day since 1989, he was a pillar for Yankees fans who relied on the comfort and familiarity of his voice to be the soundtrack of their spring, summer, and fall. Mm-hmm. Did Nikki T check in? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't seen anything posted from Nikki T yet. Wow. Yeah, man. Hey, from 19 19- seasons. I mean, wow. The guy's a legend. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And he called a fair few World Series championships, yes, too. Yes, quite huh? a few. Wow. Well, there you go. There's the end of... We'll end the cooler of content on that. What was another one for me? Do you have another one? What was another one? What do you say about Giambino? Don't you know, oh. Robbie Cano? Okay. You, you want a Jason Giambino? I don't <laughs> remember Giambino. Something about the, Giamb- the Giambino, wasn't that it? The great Giambino, yeah, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. And what did you say? Was it Cano, was it? Robbie Cano, what? don't you know? And isn't there a- Mark Teixeira, he did. Oh, he sent a text message. What about, isn't there, gl- it's Glaber Day. Like a good neighbor, <laughs> Glaber is there. Oh, isn't there Glaber Day? Oh, he's got multiple oh, calls oh, for Oh, he Glaber. does. Okay, yeah. all right. That's what the about- thing. He'll sprinkle in a few. And is Aaron 
judge just simply all rise. All rise. That's the it. judge is coming. <laughs> all right. Very good. Uh, speaking of voices, Gary Gerald going to join Papa and Lund at 1230 today. How about that booking? Man, Walter. Setting the standard. It's my guy, Walt. Wow. Hey, uh, all right. Here's the deal. Kyle Harrison's going to join us at 9 a.m. Dirty Harry. De La Salle, the kid out of De La. De La Marv. Kyle Harrison doing his thing. We're asking about his brother, Bear. Hmm. Kyle Harrison from Miami at 9 o'clock on KMBR 104.5 and 680. The Sports Team. Let me get a shout out. Chilton Auto Body Traffic Desk. doesn't stop when the economy is uncertain. The market might not care you have a wedding to plan or a kid to put through school. And inflation doesn't know you've got a family to feed. But Bank of America does and is here to help. With digital tools to help you save and local experts in the Bay Area, you can keep life moving forward the way you need it to. Bank of America, what would you like the power to do? Learn more at bofa.com slash San Francisco. Bank of America NA, member FDIC, equal credit opportunity lender. Excitement is in the guards at Bay 101 Casino. Some of your favorite table games have no additional fees for bonus bets, like the three card nine over three card seven Baccarat bonus bet that pays 200 to one. 21st century blackjack with a lucky, lucky bonus bet. And three card poker. Enjoy great food or a refreshing cocktail right at your gaming table. Go to bay101.com or see them off 101 in San Jose. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER.
Murph and Marcus continue live from the KNBR Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpot Studios. Casino Matrix. Progressive Jackpots are here. Where are you? Just drop in. Please play responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Well, there you go. So we're going Kings. I thought we were talking baseball here, but that's okay. Uh, young Tony. <laughs> I can't catch a break. You want it, then you don't uh, want it. You got Young Tony all uh, shook up. Hey! Very good there. Uh, very good. Well, anyway, we're going Kings, which was a dubious question to begin with. Are we going to honor the Sacramento Kings with Elvis Presley rejoins? No, we should be trying to beat the Kings. Well, not, Murph, not to... I'm actually interpreting it as Tony giving some respect to the petty king himself, Steph Curry. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Is he the petty king? Oh, he calls himself the petty king. Okay, I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the the ultimate was the Warriors bottles Yeah. on uh, Tari Eason. That was the best. Warriors. Where he found three bottles to Come stick his fingers into play. was incredible. Yeah. But, hey, we got Kyle Erson. This segment is about the Giants and what I'm calling the win of the year, <laughs> controversially calling yeah. the win of the year. Hey, Walter. Walter does our uh, our weekend uh, Giants pre and post. He does, and he also do does our latest Giants podcast, Rounding third and king i like that clever by the way 808 can be our clever names for podcasts that's what you got to do you got to come up with one mm -hmm. you know what i mean you need something good i remember like when i did a yahoo golf column for years and years and years uh look at greg silver uh don't do the sounds of silver right Ooh. um uh i i had to, i called my column lateral hazard it's like you got it's just like it almost becomes a cliche of like trying to come up with these bad names but rounding third and king's Ooh. not bad i like when you used to do the cooler for espn Wow. Yeah. Now, you didn't know about that. I'll do it, Murph. I got knowledge on you. So, well, then you missed. Why didn't you say Happy Cooler Day last Monday? Oh, was Monday the day? The when it we used to. Monday of Master's Week, National Championship, ah. Final Four Monday, and Opening Day of Baseball. Wow. It See, was I, always. But that, the Cooler Day got ruined by Opening Day moving. Wow. It used to always be that Monday in April was National Ch Final Four Monday, uh, Masters, Monday of Master's Week, and opening day of baseball and that was so cooler. i indented it i i wrote this column called the water cooler which was whatever but anyway had its cult following it was i told you it was right when bill simmons was just exploded that's why i have tremendous resentment towards bill king's uh bill simmons success uh i have no resentment towards bill king's success mm -hmm. i love bill king rest in peace but um so we made one of my gimmicks was cooler day happy cooler day and i had a deranged listenership that readership that would send me emails some guys made cards. I was going to say, cooler day. I think our guy Adam Rank was yes, a cooler Adam Rank reader. Was a cooler dude, yes, it's was. Brian Murphy. I'm surprised he didn't send me a cooler day card. Uh, well, happy cooler day. There was one guy demanded to meet me in San Francisco. This is like back when you like meeting people on the internet in the late 90s, early O's was sketchy. Yeah. It's like, I'm a huge fan. Can I'm in San Francisco? Can I meet him? I'm like, I guess. And he demanded it. I huh? met him at Foley's for a beer. I'm like, should I be doing this? Yeah. What if this guy's a serial killer? Well, Murph, here you are now getting miracled in the Bruce concerts by this <laughs> My guy Glight, he sent me a good thing last night too uh a, a poem from the uh, la concert in in uh for bruce but anyway back to the topic at hand and that is the giants we got kyle harrison joining us at nine so how are you feeling about kyle harrison's season so far i'm feeling good about kyle especially since he has worked on it all off season long i felt like i've interviewed this kid two or three times and every time we're asking about the development of a changeup. well that changeup has arrived this season the way he's throwing that with confidence has taken his arsenal to a whole nother level. Now, there are some concerns early on about the slider. He's kind of abandoned his last two outings, but that fastball change of combination is playing right now. And to me, mental strength. Yes. Uh, the competitor in him. So he gives up a bomb in the second inning, and then two on, two out, gives up a sinking liner to left. Michael Conforto, you know, you, I don't know. Could he have caught it? Uh, maybe not. Should he have played it better and not let it get past him? Yeah, probably. Probably could have saved the run if yeah. he just placed it off the hop. It's 3 nothing now in the second inning to Miami, mm -hmm. who's 3-13 and 13 going into that game. Although they beat your Yankees once, mm. and then they beat the Braves once. They've gone 2-2 two and two in their last four against the Braves and the Yankees, and they're big leaguers, you know what I mean? So, so I'm worried. I'm like, if Kyle Harrison spins out here, and they got to go to the bullpen in the third or fourth inning, and what does he do? Puts up zeros in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. 
and winds up getting the win. Big bounce back, battle through adversity. And Murph, we discussed earlier whether or not I was concerned after the second inning. My answer was no. I was more concerned about ah. Edward Cabrera out here striking out 10 guys from the Giants. She's but crazy. to see him bounce back like that, that's what I want to see from why, Kyle Harrison. Why were, you, why were you not concerned? Because it's the Miami Marlins, for being honest with you. And look, he gave up two big hits in the second inning. One was a slider that we just talked about. He kind of abandoned in the game, only threw five of them yesterday. He left it spinning over the middle of the plate. If you hang it, they'll bang it. They're big league players. Yeah. And then even on that ball they dropped in front of Conforto, that was a changeup he left a little bit over the plate. So you can't be perfect all the time. You're going to miss pitches, and big league players are going to make you pay for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Hitters drive Cadillacs, too. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to the old line, man, if you're going to give them up, make them solo, yeah, right? exactly. And so huge outing for him getting the win. Uh, the other story yesterday was this whole bullpen situation. And, I mean, I don't think we got a full explanation either. We ne- By the way, we have no Bob Melvin sound on that. NBC Sports Bay Area never – I stayed on Laura Britt. By the way, Laura Britt, really good. I just want to give Laura Britt some love right now. Hell yeah, Laura. I, just the way she holds it down, I was just – I kind of realized, I was like, I take her so for granted. And I watch every Giants post game, and she's there just capably steering the ship. I'm like, yeah, give Laura Britt some love. I love seeing Richie, too. Yeah. I like seeing Richie. Yeah, Richie shaved his beard in between uh, week two. Should I shave my? I'm thinking of shaving it. Uh, Richie must have been in on a slump then because that's we, the only time he shaved during his playing career. What do you think? Would you be shocked if I shaved my beard? I don't know, Murph. The ratings look pretty good. I think you've got to keep it. <laughs> We're not slumping right now. It was my winter thing. Maybe it's as the summer approaches. Maybe, uh, although where I live, I might need it. We're hey, in the fog belt. Hey now. Uh, I, mean, I might grow it longer, <laughs> actually, for the winter, winter, summer. But anyway, um, this bullpen situation. Dude, I mean, here's my riff. Was Bob Melvin paying homage to Miami's own Gabe Kapler? Oh, Merv. Oh, really? Is that what you imagine? That's an uninformed take. Seriously? Really? Is that what you imagine? I mean, I mean, that, there's no way to get around this. Melvin, you probably he, need to do some homework on that one. Somebody biffed badly, and I had Young Tone look up the Jim Healy soundboard. The legend, this is for the old heads out there, the legendary Al Michaels. Who goofed? I've got to know. Mm-hmm. I send that to you, Young Tone. Here it is. Who goofed? I've got to know. Ah, man, that just warmed my heart. Somebody goofed. So was it Bob Melvin calling for a righty who wasn't warming up? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. How's Doval? How does Melvin not know Doval's not warming up? Maybe he, uh, he threw, he threw prior. I mean, this was a, and somebody wrote in, if Gabe did this, we got the Gabe army out there. <laughs> if Gabe did this, you'd be killing him. Yeah, I would. Uh-huh. And I'm killing Melvin too, but they got the win. Yeah. I mean, Melvin, I, that's like Bob Melvin's like, knows what he's doing. So does that mean it's on J.P. Martinez, the bullpen coach, who didn't communicate? I mean, that's a that's a major mouth. As the great R. Lee Ermey said in Full Metal Jacket, Young Tony, you know Full Metal Jacket? You down with Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is a major malfunction, he yells to Sergeant Pyle, or Private Pyle. That's a major malfunction, Marcus, in a big league game? You told, you're signaling for a guy who's not warming up? It, it definitely is a major blunder. And we discussed the kind of angles earlier about how apparently he did want Camillo to fall. That's why he threw up the right arm. But even to call in Camillo there, instead of having Taylor come in for a lefty-on-lefty matchup, Duvall comes in for the four-out save versus the lefty. Now, obviously, he worked out of it. But I'm sitting there thinking, like, damn, somebody screwed up unless Bob Melvin just called for number 42 to come into the game and everybody got confused because it was Jackie Robson. <laughs> that would be the only thing, really. That is incredible um, that that they got away with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, and shout out Tranquilo Camilo. And, and and I'll give Skip Schumacher some love, too, the Marlins manager. First of all, I love red asses. Oh, I love seeing Skip with a mouthful of sunflower I seeds love, just spitting them everywhere. Man, give me the red ass. Chewing I miss, up an give, give, give me Kim Mulkey, Danny Hurley, and Skip Schumacher on Mount Red Ass more. I need one more. Who else is a total red ass Madison out there? Madison Bumgarner. No, I meant manager or coach. Oh, manager or coach. As a red ass. Hmm. Who's just like a guy out Bobby here? Bobby Knight? Yeah, I'm current. Oh, I'm current. current. Yeah, I, I didn't like Bobby Knight. Yeah, no, you're not a Bobby Knight Bobby guy. Knight did it the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll consider it. But anyway, Harrison goes six. Giants get that win. Popovich? No, I wouldn't mm, say so. No. Um, he's more, nah, just a guy who's out of his mind. Schumacher with sunflower seeds flying out of his mouth, too, Dude. when he got tossed. Watch out for the spray zone. Uh, you are listening to KMBR AM and KMBR FM San Francisco, the sports leader at Cumulus Media Station. Connection made down in Miami, Florida where this young man woke up with a win uh, this morning down there in South Florida. Kyle Harrison, the kid out of De La Salle. It's great to have him, whether it's in Scottsdale or at a caravan in San Jose or after a win over the Marlins last night. So, hey, Kyle, welcome back to Murph and Marcus. How you doing this morning, man? Hey, morning, Kyle. 
Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's a beautiful day here in Miami and uh, looking looking for another dub today. So uh, let's do it today. You know, how are you guys doing? We're doing good, man. I'm calling it the win of the year because you guys were down 3 nothing, and you haven't overcome a 3 nothing deficit. Now, I saw there was a story where you told Blake Snell said, go get your treatment. You're like, no, I feel like something's happening. Is that a true story? You, you, you called that seventh inning rally? Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's something the uh, you know, Snell was telling me. He was just like, you know, go get treatment. I'm like, nah, the boys need me out here, like jokingly, you know. And then sh- sure enough, you know, uh, you know, the bats came alive and uh, put some good, put together some good ABs and um, love to see that, you know. And uh, on the pitcher side, hate to put the boys in that position, you know, down 3 0 that early. So I had to put up as many zeros as I could after that. Yeah, and the bats woke up at the right time to line you up for a win. But I wanted to circle back to that second inning because I saw some of your post game comments about not being happy with your performance in the second inning. But I thought you showed a lot of confidence battling back through adversity in the second inning. Walk us through that inning and how you were able to bounce back after that. Yeah, you know, that first the first batter, I thought, you know, I could kind of get a slider across. Ideally, I wanted to land it more um, on the outer half, OO, and uh, crept back a little in. And, you know, these guys get paid to hit those mistakes, you know. So, I mean, solo homers will never hurt you at the end of the day, but they suck to give up, you know. And, um, you know, really just, I guess, after that solo home run, kind of kind of a lot of stuff compiled and uh, made some good pitches, you know, just kind of baseball kind of didn't go my way, you know, certain certain times, you know, and, um, you know, you can't really think about it during the out and you just got to put your head down and um, try to put up zeros. You know, that's that's all you can do. Talking to Kyle Harrison, who went six innings yesterday, three runs and gets the win, wakes up this morning with his second win of the season. So talk about pitch selection, Arsenal. Um, you know, listen, uh, it's no secret that you're the four seam fastball guy. And yet it's no secret also that you're trying to mix in more secondary and third pitches. Um, mm-hmm. How's that going? Um, give us a progress report as to what you think's working for you and what you still want to get better. Yeah, you know, I think the fastball has been working for me, able to get that across early in count and um, something that I could kind of get some foul balls, get the strike two with and get them in, get them kind of in a hole. That's kind of my thinking with it. And um, the change up's been coming along really great, kind of been messing with putting the grip a little bit more. So having more consistent action on that, keeping it down in the zone and um, slider's been all right too. It's, the pitch that got hit out too. So of course, you know, we're not going to be too happy about that right now. And I'm um, just wasn't happy, happy with the shape at all. So I'm going to go next bullpen. We're going to be working on that slider. So uh, we'll get it tuned up and, um, you know, on to the next one. Yeah. And Kyle, there's an old saying in baseball. I'm sure you've heard it yourself that batters will show you what your stuff looks like. And it seems like early on the season, we're seeing a lot of swings and whiffs on that fastball. It seems like it just surprises a lot of guys in the box. How much confidence do you have in that four seamer to throw it against these major league hitters? Yeah. You know, I I think it's, you know, that's all you got out there. You know, as a pitcher, I think that's kind of the thing that I've started to realize, you know, it's just confidence, confidence and belief and, and execution in every pitch, you know, and, um, you know, no matter what Patty calls or if, if it's something I want in my heart, you know, I'm going to throw that pitch, you know, and, um, you know, living and dying by that pitch. You got to do that at this level because, you know, um, these guys are too good, you know, and you just got to got to compete, you know, and um, that's that's really all I all I try to do out there and um, try to get get the dude in the box out. Yeah. Kyle Harris is the voice you hear from Miami. Got the win last night. Giants with a nice comeback win four to three. If my math is correct, Kyle's next start will be Saturday afternoon in the sunshine and. San Francisco against the Arizona Diamondbacks, but they have two more in Miami today at 340. You got Jordan Hicks going. In fact, now that I say that, I just going to ask you about him. I mean, this dude is di- is dialed on the mound. Um, what are you seeing from your teammate Jordan Hicks, both on and off the field? Yeah, that's funny you say that, too, because, you know, I looked over at Webby, too, the other day, and I was like, man, he's looking this look, making this look too easy, this whole starter <laughs> thing. You know, he's making us look like crap, you know, but the guy's, <laughs> The guy's unbelievable, you know. He's throwing his pitch mix, throwing strikes, throwing everything over the plate, you know. It's expanding off, and um, I think it's just his attitude, too, you know. He wants the ball. He, you know, he has so much confidence in himself, and I think that's why it's, you know, been been such a good transition for him because, he, you know, he loves to throw the ball and uh, loves loves to get outs for the, this team and uh, get some wins. And Kyle, you mentioned Logan's name. Of course, Logan is known for pitching deep in the ball games, led Major League Baseball in innings pitch. But so far through the season, he's thrown 23 and two-thirds inning, and you've almost matched him with 23 innings pitch. How much of that is your focus this year, working deeper into ball games, getting into that sixth inning? 
Yeah, you know, that's kind of something that uh, when I came up last year, I just kind of saw, you know, I, I saw Cobb up here doing that. I saw Webby doing that. And um, I just kind of wanted to be one of those guys, you know, and I want and I, I want to stay in the game and, and try to try to do my best to keep the team in the ball game and, and win games, you know, because that's, that's the fun part of the game when you're able to control the game. And um, even, you know, even on your bad days, you know, if you're able to go six or, you know, help the bullpen out, you know, no matter what you can do, it's just trying to help the team and, um, that's what we're all about here. It's funny, you, you know, just following up on that, um, we were talking earlier today, you're at 23.0, I think Logan's at 23.2. And so I'm wondering about the competition. You just said Hicks is making us look bad, right? And Webb and you are like, like quietly, you're like, hey, Logie, I'm right on your shoulder here on innings pitch. There is such a thing as starting rotation pushing each other. Is that is that such a thing? Oh, 100%, you know, and we, we feed off of it. You know, when I see Hicksy go six, you know, not giving up anything and i see webby doing it and you know i see keaton doing it i mean it's it's contagious you know it makes you want to grab that rock and and put up zeros for this ball club so i mean you know we're starting to feel good we're starting to feel confident bats are coming alive and you know we're we're ready to win some games now is there competition beyond the rotation like i know you're a big cook you guys have like steak offs you're barbecuing like how much actual competition and how much chit chat is there back and forth between you guys no, there's, there's great chit chat. You know, there's, I want to really stay competition. You know, we all, we all love each other and, you know, we're all rooting for each other. So, I mean, there's, there's friendly competition, you know, with, with some little things here and there, but nothing too specific. You know, we're, we're, we're competitors, you know, on and off the field. So, you know, that, some things will never change. Well, this starting rotation is just an incredible thing. We just wake up in the morning after a Harrison start, you got Jordan Hicks going today. I mean, it's just so, what a bonus we're at right now. What have you learned from Blake Snell? I mean, this guy's won two Cy Youngs. That's obviously something you'd love to do in your career. Um, you know, he hasn't had the start he wanted. He'll tell you all about it. I mean, he, he's met the media for sure. But just what have you learned from him, if anything, in terms of prep or stuff or picking his brain? Yeah, you know, just just the work. You know, he puts on a lot of work. And, and you know, not even on the field, off the field, too. You know, he's got – got his own stuff to be dialed in you know he knows his plan and um, it's just a it's just the guy that you know knows knows his body knows himself and um good guy to watch you know and just kind of kind of look, look at you know and um see how he goes about his day is, and, is, is he kind of a funny character he's sort of got a funny way about him you know whether he's twitching his video yeah, games or anything yeah, yeah exactly and he's, he's a fun, he's a funny dude as well so he's always he's always chirping me and giving me a hard time but it's nothing nothing but love you know so um I really appreciate him, and he's he's taken the time to talk to me, you know, a couple times during games, and um, really put put it in perspective, you know, and just just a bunch of stuff, you know, that you're like, wow, I'm really, because I, I met the dude, you know, um, a couple couple years, I want to say five years ago, like when I was a junior in high school, <laughs> so I brought up that story with him too, and um, just just good times with him, and learn learning the game, and um, learning learning how to battle through adversity and all that. Yeah, Kyle Harrison is a voice you hear on the UMA guest line this morning. And, Kyle, I kind of want to go big picture with you. Year two of your MLB season, I know you're still technically a rookie, but second year at the big league level, what's been the biggest difference this year? I know you guys have any change at the head coaching position with your manager. What's been the biggest difference between Bob Melvin and Brian Price's approach versus the approach you took last year with Gabe Kapler and Andrew Bailey? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's hard to say, you know, because I was only here for a little too, and, um, I think just, you know, that I don't know how to word it. You know, they're really they're really good at you know just listening to what the pitcher needs and you know say I need to go out of the bullpen. You know, we're not necessarily looking at looking at an iPad so much. It's more just in terms of feel, you know. And um, yeah, they're really good about just letting me go out, do my stuff, and just making me feel comfortable. You know, they're doing a great job of um, letting me roll out there every five days and be the best version of myself. You know. And, um, and not, not having nothing but great pitchers meetings with them too as well. So, I mean, the preparation as well has been great. Last couple minutes with Kyle Harrison. Got a win last night. It's always great to wake up in the majors with a win for sure. Hey, um, how how you gonna how would you pitch to your brother right now, mm -hmm. dude? This guy's red, <laughs> white hot. Are you just staying away from him? Just going, just, you know what? If it's a free pass, it's a free pass. I gotta st I'm not yeah, going in the zone. I'm not challenging him. Yeah, we might have to have the catcher stick out the old arm on this one, but uh, <laughs> he's, no, he's swinging it well, and uh, you know, I, I would go heaters up all day, but uh, we'll see if he can hit it. But uh, no, but all jokes aside, he's tearing it up. I mean, he's he's hitting well, swinging well, and um, yeah, he's 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 really loving his time there at St. Mary's, and they're winning some ball games. So 
Um, you just need to keep it up. It's a long season holding that. So uh, just put that head down and keep going. Yeah, man. Bear, if people don't know, Connor Bear Harrison is uh, a St. Mary's Gale, and he's swatting lots of big flies. So keep your eye over there in Moraga as we wrap it up with Kyle Harrison, Marcus. And I know there was some friendly competition. We've talked about whether or not you and Bear were ever going to stop into the box. Are you guys still going head-to-head with your steak cook-offs, Kyle? Oh, not yet, no. I haven't been home, but uh, we'll save that for the off-season, you know, too. And uh, um, I know my mom was talking to me last night. She was like, you need to take them to the House of Prime Rib because I've never been to So uh, I know that I would get some points with with the bear for that one. Perfect. And when you're on the road, Kyle, do you try to still cook for yourself? Are you going out maybe looking for a Cubano out in Florida this weekend? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're we're – we're going out. We had a team dinner the other night, and you know we're getting to know each other more and more. And um, it's just kind of hard to hard to cook on the road, you know, in a hotel. You know, it's tough, and I don't have the proper. You know, who knows? Maybe in the future I'll bring a little cooking kit with me or something. <laughs> a little hibachi. Hey, yeah. Uh, hibachi pan or something. We'll see. But uh, right now, no. I just got to focus on baseball. And yeah. Last one for you, Kyle. Is Jung Hoo Lee? What, what have you learned Korean? How's his English going? How are you two vibing? Yeah, he's great. I got to know him a little more. Talked talked with him a little bit. Um, I actually went to Busan when I was eighteen for that USA thing uh, team. So went out to Busan. Was able to talk to him a little bit about Busan and South Korea and all that. So um, yeah, I mean he that dude's that dude's great. I mean he won an at bat last night. Um, I mean he's just a good guy that continues to put up great at bats and play great center field. So. Uh, I mean, the guy's the guy's even better off the field. He brings the energy, and um, we're we're so excited to have him and looking forward to what he's doing this year. The kids say he has aura. That's what I've heard from the teenagers. Is that right? He's got aura. He does. He's got some aura to him. You know, it's uh, it's contagious and it's it's electric. We love it. <laughs> you got to look yourself too, kid. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. Twenty-two year old Kyle Harrison racking up W's in the bigs, living the dream, buddy. And I know you're just worried about your next start. So you go get your uh, get your off day situation going. Enjoy South Florida. Find a Cubano sandwich. Mm-hmm. And then get a couple wins and come on home. We appreciate you hopping on KMBR with Murph and Marcus. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to be back in the Bay. There he is. Yeah. The De La Salle kid. Mm-hmm. The lefty. Dirty Harry himself. He's 22 years old. And he's now a ride. This is a guy who's like prospect, prospect. No, mm-hmm. now he's every fifth day. Just graduated from prospect status officially. He's here now. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, the sky's the limit, bro. Climb that ladder. I mean, he and he and Logan Webb, like we said, are, are you know, I'm looking at innings pitch. Logan's at 23.2, and Kyle's like, I'm at 23-0, bro. I'm right there. Yeah, and so, I, I don't want to look too far into the future, but when you have those two guys at the top of your rotation, I know yeah. Snell's there right now. I know Hicks is there. Hicks. I know Cobb is coming back. But I, these are the two guys that are going to lead your franchise for the next This starting rotation gives you vibes. By the way, are you guys, that's one of your guys' generations here, this whole thing with aura. Ooh, that's all aura. my kid keeps saying. I'm more of a vibe guy than an aura okay, guy. Young Tone, what are you down with this aura situation here? I'm the same way with Marcus. I mean, I've heard the term. I'm uh, more of a vibe. Uh, well, the 16-year-old says yeah. a Jung who's got so much aura people say, dad. People say that about Solaire, too. He's he got said great so, aura. That's, that's exactly what Declan said, too. Yeah. He goes, it's, we were at the game. He goes, Solaire's got aura. What is it, glowing? Yeah. <laughs> See, He's got an aura. If it's his too, vibes, that's pretty much the same thing. It's so too vibe. much aura, you're too old. It's hey, so uh, Gary St. Jean, Warriors Kings. We can't leave without more talk on the Warriors and Kings next on the Sports Leader. He's a dude. San Rafael, shout out to you for supporting KNBR. San Rafael Sports Leader. This report is sponsored by the San Francisco Giants. Snag a Patrick Bailey bobblehead this Saturday, April 20th, when the Giants take on the Arizona Diamondbacks at Oracle Park. The Giants catcher's first bobblehead is presented by Chevron and will be given away to the first 15,000 fans. Get tickets at sfgiants.com slash promotions. Now, now from now. the O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. The Warriors are squaring off against the Kings tonight in a win or go home game in Sacramento. So you know the Murph and Marcus show had to call up John Dickinson, the super reporter, to preview tonight's playing game. To hear that podcast and more, check it out now on KNBR.com and the KNBR app.
As humans, we like having options. One option you might like is speaking with a real person when you call about your credit card. With 24-7 live U.S.-based customer service from Discover, everyone can talk to a real person anytime, day or night. Limitations apply. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. There I was driving down the highway and a rock flies up and cracks my windshield. Are you kidding me? I asked for recommendations and everyone sang the same thing. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. I booked an appointment at safelight.com and they came to me for free. It was that easy. Cracked windshield? Go to safelight.com now to schedule your free mobile service and let Safe Light come to you. Conditions may apply. Safe Light Repair. Sponsored by UMA, the smartphone for your home and business. And now, 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 time for the Protect Your Assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report. Murph and Marcus on KNBR 104.5 and 6.8. The sports leader. Yeah, Golden State's played as well 
of late as they have any time in the season. But there's still two factors, right? You're playing on the road, and I know Golden State's been great on the road all year, but you're playing on the road, and it's one game. I mean, that I, I say it all the time when we're broadcasting the NCAA tournament. It's tough to predict in one game. If the Warriors were playing a seven-game series right now against Sacramento like they did a year ago, I think they'd win the series in five games. But it's not a series. It's one game, and... Sacramento certainly capable of stepping up and having one great night at home. Stan Van Gundy does a great job for NBA on TNT. He was on our show about an hour ago. Damn, Marcus, your vibes are good. Another tune of yours that I dig. What is it? This is another hit from our guy, Big Crit. I need to be on my. I need to get on Big Crit. He's a king remembered in time, and I want to give some love to the six five zero that simply said, "Water boy." K-R-I-T forever and gave us this rejoin, because, Lack Lack. These are, like my, these are my jams. This is my, my, this is my vibe, Murph. <laughs> this is my aura right here. I need to hang out with your aura, buddy. That is, uh, you Make the Connecticut Yankee play this at the Potero Hill thing here. Yeah. Uh, you have some business to take care of, I believe. Ooh, I got business, Murph. Yes, you do. Let mm-hmm. me get some of that business. You mind sharing? Here it is right here, buddy. Oh, thank it's you, my business. friend. Well, right I there. can tell you that the business is taken care of. By Redwood Credit Union. Watch your money grow with a high-yield savings certificate at Redwood Credit Union. See how much you can earn at redwoodcu.org. Told you Nicotina and June are on the uh, 2024 Hum Babies playlist. Ooh, you yeah, might have to yeah, throw yeah. some big crit in there. I think I might have to throw some big crit he's in from, there. He's from Mississippi, though, not from Oh, the really? Yeah, uh-huh. uh, yeah, that smooth Mississippi vibe, Down man. South, so yep. There you go, King man. The south. Well, they heard Stan Van Gundy saying, listen, the Warriors are the better team, especially without Monk and Herder, but on one night, anything can happen, hence... The play-in bracket. So the big question is, is this the last time we see the trio Mm. together? I mean, that's like, we asked, it's so funny, we asked Stan that, Stan Van Gundy that, and he's like, I'm, he goes, that's what you guys do on Sports Talk Radio. He goes, I'm here for the game. Yeah, he's like, that's not even in my mind. It was a really interesting moment, because it was old Pat, old Peaches, who I heard from this morning. What's up, Pat? Um, And there was a point in like, oh, I don't know, 07, 08, 09 or something like that. And he was talking about the NFL draft. He's going on and 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 on. And I said, hey, I said, do you like this stuff more than the games? Because it sounds like he goes, yeah, I do. There was the moment in time when I realized it was changing. Yeah. He goes, yeah, I do. This is better than the games. I go, it's better than the games. I was like, no. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I'm Better than the games. Your generation yeah. has decided that the the chatter of, like, the just speculate. Give me a take. That's better than the games. I, do you, do I, you feel I, that way? I disagree. I think that's the Stephen A. Skip Bayless generation where everybody needs to have a hot take. I don't want to go full Jeff Kent and just say, enjoy the games more. Enjoy the games. I enjoy the actual games. Now, I know we're approaching mock draft season in the NFL where we're going to start talking about all these ridiculous offseason storylines. I mean, look how much we're talking about Brandon Ayuk scrubbing the 49ers from his Instagram account and unfollowing them. Like, there's so many storylines 24-7 following these guys around. But, Murph, I don't know. Call me old school. I still enjoy the games. <laughs> That's why you listen to that tune, those, mm-hmm. those old school tunes. That's right. Hey, young Tony, uh, is it better to, to riff on, like, is this the last game ever for the trio, or would you rather watch the game? Ooh. See, you're for sports talk radio, yeah, definitely the former. But I mean, okay. listen, the game is always the game. The game is most important. Okay, it's interesting, man. And Stan Van was like, ah, I'm not really concerned. He goes, that will get sorted out. That's kind of how I feel about Brandon. I mean, like ultimately, if you really cut me mm-hmm. into my heart of hearts, like Brandon Ayuk, I'm like, yeah, it'll get sorted out. Yeah, it'll get sorted out. I'd rather watch the Giants and the Warriors right now. But for this job, yeah, 808 can be R. Are the Niners blowing it with Brandon Ayuk? 808 can be R. That's all you guys do all day long. <laughs> bitch about the game. Enjoy the game more. So a couple of angles going into tonight. Is this going to be the last time we see the trio? I think the short answer is no, and the long answer is no. Hmm. Because my short answer is I think, the Warriors, I think the Warriors are winning tonight. Correct. So they stay together. And I think the long answer is I just feel like everything about Clay Thompson says that he comes back even at a reduced rate. Although Mark Spears told us it's about years, but there is a point where he wants more. He wants those three years, not the two. Well, he's got to line up with Steph Curry, Draymond, and Steve Kerr. That's the bottom line. That's your timeline right there. All these guys should ride off into the sunset together. And look, we've played the sound from Clay on the Draymond Green podcast, talking about their relationship, how they fit so well together. We had Michael Thompson on later that day, and he talked about the importance and the legacy 
of retiring while wearing one uniform. To be a lifer, that to me is worth more than any amount of money that Clay Thompson could get from the Orlando Magic or one of these other teams that might throw the bag at him. But there's a story that Lakeup doesn't want to spend 400 mil next year, and so what are you going to do? I mean, it, it gets very creative, and, and, and it gets into the NBA, you know, what do you do with mm. Chris Paul? What do you do with, you know, Kaminga's due for a payday pretty soon. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, listen, you said we have two more years. You got Draymond and Curry at a fixed number for two more years. Mm-hmm. You got Kerr for two more years. But if Clay wants three, he'd be staying on. He'd stick around for a year after right. Curry. And and I, mean, I know so. that was the report that floated around before the season that he turned down, what was it, like two years, two 48? For, I think that's the rumor I read. That yes. was the rumor before the season. Now, since then, Clay Thompson has moved to the bench, has moved back to the starting lineup. And we've seen this recent stretch over the last two months. I brought up the fact that he's top five this year in three-pointers made. Hell, he led the NBA in free throw percentage after qualifying this past weekend over Steph Curry. Speaking of which, he he beat Curry, right, exactly. We yeah. have a bite on that, don't we? It's actually pretty funny. Some great sound from Steph yesterday yeah. talking about how Clay didn't even know until he walked into the building and really didn't care. Another nonchalant answer from our guy Clay Thompson. Again, I don't think he's worried too much about these statistical oddities or achieving greatness. All Clay Thompson cares about is his legacy, and that, to me, coincides with ending his career with the Warriors. Cut cue, young tone. Is this Steph Curry on losing the free throw title to Clay on the last game of the season? See if they rewrite the rules on what you don't know what 125 free throws uh, with that qualification is, but he got it done. I had no clue until Raymond told me today. I knew I was up there percentage-wise pretty much all year. Uh, I think Dane was up there, too. But uh, I had no clue. Clay was uh, ineligible until until last game, and he made all five, so shout out to him. He had no clue either. So he's like, oh, that's cool. It was a com- that was a whole conversation right there. And he didn't even realize he gets a little maybe a plaque or trophy or something. I presented Jordan with his when he got it. I guess Clay missed that whole ceremony because he had no no idea that there's a, uh, a trophy acknowledgement for the, uh, the stat leader right there. So the trophy was a surprise to him. Any solace that he kept it on your team at least? No, I hate losing. <laughs> Absolutely not. But uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of my teammate, yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. So, That's by awesome. the way, it's an underrated uh, uh, award, mm-hmm. and Steph has won four of them, but none since 2018. Uh, that's because Jordan Poole crashed the pool party. Poole took it in 22. You know who won it in 21? Chris Paul. Wow. So you got so right now you have on the on the roster three current or former free throw champs. The Warriors are the best free throw can, shooting team in the league. Can we get baby. to the stripe? Is my get question. To the line. Yeah. Uh, Reggie Miller won it five times. Steve Nash won it two. Mark Price won it three. Oh, that's an old school name. Larry nice. Bird won it four times. Larry Legend. Rick Barry won it six times, nice, dude. dude. Six times. So uh, I wonder if he uses that to uh, to in, in, when he's, you know, getting ready for the romantic interlude in the, uh, <laughs> oh in the bedroom. <laughs> hey, baby, you want to see my six titles? Hey, he's, uh, still, he's still active, all right? You still have that young tone? Can you uh, find that Rick he's Barry? Gonna, he's going to have to dig by. Oh, no, don't worry about yeah, it. we got to get going. we got to get going. One. So anyway, well, listen, so we don't think – that this is the last we see of the trio because we think the Warriors win tonight. And we also think, oh, you got, hey, baby, you want to see my six titles? Here it is. Just can't run as fast, jump as high, and not as good in bed. I'm still active. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's the Warriors, man. Still active. Still like. active. There you go. <laughs> all right, Gary St. Jean, one of the greats. Always the great voice. We're stealing him from Papa. You can't call him saintly. We're taking Gary. Gary St. Jean next on Cambier 104.5 and 680 the Sports Later. He had no clue either. So he's like, oh, that's cool. It was a com- that was a whole conversation right there.
it's Greg Papa. Spring is here, and I'm fired up about the orange and black. And yes, I'm still obsessed with Tony's Pizza in North Beach. Tony's has been ranked number one in the world, and it's my go to spot for Neapolitan, New York, Detroit, Sicilian, and Grandma style pizzas. They also make fresh pastas, and their spicy bucatini is one of my all time favorites. Don't forget about Tony's other locations like Capo's, Toscano Brothers Bakery, and Slice House locations throughout the Bay Area and at Oracle Park and Levi Stadium. David Livingston, Sheriff of Contra Costa County. We are aggressively hiring entry-level and lateral deputy sheriffs to join our diverse staff, people who want a rewarding career in public safety and community service. Are you ready to serve the community with honor, courage, and commitment? The Contra Costa County Office of the Sheriff offers a wide variety of assignments, great pay and benefits, and the opportunity to make a positive difference. If you're interested in joining our team, check out our website at cocosheriff.org. It's time to get away. Northern California's premier casino resort is the perfect place to do as much or as little as you want. Cash in at Cash Creek Casino Resort. Top Nation, Murph and Marcus keep rolling on the sports leader and streaming live on YouTube at KNBR 104.5. There it is. We're doing King Rejoins for the Sacramento Kings. It is now or never. It's tonight at 7 o'clock at Golden 1. And one of the, the few who knows both markets stone cold is our next guest, Gary St. Jean, who, of course, roamed the sidelines at old Arco Arena, not this fancy Golden 1 thing, grinding it out at Arco, and, of course, was with the Warriors for years and Nelly, and then was our GM here in the Bay. This is a stone cold Warrior King PhD Gary St. Jean, welcome. Murph, Marcus, great to have you. How are you, Gary? Hey, Gary. Hiya, fellas. How are you guys? We're doing good, man. We're doing good. How about this two-year springs in a row? We get these yeah. Warriors and the Kings. It never happened for decades, Gary. Now we get it back-to-back. -back. You know, guys, uh, when the Kings came probably in 87 or whatever it was, there was like, holy cow, till we first made the playoffs my second year, uh, they had never made the playoffs before on the West Coast. And then for years, 
the Kings were not very good. The Warriors are real good. And then conversely, switch it all around. And now we've had two years of great fun and great competition. It's great. And, Gary, I know earlier this week, Steph and Draymond were even a little reluctant to call it a rivalry. But after last year's seven-game series and tonight's playing game, it feels like this is truly turning into one of the best rivalries in basketball. Well, the proximity. You know, two-hour drive up 80 and – you're there, and it, it, it's great. It's great for the Bay Area, great for Northern California. Hey, those guys can speak like that because they've won four championships in the decade. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true stuff. All right, Gary, let's talk about tonight. So th this is the more you hear the kind of the talking heads yep. and the NBA experts talk, and even here on our show, and we're not experts, we just say, gosh, just the Warriors, the Warriors are in a better spot. They're, they're healthier. They're playing better basketball. The Kings are disappointed to slip from six to nine. They're missing Herder and Monk. Am, am I on to something here, Gary, that all signs point to a Warrior win tonight, or am I missing something? No, you're spot on. Uh, here's the deal. Give, your, give the eye test. Let's the three of us look at both these teams. When you look at the Warriors, they've really got it going here over the last month. Fabulous job on the road. Great job coaching by Steve, inserting Davis to the five spot, allowing Draymond to be at the four and Rome on defense, bringing uh, Clay back into the starting lineup. That looks great. And the bench arguably is as good as anybody in the league. It's going to be a big advantage for the Warriors versus the Kings. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then when you look up there with the Kings, hey, guys, hey, there's luck involved here. you got to be healthy. They're losing their third best player in Monk, arguably in the running for six man of the year. Probably, uh, oh, the young guy, what's his name? Mass Massey in in, uh, in Philadelphia is probably going to win it. But Monk's had a great year, and Herder, you know, is a spot up shooter. He cuts hard without the ball, and he didn't have as good a year as last year. But he's a quality player. So now they're starting Ellis, and you say to yourself, well, that might be a guy we can help off of to shut down Fox's drives or. So bonus is post-ups, and uh, they're going to need our old friend Harrison Barnes and Murray to make shots. Their bench is suspect. Uh, Lyles is a 6'8 guy, a, a pick-and-pop guy that can make a three, but he hasn't, he's hasn't. he been injured, and they're going to need he and Mitchell, uh, the young guy from Purdue, guard. Uh, they're going to need to make shots, and Mitchell may get inserted in the lineup if the Kings are having trouble guarding Steph. Hmm. Now, Gary, my biggest concern for tonight is also dealing with an injury, and that's the Warriors being without GP2. He's been ruled out with a yep. calf strain. What do you think the biggest game plan is, is to try to slow down De'Aaron Fox without GP2? Yeah, you know, you, you, if you just look at positions, you say, oh, my gosh, here's the marquee matchup, Steph versus Fox. Well, in the NBA, we call it cross-matching, and they may not guard each other. The Warriors have a couple options here. In the old days – Clay would guard him, but he doesn't have the lateral mobility anymore. So that points to somebody like Wiggins. Uh, you can really mess around here because Wiggins can guard almost one through five, and that's why he's so important, fellas. You know, if he's right, he, he's like two years ago when they won the championship. He was the second-best player on the mm -hmm. team, what we call a two-way player. So, yes, Peyton was important to, to try to slow down Fox, but because of their suspect perimeter shooting, you can give more help on with other teammates on Fox. And here's something to keep in mind with Fox. He struggled from the three line over the past month. His percentage is not good. Yet he's averaging nine threes a game. So now you've got the question, the in vogue play in the NBA is a high pick, a pick above the top of the key, a, a big and a small. So when he's up there, do you go over the pick? Or under the pick. If you go over, you think the guy's going to pop back and shoot. If you go under, you don't respect this three ball, and you're going to catch him on the other side. That'll be something to watch for when you see the game uh, take place tonight. Gary St. Jean breaking it down. He knows his Kings. He knows his Warriors. And they're going at it for the second straight spring after decades of just eyeing each other up yeah. high and down I-80. Uh, this I want to ask sort of a non-X's and O's, sort of a spiritual, like, big-picture question about the Warriors. And that is, you know, obviously there's so much going on in NBA history with this trio, Steph, Clay, and Dre. Yeah. And and obviously Joe Lacob and Mike Dunleavy made a decision. We're going to run it back with these guys and add Chris Paul and all that. So just kind of those guys on the bus up here yesterday, those guys as they're getting dressed today, how much of this weight of history is, is on these guys? Like, like, hey, man, the Kings don't know. We're playing for our legacy. 
We don't know how many more runs we have at this. Do you know what I'm saying, Gary? Is there something more sure. to this group here that like, they have a spiritual quest kind of thing? Well, when I look at those guys, I don't think in the moment that's at the top of their right. uh, list of things, uh, priorities. But I do think when they step away and maybe when Clay's on his boat out in the middle of the bay, <laughs> he's thinking about it, or, you know, Draymond's playing with his kids and saying, you know, who's got it better than me? <laughs> Nobody. And, you know, you look at Steph and they've made the commitment there. And that's why uh, I sit out here in Danville and say, boy, I hope Joe steps up to the plate and resigns play because as you noted these guys are, are going to go down as legends but yet we're playing in the moment and if they can win this game you know then they then they move on to the, to the next challenge another road game but they've been so good on the road and they're playing so good I I would not bet against them guys and even if let's hypothetically say you win two and now you're going to wind up playing. I'm not sure. They're, are they going to play OKC or, or Denver? Yeah, they, they, if they won two, they would play OKC. Yeah, and frankly, that's better for them. They've not really struggled against Denver. I want to say they've lost eight or nine in a row. And uh, when you look at uh, OKC, and it's a compliment to them, they move around and move people and move the ball similar to the way the Warriors really used to in the old days. And it's beautiful basketball, and they're doing a great job there. Yeah, last couple minutes here on the UMA guest line with Gary St. Jean. And, Gary, the last thing I want to ask you about is how the minutes are going to be divided tonight in the front court. Because in the four yep. games that were played earlier this season, TJD did not get a lot of playing time. And you look at last year's playoff series where Kevon Looney was a monster on the boards with three games of over 20 rebounds. So how do you think the minute breakdown is going to be for tonight in the front court between Trace Jackson Davis and Kevon Looney? Yeah, isn't that a good problem to have? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now you got a rookie going in there. You, you never know about rookies in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, ba Davis and Pazinski have been tremendous this year. I can't give enough praise. But this is going to be a heck of a challenge, Garden Sabonis. Keep in mind, guys, he's left-hand dominant, and you've got to really sit on that left side. If he, can beat, if he beats you going right as a coach, you say, that's my fault. If he beats you left, that's on you. Now, what are they going to do? Are they going to guard him like Looney did last year? You guys remember the free throw line, the elbow right there? They didn't even guard him. Yeah. They dropped back about six, eight feet and said, go ahead and shoot it, big fella. And uh, – what will they do tonight with him? That That's going to be very interesting because he's the fulcrum to the wheel for Sacramento. Nobody in the NBA beside Jokic passes the ball better than him in the five spot. So they can run him out of the high post, the low post, and they cut off of him beautifully. So you've got those two guys to guard him. And then you got your ace in the hole. If we really got a problem, Draymond can guard him. So, uh, yeah, you, you've got some minutes uh, situations to deal with. Uh, Kaminga coming off the bench now, but that's a big advantage because when you look at Paul coming off the bench and him and Pudzinski, and I think Moody will play a little bit more with Peyton out, uh, it's a much, much deeper bench than Sacramento's. And, you know, you don't know about foul trouble. I will say this to you guys. Always keep in mind, in the playoffs, role players play better at home. So your bench guys are more relaxed. They play with more confidence. And so we've got to watch out for the Sacramento bench. The bench play could be the key. Not, not, maybe not Fox. Maybe not Steph. Maybe those role guys who plays terrific. I'll, I'll say this to you guys. I truly think because of the depleted roster that Sacramento has, I think that Fox is going to have to go for 35. Yeah, and, and he could, as we know. And it's funny you yeah. say bench guys. You know, Gary, you just made me think of, you made me think of the man who ended the Warriors last year, Lonnie Walker of the Lakers. Great call. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, mean, without that, without right. that performance, the Warriors win that game. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Lonnie Walker, said he's on the stay ready bus. <laughs> he said they, he said he's on the stay ready bus. So uh, we'll see who's on the stay ready bus tonight. So it's great talking to you, Gary. Uh, we appreciate you hopping on the Murph and Marcus show and uh, enjoy the game tonight. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Okay, guys. Yeah. Good you stuff. You guys have a great day. Good stuff, Gary St. Jean. And by the way, was I getting? About a 9.9 .9 for Ira Kaufman out of Tampa. You're 100% right. right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tell you what, guys. Joey Bart, what's he going to do? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The so Giants has got to start hitting, hitting Murph. Listen up. <laughs> anyway, Gary's uh, St. Lee's right. Um, bench players will, will shock you. Mm -hmm. You know, is it Keon Ellis? You know, I, I, Lyles. I, I saw our guy Humbaby in the YouTube chat earlier today saying Keon Ellis is better than Kevin Herter. I mean, you know, listen, I'm not looking for that. No. I'm not looking for some king 
to shock me off the bench tonight, all right? Dude, I'm Some not, king to steal not, the crown from that's not, that's not in my game plan for tonight, all right, brother? Um, by the way, Kuminga, we talked about, we, he's a guy we haven't talked a lot about, dude. Kuminga. Remember last year, the Kuminga army yeah. was pissed yep. at Steve Kerr mm-hmm. for not playing him enough, or even in 2022. Well, that's because Mike Brown drew up a game plan to attack Kuminga defensively, and that's why the Kings went up 2-0 in the first couple games. Yeah, and then in, even in 2022 when he was young, it, it, people thought he should play more, and now he's going to get his chance. I mean, he will be on the court for a lot of minutes tonight. We'll and see. Draymond Green on his podcast yesterday said, if Kaminga plays well, the Warriors will win. He is banking a lot on Kaminga's performance tonight. By the way, Kaminga, 21 years old. Yeah. 21 years old. We said Kyle Harrison, 22. Kaminga's younger than Kyle. He's an old man compared to Kaminga. <laughs> so, all right. All right, we'll hand it over to Papa Lund. We got our Sutter Health Report. And what mm. did young Tony learn today? Uh, let's finish strong on KMBR 1045 and 680 the sports leader. Jonathan Kaminga brings a different flair to our team. From the Chilton Auto Body Traffic Desk. Suffer from erectile dysfunction or Peyronie's disease? Has Viagra stopped working? Most ED cases are caused by plaque buildup, which causes blockages and restricts blood flow. Even Viagra can't get through. But thanks to the doctors at West Coast Men's Health, a revolutionary medical procedure is now available. Using acoustic wave therapy, this non-invasive, pain-free treatment breaks down plaque, restores blood flow, potentially reversing ED for good. And women, if your man has ED, talk to him about acoustic wave therapy and how West Coast Men's Health can help, regardless of age or medical history. With clinics in San Mateo, Pleasanton, Walnut Creek, and Elk Grove, call 650-407-1167. That's 650-407-1167. 650-407-1167. Online at westcoastmenshealth.com. to a new Toyota. Get ready to take on the great outdoors in a brand new Toyota truck. Answer the call to adventure with powerful performance and start exploring. Right now, get low 1.99% APR financing on the powerful 2024 Tundra and Tundra Hybrid. Or check out the all-new redesigned 2024 Tacoma. Toyota, let's go places. Offer available through TFS to buyers with premium rated credit. Excludes DRD Pro and 43024.
Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. and Marcus continue live from the KNBR Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpot Studios. Casino Matrix. Progressive Jackpots are here. Where are you? Just drop in. Please play responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. I like this, buddy. Way to, to give us a little warning. Don't be so... Don't be so certain. There's a suspicious minds going into tonight, huh? Ooh. How about Elvis getting all bowing up on his jealous... Uh, lover, or actually, it's the lover who is jealous of Elvis. I I'd probably be jealous of Elvis too if I was his gal. He'd probably think he's stepping out. I mean, Murph, he's a good looking I, guy. I'm jealous of Elvis. <laughs> I, I try to live my life like the king. Elvis Aaron Presley. Speaking of full names, uh, Whitey Herzog, who died today at age of 92, shout out Cardinal Nation there. Uh, I know a huge rival with the Giants. But Whitey Herzog's real name, Darrell Norman Elvert Herzog. Wow. Darrell Norman Elvert Herzog. Now, that's an old-school name, brother. Yeah. <laughs> that's old-school. You don't that's get those anymore. Names, yeah. There's no more Darrell Norman Elverts these days. Uh, all right, guys. And, hey, speaking of baseball, is it time to health it up? Yeah. Time now for your Giants Health Report, sponsored by Sutter Health. All right, Murph. Today, we got a couple big updates from the Giants starting rotation. Alex Cobb is scheduled to throw a bullpen down in Arizona, and so is Robbie Ray recovering from Tommy John surgery. Both boys throwing bullpens down in Arizona, and that is your giant stutter health report from the doctors who never stop answering your questions, the cardiac specialty centers that never stop helping hearts. Sutter is more than 220 hospitals and clinics that never stop caring for California's SutterHealth.org. Freaking love the Giants starting pitching. It's incredible. Oh, and it's only going to get better, Murph. I mean, just the idea that we wake up, who's, oh, Hicks? Wait, Jordan Hicks mm. today? What, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? And then, what, Ke I, I'm a Keaton Wynn guy. You know what I mean? And then and then Logan Webb on Thursday, Blake Snell on Friday, Kyle Harrison on Saturday. These are all home games against Arizona. I'm sure you'll be out there. I mean, Murph, you're saying you don't like doing your homework to figure out who's starting the bullpen games? You probably need to do some homework on that one. Shout out to your guy, Gabe, who met up yesterday pregame with Bob Melvin on the field down in Miami. Was there a sadness to Gabe being in street clothes? Oh, and dude, how about, how about I came in this morning and young Tony goes, dude, did you see Gabe Kapler was on the field wearing baseball pants? Those weren't baseball no, pants. No, they were just white jeans. They were like his sexy hey, Gabe. Uh, wearing the Marlins hat. His sexy Gabe pants. I, I, think, I think young Tony doesn't know about the world of white jeans. Well, maybe it's a time for us to then to play what did young tony learn today murph and marcus want to know what did young tony learn today well so the joke is he's very very young and innocent hey i know that now okay <laughs> all right so you know it's funny i i again i told you i've been dropping the ball on this i was surprised you uh, you both you bone you got a little full metal jacket i was gonna throw you that curveball but you're down with it you've seen the flick i have not seen the full oh, film oh you haven't seen I've it heard of the film well, the, really, the only thing today we threw at you that you, you said no on was incredibly the most famous psychoanalyst of all time, Sigmund Freud. Uh, I don't remember how that came up. I don't Freud know Freud came up, but... Uh, I don't know half the stuff You said, I think I've show. heard about it. Honestly, Sigmund Freud and you have never... Heard the name. <laughs> <laughs> Just had not, not too much knowledge. Are you familiar with the concept of a Freudian slip? Ooh. Ooh. So that's... No? Freudian slips can be quite juicy. Yeah, Murph had one last week when he dropped that F-bomb. Well, that wasn't a Freudian slip. Oh, sorry. No, that was just a. I was just stepping in a box. That's just Freudian an Freudian slip is when you say something that reveals your true subconscious. 
By the way, Curly just found out you dropped an F-bomb. Oh, yeah, that's right. Curly was gone. Shh. What did what did John Joe Curly learn today? Yeah, we John Joe Curly. We so, yeah. YouTube uh, audience, Shout by out the way. to Shout the people out. in the YouTube audience. Twitch, YouTube, Kim, you're at Murph. We are YouTubers. We are YouTubers. Yeah. God, that happened. That happened, by the way. So anyway, Freudian slip is when you say something that reveals your, like, I mean, like if you're a, uh, let's say you're accused of a murder and you're denying it, you're like, uh, and you said something like, uh, Man, that's not a bad one. I guess here's the biggest one is, and I can't say this one on the air because it's a little, but like uh, there's an old joke on SNL where a guy went to go buy airline tickets from a uh, a, a woman at the airport, but she had a very, she was buxom. She Ooh. had a large breast. Buxom. And instead of asking for two tickets to Pittsburgh, he asked for two pickets uh, to. I got gotcha. you. That's I, a Freudian slip. I can fill in the blanks. That's a Freudian slip. When, when you say something... That's not, you shouldn't be saying, but it reveals what you're truly thinking of. Because there's confusion. <laughs> <laughs> so, you might want to bone up on your Freud. Now, that's a trippy guy. Mm. So, Freud had this big belief that, like, everything was about sex. Like, everything that every man does is about sex, and everything women, it's all about sex. So, he also liked to smoke a lot of cigars. Hey, now. So, famously, he was at one of these fancy psychoanalyst parties in London. This is, like, 1900 or whatever. And some person came up to him and said, Mr. Freud, I know you're obsessed with human sexuality and you believe that all human beings are constantly thinking and obsessed with sex. And I noticed that you smoke a cigar at all times. Ooh. And the, the person said to him, what would Dr. Freud say about you smoking that cigar? And he famously said, took it out of his mouth, said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Mm. There's the line. I'm not buying it. There's the line. It means something, Murph. (laughs) It means something. Anyway. And you're right. I think everybody is a fan of it. It's Uh, orgasmic. Oh, man. All right. There you go, Tone. Good job. Bone up on your Freud. He's a little bit of a freak, though, dude. So good to know. So you don't do a lot of psychoanalysis, you? You and no? No. Yeah. Okay. no he's all more right. of a fan of that psycho from the Bay traveling up the Golden One tonight. Um, all right. 707 says, finish your sentence. I can't. Ooh. Just two pickets, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, catch us on the YouTube postgame show. <laughs> all right. So uh, 623 says, I'm worried about tonight. When everyone zigs, I like to zag. Ooh. And everyone appears to be zigging towards the Warriors. Ooh. And I don't like that. When everybody zigs, I used to... Grab my zigzags, Murph. Well, that's what you do. That's my go-to. 813 says, oh, this is the guy you said, Keon Ellis is a much better defender. Oh, hell yeah. Than Herder. Shout out to my guy, Humbaby, in the YouTube chat. 520 says, the Warriors going to Sacramento and ice the Kings like last night. What do you mean like last night? What happened last night? Last night. This doesn't make sense. I don't know. 442 says, Dub Nation is taking over Golden 1 tonight. I mean, Murph, you know Gary G tried to warn us. It will be lit in Sacramento. 510 says, bold prediction alert. Harrison Barnes has a monster game to make up for last season's performance, and he ends the dynasty. Harrison Barnes. That he helped start. Uh, I don't know about that. He had an opportunity last year in Game 7, but that's what the Kings need. Obviously, we could talk about De'Aaron Fox if he's going to drop a 40-burger tonight with GP2 being out. So bonus and how he does on the boards. But it's going to come down to guys like Harrison Barnes, to a guy like Davion Mitchell, to a guy like Keegan Murray. If those bench players get hot, who knows what can happen in a one-game situation? Isn't it bizarre how similar Barnes and Wiggins are as, like, their build, their height, their length, and their and their performance? Their demeanor, too, kind of. And they're both kind of like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They're very reserved. Kind of stoic guys. And they're guys who you'd think should dominate games mm-hmm. and occasionally show you that flash. They'll show flashes. And then there's other times you're like, wait, where'd he go? Yeah. You know? Where, where's that top 10 talent? Yeah, very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, 541 says, how tragic that GP2 can never play. How good could he have been if he ever stayed healthy? Young glove, man. Do you believe in that? Like, that was a... Oh, I, I, I just mean, like, I just think he's a extremely important piece to this Warriors defense, especially since we all know Clay Thompson is not the same defensively. It's what we've been talking about all morning long with Stan Van Gundy, with Gary St. Jean, how the Warriors plan to slow down. Aaron Fox, and it seems like the answer is going to be Andrew Wiggins without GP2. 831 says, in terms of your trio question, no way would they get rid of Clay now that he has returned to greatness, and that's what Steph wants. If Steph wants Clay, Steph gets Clay. If right? Stay wants Dre, he want, he gets Dre. If he wants to ride out with these three guys, the longest three tenured players in the NBA, I think they all ride into the sunset together. By the way, that trio, they are not the winningest trio in playoff. NBA playoff history. Do you know who is? We going Spurs? You got it, buddy. Damn, Manu, Tony, and uh, Tim. Yeah, very, mm-hmm. very good. And then they're not even second. Ooh, we going Lakers, Derek Fisher, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal? 
Well, good guess, but you got to go back to my generation. Oh, it is the Lakers. Showtime Lakers. It is Kareem, Magic, and newly minted Hall of Famer Michael Cooper. Oh. Cool, nice. they used to say. Nice. And then third is Steph Clandre. Okay. But they got more in them. Yeah. They could maybe pass They're him. not done yet, Murph. <laughs> All right, well, listen, it'll be Who fun. Knows? All right, you got Jordan Hicks at 340. You got Steph Clandre at 7. And you got us tomorrow. And you got an early game tomorrow, 9-10 first pitch, 8-10 pregame. We got award-winning diamond notes tomorrow. Award-winning diamond notes. All right, guys, that's good. Good stuff. We had Curly, welcome back. Young Tone, great job, and congrats to you, brother. And a guy told me that I shouldn't have told you to bone up on your Freud, that that in itself was a Freudian slip. That's what slip. I was going to tell you, yeah. That was a Freudian Thank you, four away, for defending uh, me. And when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change, tune-up and brake experts. You are listening to KMBR AM and KMBR FM San Francisco, the sports leader, a cumulus media station. I hate to play in. It's the best thing ever created. We're not worried about the Sacramento Queens. Non de medica, that ball sure traveled far. That's the end of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself. Prepare yourselves. I love it when you call me Big Pop. For Greg Pop. Sleeping Boy is Superman. San Francisco. And John Lund. It's 10 o'clock. Let's hit it. This is Papa and Lund. That's right. We're getting it going. Getting it going. On KNBR 1045 and 680. 680. <laughs> the sports leader. Sports leader. Golden State outlasts Sacramento 122 114 the final. So here we go. Throwing it up. It's got to be tipped in. And the Warriors win it. They set Malik Muck for the weak side. Clay Thompson wins the game. Clay Thompson down the stretch. Three buckets in the fourth quarter. They come from 11 down. In most dramatic fashion, it's 124, 123, and full blown late season pandemonium reigns at Golden One Center. After a most improbable, desperate step back, two point shot from Malik Monk was banked home. Curry's got it. Clock ticks to three, to two. He lost it into the hands of Fox. And that's it. Sacramento wins it. 134, 133, and a wild finish. Uh, yes, thanks for joining us. It is win or go home day for the Warriors. We'll get into that whole conversation. Three of the four games this year decided by one point. So as you just heard there, it could be something like that. We'll get into that whole conversation. A lot of good topics to discuss. Plus, the guest list is outstanding. Bobby Marks, Marcus Thompson, Gary Gerald, JD from Golden One today. We got some Giants to talk about. They win, and they actually go three for six with runners in scoring position. Feeling a draft nine days away. We got a ton of stuff, including the quarterbacks all visiting Adam Peters in Washington. Bob part of that thing? And yeah, Bob ton, Myers. Ton to get no, to you today. Bob's Good in morning. LA. He's going there next week. Yeah, so that's pretty cool, though. They got all, all the quarterbacks. They got four of them, actually, in Washington. They want to see they, how they interact. That's pretty cool. But uh, big story, man. Uh, of course, Kings and Warriors and what it all could mean. How are you? I am well, and we are excited. And uh, last year was the first time they ever met in a playoff series. Not even the Philadelphia Warriors or the Rochester Royals. Just never, certainly not since they moved to Northern California. They didn't even make the playoffs in the same year ever since the Kings relocated from Kansas City in the mid-'80s. But And Gary Gerald's been the voice of the Kings on radio Ever since, what a jewel he is. He'll join us coming up later on. And you heard his call of the Malik Monk game winner. I went back and watched pieces of all the games. Warriors beat him by eight the first time. And then Clay with the game winner at Chase Center by a point. Monk with his game winner. And uh, it was Sacramento winning at Chase January 25th, John. I was watching that game this morning. And that was an emotional game. It was the Warriors' first game back after Decky's death. They were away nine days. And there's some matchup issues in this game <laughs> That do concern me. Clay Thompson has a really hard time guarding Harrison Barnes. So how do you deal? They're more of a speed team. With Barnes and Keegan Murray, they're going to run. So if you start Trace Jackson Davis, and you know, I would think you'd give Looney a good look tonight, but uh, it sounds like they're going to let the young guy go against Sabonis. He didn't hardly play him at all 
in the regular season did match up the first preseason game with him. He's a different kind of cover because he's so crafty with the – yeah, they'll sag, but when he gets in the in the post, he's going to give you the up and unders, the step throughs, and the head fakes, the ball fakes, and all that. You don't want to get him in foul trouble, so we'll see. But it's just uh, – and I, I think they're going to open – that's why this is weird. So they, the last year was the first time the Warriors and Kings ever met in a playoff series, and it went seven, and it was tight. You know, they were back and forth, and, you know, Harrison Barnes makes that game four jumper. Sacramento may win the series. Steph goes crazy in game seven. There were some blowouts here and there, and you know, where they opened up big leads. But And then this year, you know, the three one-point games, the 2-2 in the regular season, they won exactly the same amount of games. They're... The Warriors are the winningest 10th seed of all time with 46 regular season wins, but Sacks right there with 46, John. So, I mean, what it may come down to, based on history, who knows? We could have a blowout tonight, and I do worry about Sacramento just getting in the open floor and running. That's why I think Jonathan Kaminga, you got to have him healthy for this game. You need sleekness on the floor, certainly to stop swiping to Fox and but Murray and Barnes and their speed, and they got three-point shooters all over the place. They'll bring in Trey Lyles to bomb threes. So, But if it does come down to the end, De'Aaron Fox won the first-ever Clutch Player of the Year award last year. They aren't not calling it the Jerry West Award. That's what it is, Mr. Clutch. He won it by scoring more fourth-quarter points than anybody. There's a lot of debate, John, that it, it thought that Steph will win the Clutch Player of the Year award this year because of what he's done in the fourth quarter but the Warriors were in so many clutch games five point games five minutes to go 48 of them more than half their games came down to essentially an overtime and they lost half of those games they lost 24 they won 24 so based on the season series the three one point finishes what we saw last year in the playoffs and by the way this is not a playoff there's no stats. This is Dayton, this. Ohio. Do they have stats for Dayton, Ohio? There's <laughs> this, no stats. This, there's, this, is, this is not this is regular the, this season. This is the Tuesday night playing game of the well, tournament. I, well, That's we're doing it in a sack. But I, yeah, but, but you what, know what I mean. There's no stats for the play-in. At no. least they keep stats for Dayton. Isn't Dayton, Ohio considered part of the NCAA yeah, tournament? It is. This is not the regular season. This is not the This is the great season. abyss. This is Area 51, they're, they're gonna, right? They're going to have to change this and, and make this a playoff. But anyway, it's all weird we think it'll come down to the end, but the one thing that does concern me, it's not a playoff series, so there's no six games to go on. There's no jar sparring and jabbing and feeling each other out. They haven't played since January 25th, and they got to go right into a, essentially a game seven, winner take all. Normally, you're, you know, you jump into a shell and you kind of feel each other out. I think they'll do that tonight where you'll see Andrew Wiggins pick up De'Aaron Fox. You know, Steph will probably get, you know, Keon Ellis, Trace Jackson Davis on Sabonis. You know, I got to stay away from Clay against HB. That's a tough matchup. So you put Clay on Murray, but they'll cross screen. HB just took him in the post and beat him up when they played in January. Then who does Dream on guard? You know, you want him on Harrison Barnes? So I think the, you know, how do you do that with Dream on? I think Kaminga's the X factor going sleek. And then just watch at some point tonight, Dream on Green. We'll switch on to De'Aaron. He'll guard De'Aaron Fox. He will pick him up once he crosses midcourt. That'll allow Wiggins to get off of De'Aaron and get over onto HB. And then Draymond's there for all the action because they're going to run that pick and roll all night with Tamontis Sabonis. So you just switch that, and Draymond picks up Sabonis. So it's a little weird. I like. I want Gary Payton the second to play tonight. He's not playing. Where's Jonathan Kaminga going to be tonight, John, with his health situation? And when do you bring in Kevon Looney tonight? I know this is probably bad news for Warriors fans. I feel really good about this game. Uh, they, it, Like you said, it's been since January 25th, and I know that three of the four games were one-point games, but given where Sacramento is with their lack of depth, where the Warriors are, you add Trace Jackson Davis to this and Kaminga, who neither uh, – Kaminga a little bit more, but the Kaminga hadn't developed at that point of the season, January 25th, like he is now. Plus, the Warriors are 17-4 and four in their last 21 on the road, and their only losses are at Boston, twice at Dallas and Minnesota. I realize that that means very little at this point, but they got to walk into this building pretty confident the way they've played on the road, the way they played in Game 7. I think they're going to win tonight. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I'm not saying it's going to be a 10-point win, but 
I think the Warriors are going to win this thing tonight. I feel really good about it. Let's get into it. Uh, give us your thoughts. Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line 415-808-KMBR, 415-808-5627. That is both to text into the show and to call. So we'd love to hear your sweet, clean voice, whether you're up in Sacramento and we boom with a big blowtorch into Sacramento. Give us your thoughts. Or if you're down here in the Bay, how you feeling about the Warriors going into this one and done? If you're a Kings fan, how you feeling about the Kings going into this one and done? Let's get into it. We have a ton to discuss. Plus, the guest list is outstanding. Bobby Marks is going to join us. ESPN front office insider at 1030. What if they don't win? Then what? Marcus Thompson joins us at 1130. He's got a lot of great stuff up right now at The Athletic. As you said, Gary Gerald, longtime voice of the Kings, is going to join us on the radio side, of course, at 1230 to get that side. And then the great John Dickinson boots on the ground at Golden One Center in Sacramento. This is a JD attorney. This, this is, is John Dickinson yeah. with his ties to That's the right. 916 he and knows. now with us and in the Bay Area for a long time. I mean, this is like who's we're playing for. They used to play for the Mayor's Trophy years ago. I'd like to get a big bald head of Saintly and play for that trophy. <laughs> but as Saints, that would be amazing. But I really, this is this is hey, the JD. Fellas. This is the JD one-off tonight. <laughs> yeah, this exactly. one's for John Dickinson Absolutely. and Jim Cozumore. We're thinking of you, Cozumore. Where is Coz, man? I think Listen he's in Nashville. Is oh, he in is that Nashville right? Now? Oh, yeah, he's so. the best. Memphis, somewhere there. All right. All right, so let's get into it. Give us your thoughts. Speak now, forever hold your peace. 415-808-5627, 415-808-KMBR, whether in Sacramento or in the Bay Area. Love to get your viewpoint on tonight's one and done between the Warriors and the Kings. We'll kick it off next. It's Bob and Lund on your Tuesday, only here on the Sports Leader. Dub Nation, you ready for another NorCal clash with the Kings? You know Draymond's ready to revive this rivalry. It's always a playoff type game. Like you feel that like their fans want to like the beam and see us lose and beat the crap out of us, and they come in here, we, we want to beat the crap out of them. Someone else who's ready for this rivalry is our Dubs OT host, John Dickinson. The Warriors are grinding now. They're winning knockdown, drag out, physical, impose your will kinds of games. Get instant post game reaction tonight in Dubs OT, immediately after Dubs Kings in Sacktown on the Sports Leader and streaming live on the KNBR app. Now, no, from no, the no. O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Tyler Harrison, who got the win yesterday in Miami, he joined Murph and Marcus this morning, discussed his start of the season, how he can improve. Check out that podcast and more. Can be our app, YouTube, can be our socials.
Fucked Up Nation. Filter out the noise and kick it with KNBR on the gram for everything blue and gold. Follow the sports leader on Instagram at KNBR. This is the most dramatic music we can find. It's a one and done between the Warriors and the Kings and Golden One Center. You can't say that one Were thing. Were you ever a voice guy? No, but I, I think I can do it. I, definitely I know think you I can. Could, I could be like, you know, I, I could probably do it. Who's the guy at Chicago Stadium and Michael? Oh, came man. That guy was awesome. What was that guy? Six foot six. No, number twenty three. Number twenty three. Michael Jordan. Oh, that, that guy and awesome. you've got range. Yeah, I can do you it. got you got Mandy on the main stage. <laughs> I can, you can definitely go right do to that. here comes Michael Jordan, yeah. and then you're getting me all goosebumpy about Warriors and Kings and a winner take all loser Man, be... out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, she's got to dance it up there for free. Yeah, she's your that. cherry pie. We're gonna put a war. <laughs> there you go. You go I cherry can do that. pie. I can do strip club guy. Easy. What are you talking about, cherries, John? Yeah, that, that old that band warrant. Cherry pie. She's on main stage. On Whoa. deck is sugar. Get those dollars out of your wallet, guys. I can do that job. I don't know if I can do it, though. Like you said, it's not easy. Like, people think the arena guy is easy. The, uh, the best guy I ever saw, Mason, the guy in Detroit. Detroit basketball. That guy was good. But uh, yeah. at the, that uh, takes some. The, the Silverdome? Palace, Where was the it? Palace palace? In the, yeah. yeah. The Palace in Auburn Hills. That guy was pretty good. Yeah. Lawrence Tanter. Very good. Yeah, very good. You got to have real, real good pipes. John Condon. Ooh, how about that? That, that was, was Walt Frazier. <laughs> the next lead, 34-32. That was the best. Growing up. I had him do when I went to the garden to do a Warriors Knicks game. Yeah. I had him drop that. Did you really? That was Greg Papa. <laughs> the Warriors lead, 75-50. <laughs> I wonder if that's just men who, I just think that's the coolest thing. When guy, I could just the PA sit there, guy? Yeah, I could sit there at a bar and listen to a PA guy forever. I don't know if that works. Like, hey, I'm a PA guy. I don't do they think have that a soundtrack works. of that? Yeah. Man, like you like. Well, what you're doing, you're doing the old school. We don't even do them anymore in television. We used to always do a tease. Yeah, like Brett Musburger, you were looking live. Well, he did a that was live, yeah, but before but, he came on, they'd have a voice guy. I used to voice a tease before every single right. Warrior and A's game. I mean, what you're doing is, you know, Brian Anderson will come on tonight at seven o'clock and, you know, set it up. But it used to be all pre-produced right. and a, awesome. a tease was done and. Northern California landscape, the Carquinas Bridge, the drive from the Bay Area to Sacramento. What are we? We're 92 miles away or less. Well, remember, I mean, like miles? World Series would do that. They still kind of do that. Always like the World Series or a Vin Scully would do it. Or Scully something. was the best. I mean, Scully were, could drop a, yeah. a Baghdad by the Bay. <laughs> What? Those were, we're in Iraq? Those, what, those we're in Iran? Ups. Where are we? They would, are they would we? be like a minute or two long. And, man, they do that for the Super Bowl still, right? They still do that, I think. Well, they, they do like a five-hour yeah. pregame show, yeah, so they can they, do yeah, a five-minute right. tease. But. But the te yeah, those used to be cool. Yeah, anyway. but the tension is going to be thick tonight at Golden One. Yeah, it's good. Man. What should I, when we get off at two, I guess we I could go up there, but I'm, I'll I'll watch it. I'm looking for ticks, John. If you want to go, yeah. that could be your God, plus I mean, one. That, we can you get two and be, two and that's gonna be anybody got tickets out there? I've been hitting everybody up, but I feel bad. No, I'm sure you. Come on, you're America's guest. I've never been inside Golden One. Oh, really? It is. Mm. I, I will say it's nice, and I I give it up to the fans. I mean, I, I I've told this story before, but it goes back to like when I was covering the Jazz and the Cowbell, and I thought Jerry Sloan was gonna lose his mind. I mean, he would think there was a guy right behind him. Just we need less cowbell. <laughs> was what he was chatting. Just doing that. Well, I go back well, to Arco uh, One. I remember the right. first place, Arco Arena, yeah, when it was, was Bleacher. It, yeah. What was it, ten thousand three hundred and thirty-three with Reggie Theus and LaSalle Thompson and wow, those that's guys, a nice Mike pick right there. And they had the light blue uni unis oh, right were, there. Those are beautiful. When I was doing the Indiana Pacer games, the unis were bright gold, and they were. Bright, bright blue. That was a double Tylenol. Yeah. Just, <laughs> especially getting you? out an old sack the night before. It was like that's oh. right. Oh, you know we should ask Bob about that yesterday. But was that last year when the the guy had the cowbell right behind Bob's head? They were showing that they had the video of that, and Bob was just like, he's way too nice of a guy. But that was the last. I mean, I couldn't do it. But Bob's a big guy. What's Bob? Six four, six five. I turn around. Now with his hair, he's like six seven. <laughs> right. got, I mean, I turn around got, to that guy in about he's a got second. The lift. He's I mean, got like the look. Lift. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. going to last about a minute. <laughs> that thing's going to be down your throat. But he's a nice guy. Just, he's the best. Okay. Speaking of Bob, yeah, and you went there before, and I, I don't like going there, and Steph said it great, you know, yesterday. As human beings, our natural inclination is to think and wonder what's next, what's next. But as athletes, all they're thinking about is tonight and finding a way to win tonight 
and play Friday, whether it's in Nolens or L.A. But for a guy like Bob Myers or now Mike Dunleavy or Joe Lakeup or all the Lakeups, and they got to think about what if and where are we? So if this game does not go well tonight, is it possibly, probably, not likely? What word would you use? I mean, it's it's Oof. possibly Clay Thompson's final game as a Warrior. I don't think it will be, but Bobby Marks will come on, and the numbers just don't compute. I mean, you could trade guys and move people around, but the bottom line, you have two future Hall of Famers, and for a while, they were both playing off the bench. Now, we assume Clay's going to start tonight. But you never know. I wouldn't mind uh, Pajemski coming into the game uh, to deal. He does guard De'Aaron Fox well, but you probably put Wiggins on him. But there's some matchups later in the game that do concern you. But anyway, you know, the two guys, Clay, this is the final year of his max contract. He's making $43.2 million this year. He's not. He's a good player. He's an effective player. Steve was saying he came back after the All-Star break with a whole new spirituality, and he played much better. He adjusted to playing off the bench. He wasn't grinding. He became Belvedere, headband clay, and he was cool, and he played great. So there's definitely a role for him, but you can't pay him 43.2. You could, but do you want to? How far do you want to go over the tax line? And, And then, like, tonight, in the old clay, before the injuries, I mean, the, the Clay when he was younger, not the older Clay now, there'd be no debate. As good as you are, Andrew Wiggins, Clay, you got De'Aaron Fox. He's your guy. Whoever that guy was during the first half of this dynasty or the first three quarters or the first half when he got hurt, you know, all the way through the, the, the loss in Toronto or the home game, the last game at Oracle, Clay, you got that guy. Whether it's Harden, whether it's Westbrook, whether it's Chris Paul when he was young or J.J. Reddick coming off screens or Kyrie Irving, whoever it was, you got that guy. Uh, he, he can't guard that guy. You, you don't want him on De'Aaron. I'm even worried about him guarding Barnes. Barnes, the kind of guy, HB's the kind of guy that he can guard. But I just watched the tape of the 25th game, John, and Harrison Barnes just bullied him. He took him in the post. He got free in the perimeter. He was all over him. Can he guard Keegan Murray tonight? Uh, you know, so he's going to have to maybe key on Ellis. I don't know. Guys off the bench. We'll see. But anyway, he's not that guy. So just starting with Clay, John, yeah, I think they'll redo the contract. We'll get into it with Bobby Marks. I mean, but what do you think? You got to cut his salary in half Well, the, if he wants to yeah. come back next year and beyond? Well, it, I, I think it might ultimately come out, come back to Clay because you know, all these rumors, especially one in Orlando. I mean, does he want to go all the way to Orlando with that young team? But there's going to be a few teams that have money. And it might be a team like Orlando, who could have been as high as two. They end up being five. And they say to themselves, man, we need a veteran leader who's won championships. We'll give him whatever he wants. And then the Warriors say, okay, well, we can't do that. And here's maybe, you know, half to 60%, but you get to be a Warrior for the rest of your career. What does Clay value the most? I don't know. Does he does his ego tell him that he's going to go, go get that money and help a young team? Or does he really want to stay a Warrior and... And stay here. Most guys, and Clay isn't most guys, but most guys opt for the money if it's significant, and it might be, of what the Warriors can offer and what a team like Orlando's on the you know an up and coming team that needs what Clay could provide on and off the court. If it's thirty percent more, I mean, most guys take the money, right? No, I don't know. I mean, he wants to be a Warrior his whole career. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, you know, a year ago at this time. When he led the league in threes, Woj had the Woj bomb right before he went into the Sacramento series, right, John? And he said, you know, Clay wants a max contract. Well, he, he, he just can't do that. That's still the case. That's not happening, right? Why? So, I mean, I but they, they, they've been t- that's why he doesn't have a contract. That's why they didn't do one with him. So, Clay is a whole different issue. When they made the trade at the end of last year, Mike Dunleavy's first move, minutes on the job, right after he said, we're not trading Jordan Poole, he moved Jordan Poole because he had to move that contract. He had to get him out of the locker room. I, I get it. He brings in Chris Paul. But we thought, Chris Paul? What? You know, I, we watched him at the end in Phoenix. He wasn't that guy. Now, he's played much better. He's accepted the role. Like Clay. he's coming off the bench. He fits. He will have a role tonight. He's going to play significant minutes. He may even play crunch time to decide your fate. But we thought, you know, a little like, why do you want D'Angelo Russell? Well, we can flip D'Angelo Russell when Durant leaves and we'll get We'll get Andrew Wiggins and a pick who turned into Kaminga. All right, so what do you do with Chris Paul? Uh, Last year of guaranteed money, he makes $30.8 million this year. 
Next year, non-guaranteed, $30 million, 21% of the league salary cap. So I don't even know what's best. Say, I mean, can you afford to keep Clay and Chris Paul? You're going to, how far over the luxury line are you going? You're over $400 million right now for a team that is 10th in the West. That's the key, what you just said. Because Okay, so then how do you extract Paul? Do you just let him walk? And t- how do you do that? I don't even know the accounting of this, John. Do you just say, he's gone, well, t- can you take all of his $30 million, or do you trade him with an expiring an contract to someone? Then you got to take salary back, yeah. correct? So how do you, do you want Paul back? And uh, if you don't want him back, how do you move him? That's a great question. Uh, Bobby Marks is going to join us coming up next, ESPN Front Office Insider. He already has his 2024 off-season guides for teams already eliminated. That could be the case. Obviously, it's going to be the case for one of these teams, either the Kings or the Warriors. We'll discuss that with him next as we get you ready for Kings, Warriors, win or go home, only here on the Sports Leader. into play in just a second your old pal john lundier did you know that many of the attorney ads that you've seen or heard they're not even based here in the bay area you wouldn't know that or not even based in the entire state of california you're like what i don't want that kind of attorney i want chris dolan and the dolan law firm because they're based right here in the bay area and they've been that way for more than 25 years they're award-winning personal injury and employment attorneys and they're fighting for you where you live so if you've been discriminated against at work wrongfully terminated or sexually harassed your rights matter Go to DolanLawFirm.com and learn more about your rights. Now, unfortunately, over the past year, Chris and his team, they saw a sharp increase in no-fault injury accidents. Now, remember, the weather is getting nicer. I can look outside right now and see it is nice. So, motorcyclists, pedestrians, cyclists, children playing, they're all around us. So, please be careful. Let's work together and make sure that the Bay Area is a safer place. Also, feel confident that you're in great hands with the award-winning California Lawyer of the Year, the Dolan Law Firm. And do you know, you know, do you know, that they have secured more than a billion billion with a b thank you very much in verdicts and settlements on behalf of their clients but you pay nothing up front i don't know how they do it the billions to the nothing up front but they do it no hourly rates no upfront fees they don't get paid until you get paid they live here they work here they win here dolanlawfirm.com
enjoy KNBR in FM, FM, FM at 104.5 FM. Now back to Papa and Lund. Greg Papa and John Lund on the Sports Leader. What's happening? Thanks for joining us. I guess we don't have the dramatic music anymore, but it is a win or go home at Golden One tonight between the Warriors and the Kings. So what happens if it's the Warriors who lose? What direction do they go? The great Bobby Marks is joining us, front office insider for ESPN, at Bobby Marks 4-2, and he's already got his 2024 offseason team guides. He's going to add one of those teams. He's actually going to add a couple of teams tonight to that, then the Eastern Conference tomorrow night. And, of course, you got the Pelicans and the Lakers, and you got the – uh, Warriors and the Kings, and Bobby joins us courtesy of the Uma Guest Line. Hi, Bobby. Good to talk to you again. How are you? I'm good, guys. How you doing? Yeah, good. So we were just debating this, uh, hoping that the Warriors win here in the Bay Area, but the, the big question probably for the Warriors in their offseason is, what do they do? Because Joe Lacob's had no problem paying all these taxes and overages fees for a team that was in contention for a championship, but it would be hard to justify for a 10th place team that would be out in this round to continue to spend that kind of money. So given your front office expertise, does it make sense to pay all this money and all these overages and re-sign Clay Thompson and do all these things for a team that's a 10th place team getting older that gets knocked out in the play-in round? Well, I mean, I guess you could say a 10th place team in a certainly a unique year in the Western Conference. You know, a, a 46-win team and basically any other year is probably what the fifth seed I think somewhere around there. I mean, you yeah. could look at a, a 49, a 49 win team, 49 win New Orleans team could be sitting at home on Saturday. Um, so I think there's, I think there's a, a lot of different ways you could look at it. I mean, how much does the second half of the season mean as far as how Golden State played? How much does the play post All Star break, fourth most wins, 19 and 10, 10 and two to close the regular season? Listen, you can go out and lay a dud tonight, and, and all that won't mean anything, right? I mean, you lose the sac- a wounded Sacramento, a Sacramento team tonight, then you're like, well, you know, we certainly have to shift in another gear. But what does shift in another gear mean? Does it mean that we're going to waive um, Chris Paul and we're not going to resign Clay Thompson? And that's fine. If that's what the if, – and, and, and Joe Lake has been on record, right? I mean, he's been on record – the goal is to get under luxury tax. The goal is not to be a mediocre team, but the goal is also not to bottom out. So when you take all that into account here, I don't see a, a, a pathway to stay under the luxury tax as is if, you, if the goal is to keep this roster intact. So I think the goal is, and, and then you've got, you know, certainly then you've got the Steph Curry factor. You've got two years left on this contract. There's no way in heck you're bottoming out with Steph Curry when you have him on two years. So, it's a lot of it is a juggling act. And I think if they win tonight and, um, you know, they, they get through um, Friday, whoever they'll play, um, you know, it's different if it's different circumstances, but certainly you go into Sacramento, as I said, and you, and you lose by 15, then we're saying, all right, do you need Chris Paul at $31 million next year? Can you get clay back at a, at a reasonable contract? And if it's, if it both goes on, guys aren't back, then you're really relying on Curry, Green, Wiggins, and your younger players. Let's uh, and just knowing Joe and and what Clay means to the franchise, Bobby. I, I think they they want to bring him back. They don't want him yeah. to go play somewhere else. So we have to come up with a number. So sure. the last game ever at Oracle Arena, Game Six, he tears his ACL. They sign him when he's mending from this five-year deal, 189 million dollars max deal. Then he tears the Achilles the next year, so he does not play for the first two years of the contract. He does pick it up and plays well. They win a championship, obviously. And, and now he's making, that's the final year, he's making $43.2 million. You know, last year at this yeah. time, Wojnarowski came out and said, Clay Thompson wants a super max deal. Now, the Warriors have his bird rights, but they're not doing that. So how do you how do you re-sign him but not insult him? What's What, what do you think a, a fair contract is for Clay Thompson next year in his age 34 season, Bobby? I think it's two years, $60 million. Um, I think that's 60, you, know, you say, I, or 50, 60. Yeah. 60, 30 per. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think, and I think he'll get that somewhere else. I think he'll get that somewhere else. I think he could get that maybe in Orlando. He might get that in Oklahoma city for two years. Um, so I think that's, that's where, and, and you know, and then this is, can you, do you want to go three years here, which is certainly a, which is certainly a big ask. I think if you're Clay Thompson, you're looking at what Drew Holiday just got, which was four for 135, and say, wait a minute, Drew Holiday's 
is going to be 34 in, uh, I think, October. That's something I'm looking at. You know, I'm, I want a four for 135, and I think that is a little bit rich. But I think two for 60, if it's two – or two for 70 maybe, I don't think that's um, – I don't think that's insulting. I think certainly from the player's perspective, he's probably looking for, you know, certainly for three years. I'll be Mark showing his front office insider. He's already got his off season outlook for the team's not qualifying. Of course, the Warriors and Kings tonight, one of those teams get knocked out, plus the Lakers – and the Pelicans. Um, how much has Clay helped himself out since he went to the bench and has played so well? Because it certainly seemed at points this season, earlier in the season, that there was a real question of whether they would just bring him back at all. But now he's, he's caught fire. He's played so well off the bench. He's been so great, especially in the second half of the season. How much has he changed maybe? Or is he, or did you always think he was going to stay with the Warriors? Well, then that was the big thing I saw, I saw at the deadline when, you know, we had, you know, I, and I was debating with Perk on, on TV about this is like, you know, Perk was on, you know, trade Clay Thompson. And this is well the best, the, the only way that Golden State is, is going to get better is, is the, you know, Clay Thompson from, from a few years ago. And you bet you just got to stick with it. And I, and he has been, I think he's helped himself. Certainly. I think he's shown that he can come off the bench if needed. Um, you know, certainly a 43% in, in the 14 games, um, his post all-star break numbers have been really good. Um, you know, 41% from three second on the team in points and, um, and, you know, points per game behind, uh, behind Curry here. So I, I do think, I think he's helped himself. This isn't a great, this isn't a good free agent class. Um, he's helped out there too. I mean, you see guys, you know, guys are coming off the board, whether it be Grayson Allen and then holiday here. I mean, be, besides clay, it's really, um, you know, it's Paul George, it's LeBron, um, a couple of restricted free agents here. It's not a it's not a good uh, a good class. So if it's either in Golden State or somewhere else, he'll he'll certainly have a um, a pretty strong market. But as I said, it's all about how many years you want to uh, you you want to attach to that. All right, now on to Chris Paul, and he's a different story. He's a future Hall yeah. of Famer like Clay, but he's more of a hired gun. You know, and they got him in the Jordan Poole deal. You knew he had an expiring contract next year so um they're paying him 30.8 this year next year's contract is non-guaranteed for 30 million let's say the warriors want to move on from cp3 bobby what's the best way to do it do you trade him and take salary back you just don't re-sign him can you use the whole 30 million or do you use the 30 million to get under the the tax line well what, what if they don't want him back what are their options to remove him from yeah the yeah, I mean it, it's unique. It's, it's he doesn't have a player option, so if they don't want him back, they're going to have to waive him. So he's going to have to hit waivers, and if they want to resign him, then you're basically, you know, it's basically, you know, you, he's, he'd be coming back on uh, on the cheap. I think the, the the math from it all is is that if when you look at it, they've got 172 million dollars in salary. The luxury tax is 171. That does not include Clay Thompson, but it does include um, it does include Chris Paul here. The challenges and I, I talked about it yesterday is that we've got a new set of apron restrictions here that have certainly come about and where golden state is right now and that this can certainly change comes all i want they're not allowed to take back more money in a chris paul trade they're not allowed to go out and take chris paul let's say let's say paul george opted into his contract and wanted to come to the warriors you're not allowed to trade um, chris paul and uh, Kevon looney for example those rules are restricting Golden State right now based on where they are from the second apron standpoint. So the the options are you can waive him, you can get his money off your books, you can look to move him but take back less salary, so maybe a, a $25 million player, but that, you know, that's going to ownership saying, do we want to pay um, and, and all that? Or, um, you know, or do we bring him back? You know, or we bring him back and, and we're, we're content that what we saw in the last 25, 30 games is good enough for next season with Clay Thompson resigned and we're content on paying, you know, a whopper in salary and, and, and luxury tax penalties. I'm Ben Mark showing us ESPN uh, front office insider talking about uh, worst case scenarios. If the Warriors lose tonight, then what do they do? Uh, Bobby, I think the biggest question is if they don't win tonight and, and Joe Lacob would de- be dissatisfied, I wouldn't doubt that he would just come back with the, with the, with a, the same crew so what do they do? How do they get better? Uh, how is Kaminga thought of around the league? Would they move Wiggins? What What is the most logical way for the Warriors to potentially get younger, more athletic, better for next season if tonight doesn't work out for them? Well, I mean, it's it's the same thing. It's it's like you know you're you're you know I know 46 wins in Golden State standards is not is not good enough. I mean, but when you win you know what 20 14 on the road here and you you weren't good at home, 
you know, maybe getting better is basically what you have. Um, you know, I mean, maybe maybe we're getting better is another year of Podzinski and, and Moody and Kaminga um, uh, as far as Trace Jackson Davis here and, and, and bringing back. I know people don't want to, you know, they don't like the continuity factor when you win 46 games and you lose, in the, lose as, as the 10th seed here. But I think you have to be careful as far as, you know, going away from, you know, go big game hunting and start, you know, combining salaries and moving three first round picks and, you know, and who knows what's going to become available here. But I do think it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long, you know, evaluation here is that, as I said all along, I mean, the, the record speaks for itself for, for this, you know, for the second half of the year, they're one of the better teams um, in the Western conference here. But the, for, the unfortunate part is that they're in a Western conference that is brutal right now. I mean, it is one of it is the toughest conference that I've seen in, in 30 years as far as how strong it is and how do you get, you know, you're not much further away from where Golden, I mean, for Oklahoma City is and Denver and Minnesota and um, the Clippers and teams like that. It, it's just a matter of kind of consistency here. So, as I, you know, we've said, you know, you, you, could, you could shed the salary and you can focus on youth and you can go in that direction and keep some of your assets and maybe look to move Wiggins and something else. Or as I, you can bring the, the same group back, but it's, 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 it's extremely, extremely expensive. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, the 46 wins is a 10 seed. The Warriors are the winningest 10 seed in the history of the NBA. Uh, they're lucky there's a play-in to be able to win the night and win on Friday that would actually advance out of the playoffs. But a lot of questions here. You mentioned, and John mentioned, Jonathan Kaminga. So he's having a breakout year. He's going to be one of the top candidates for most improved player this year. He's making about $6 million a year this year. The club already picked up his option year for next year at 7.6. But after that, he is a restricted free agent. In this offseason, Jonathan Kaminga is eligible for a contract extension. I, I saw where you put the numbers down, and you think he's looking at maybe a four-year deal, Kaminga, Bobby, for $130 million, somewhere around there? I think he's probably looking at the McDaniels number in Minnesota, um, what, he was able to, uh, what he was able to get there. Um, you know, I, I'm not writing a blank check for five for 225. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I think there's, you know, certainly – the rookie extensions, uh, as my colleague Brian Winhorse calls it, is the fun max, right? It's not really what you've done in the past three years, but it's based on kind of like buying stock at $3 and hopefully you can grow to $50 per share. Um, that's, that's the bet you have to make here. I mean, you saw it with, uh, with Jordan Poole, and it certainly backfired on you here. Um, but I do think, you know, where, where the coming is with his age, with his development, where the cap's going, I mean, the cap's going to eventually increase, I think, another 10%. Um, you know, for 25, 26, that, that, you know, 25, 26 million dollars is probably a fair number. I think the other guy that's interesting too is Moses Moody. You know, Moody's been good when he plays. I think they're 28 and 18 in games he plays in more than 15 minutes. He's another guy that's extension eligible. Curry's extension eligible. You can add another year to his contract. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of different, you know, not just with the finances, there's a lot of different decisions you have to make with, uh, with uh, your own guys um, extension wise. Great stuff. Bobby, thanks for taking a, a few minutes. We appreciate it. I know we'll talk to you throughout the off season, but we always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You got it. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, that McDaniels deal, 5-131. and 131. I wonder if he'd go with that. But uh, anyway, a lot of questions if they do not win tonight, but you're hoping that they do win tonight, so we'll get into that. We got a big poll, emergency big poll on a win or go home night. How do you think the game is going to go? We'll set that up coming up next. We want to get your thoughts as well. Then Marcus Thompson is going to join us at 1130. His thoughts, he'll be in Sacramento tonight. Gary Gerald, the voice of the Kings, spend us spend your lunch hour with us at 1230. And then J.D., boots on the ground, John Dickinson is going to join us at uh, 130 from Golden One. All that to come, Pop and Lund, only here on the Sports Leader. Hey, it's Greg Papa here. Dr. Craig Bindi and Dr. Joseph Lynn from the Laser Eye Center of Silicon Valley are inviting you to a free live CLR webinar. 
the, uh, Friday, a week from Friday, right in the middle of the NFL draft, day two, April the 26th at noon. A great opportunity to find out all about custom lens replacement. That CLR, which I had a couple of summers ago, John had right after that, and uh, it has worked. At the webinar, the doctors will answer any questions you might have had, like we had for Dr. Bindi and Dr. Lynn. Uh, I had LASIK a number of years ago, and frankly, it didn't work. And I had the CLR, and it worked. So what's the difference between CLR and LASIK? Are you a good candidate for either procedure, one over the other? What does it cost? Is there financing involved? How long does the procedure take? Not long, about 20 minutes. You're in and out, and you got eyes that are 20-20. And the other thing, I had nothing that nobody told me about, but uh, we can't get a cataract anymore after the CLR surgery. So find out how CLR is the permanent solution to readers, contacts, glasses. You don't need any more aids at all to see. And you never get a cataract the rest of your life. It's at the Laser Eye Center of Silicon Valley's free live CLR webinar, Friday, April the 26th at noon. Space is limited. So register now at lasereyeclr.com. That's lasereyeclr.com.
Moffat and Lund continue live from the KNBR Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpot Studios. Casino Matrix, Progressive Jackpots are here. Where are you? Just drop in. Please play responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. What's happening, Papa and Lund? It is win or go home time up in uh, Sacramento, Warriors and Kings. So give us your thoughts. Keys to the game. Why you feel good, why you're a little nervous, 415-808-KMBR, 415-808-5627. That is both the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. You can hit us up there if you don't have time to call, or you can call in with that very same number, 415-808-5627. Make sure you give us a call. We do have a Danny's Big Poll, which we will unveil. It is an emergency edition, given that it is a one-and-done day. And I'm hearing we, we could have, we could have... A, a yes. special guest yes. who has a vested um, interest in this game. He does. Time. He just texted me back that he has a busy day. He's got a lot going on, but he's going to try to make time for us at some point. Um, he said the one good thing is uh, where he is, it's a late start for me here in Florida. F L. What the hell is he doing? He's not even So that is there. Logan oh, bro. Webb, the pride <laughs> of Rockland High School. What a great high school quarterback he was. Did he play basketball? I got to think he did. He's such a great overall athlete. Well, it was, so. it, it, they, they made a big deal of his quarterback play, right? Oh, he was a great quarterback. Yeah. He could roll out and throw the yeah. ball. He threw for over 3,700 yards and 47 touchdowns, 18 INTs at uh, Rockland High uh, in and football. Uh, and he was a starting quarterback for two years there. I don't, I don't see any mention of him playing basketball. But he loves the Kings. Loves. So I, it's a little weird. When it's the Warriors and Kings, because the people up there in Sacramento, we got so many friends up there. Um, they they like you know they like Logan Webb, and the Giants. They're big Giants fans. They love the Oakland A's. It will soon be the Sacramento A's. They had them at Rayleigh Field, Sutter Health Park, whatever it's called. The A's were there. Their farm Triple A team was there for 15 years. Now the Giants have been there. So I, I don't know. Are they more of an A's uh, community or Giants. They love the 49ers. KHTK, Sacktown Sports. I'm on every week there with uh, Carmichael Dave. I know he's dying today. So, uh, and Jason. So they, and they, they love the Raiders when the Raiders were here. But when it comes to the Warriors, John, once the Sacramento <laughs> Kings got a team oh, in the mid 80s at Arco One. Uh, but they, they, you know, there were times when we looked at them when Rick Adelman was the Warrior coach and left and went to Sacramento. And, boy, he brought that passing game. They had in Portland with Bill Walton when he was a player, and they had Vladi Divots and Chris Weber. You talk about two Vlade passers Divots. from the high – good, Lawrence Tanner yep. – from the high post. Um, I mean, they were just incredible passers. And then Peja and, you know, Jason Williams, and they, they were excited. Doug Christie is on the coaching staff now. The Warriors were terrible then. And then the Warriors got great, and Sacramento didn't make the playoffs for – 16 years there was a run with the warriors and the kings were good the warriors didn't make the playoffs for 18 of 19 years if you can believe that until we believe come so last year was the first year not only the first year they ever met in the playoffs even going back to philadelphia and rochester days they never played they since sack became the sacramento kings they never made the playoffs the same season the warriors and kings so it's kind of fun that but we can't even say they're in the playoffs because it's a play and it's not but it's a little weird playing sacramento again when you've got our athletes growing up there jd davis so many are from sacramento and the people listening to us not at most of the time when we talk john everybody wants the warriors to win we're the fifty thousand watt blowtorch we're in sack we're in the 916 they don't like us today they're listening to khdk so i mean this is a little bit different because it's it's kind of like our backyard war, and I love it. Whenever I was doing the Warrior games, I love this matchup more than anything because I would drive to the game or take a bus ride to the game. You didn't have to get on an airplane. That's why it's so great to just – they went up there yesterday at 1 o'clock, and they, they bust up. Uh, you know, like a lot of times you let the players just drive up for a, a game like this. You're going to bus up and all get there the night before and hunker down. It's a It's an elimination game. It's huge, and – I remember, you know, I remember Nellie coming back on I-80 after beating Sacramento up there, driving the bus right through a McDonald's. And they, they, there wasn't a spread in the locker room after the game, and he ordered like 500 double cheeseburgers. For himself. Didn't give any to Victor Alexander. <laughs> Nellie had the beer. 
going and maybe had one burger. You know, it sops up your hangover. You don't want that in the booze. But anyway, that's the great thing about this matchup is it's it's 80 miles away on I-80. It's, it's a bus ride away or a car ride. And how many Warrior fans are driving up to Golden One Center? You know, how many Sacramento fans are really Bay Area sports fans that love the Giants and, and 49ers? I mean, that's why it's just different when – these two teams play. I mean, a little like the Warriors, um, you know, it's not like the Lakers if they advance on. It's different than that. But kind of like the Giants and A's, I guess, so back in the day when the 49ers and Raiders would play. But for a guy like Logan Webb, he's going to get his group together to watch the game after this baseball game tonight, and they got a day game tomorrow. And he'll put on that 62 jersey in purple and root for his Sacramento Kings. But he's a giant. Yeah, it's fun. We'll try to catch up with him a little bit later. One and done, Kings and Warriors. Uh, we thought we'd, we would uh, we would get a, a, a poll together, a Friday's big poll, but we will do it today. So let's do that. It has something to do with, obviously, the Warriors and the Kings. So let's unveil it now. Dude, grab my poll. <laughs> this is Danny's big poll. The most important decision you can make right now is what do you stand for? Danny. All right, here's the deal. Uh, play in poll time, emergency poll. How do you think tonight's game against the Kings will play out? You can vote on this on Twitter at Danny Dunn24, our producer, or uh, you can also go to KNBR. We will uh, have that one up as well at KNBR. I'll retweet it as well. But very, very simple today. Four answers uh, Warriors win in a blowout, Dubs win close, Kings win close, Kings win in a blowout. And keep in mind, they haven't played. Since what, January 25th, uh, Warriors won the first one by eight and then three straight one-point games. And obviously they know each other well, although I would say that Kaminga and TJD certainly uh, were not a part of those or very much part of those four games before they both developed and no Malik Monk and Kevin Herter tonight. So obviously some depth issues for the Kings. So eight-point win, one, one, and one. How do you think the game goes tonight? Warriors blow out, Dubs close, Kings close, Kings blow out. Vote now or forever hold your peace. Also hit up the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line and call in line at 415-808-5627. So how do you think this goes? I mean, it looks Who's like favor? Close, The Warriors right? are favored? Are the Warriors are favored on the road? Two and a half points. It's yeah. a pick em game. I, 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 um, there, I mean, there, there are things that concern me. I could see either team winning at a blowout. I could see it going down to clutch time. And De'Aaron Fox, who won the Clutch Player of the Year Award last year against Steph, who may win it this year. And uh, I, I, there's a it, it, it's just it's a weird game because it's not it's not part of a series where we have six games of sparring and leaning on each other and animosity. They got to come right out and go. This is and Clay Thompson never played in in March Madness at, at uh, in the Wazoo up in the Palouse, but this he's played in Game Sevens. He's played in Game Six facing elimination. They played in a Game Seven in this building. So I I just think they they got to get back defensively. They got to be connected. Defensively, Sacramento wants to push the pace, and they will do it, obviously, after. The Warriors can't turn the ball over. I mean, that's the first thing. They, they just cannot be sloppy with the ball. And when they have lost to this team, John, they have been ghastly with the ball. And the other night, when they got strangled in that second quarter against New Orleans on Friday, I'm trying to get that game out of my mind, but it's there. And, I, and Sac's not going to guard like New Orleans did, but Sac's got good defenders. De'Aaron Fox can guard. Harrison Barnes can guard. Davion Mitchell can guard. Keon Ellis can guard. They're going to put ball pressure. Mike Brown's a great defensive coach. He's going to, you know, how's he going to handle the pick and roll? He'll probably switch it early, and then he'll double step. He will blitz him and make him get the ball out of his hands, and Draymond's going to have to make a play out of the pocket. So I see a number of scenarios, but um, even if the Warriors get way ahead or Sack gets way ahead, you do come back. Sacramento has blown 20-point leads four times this year. They just did it a couple of times in the span of a week. And they did it against Phoenix the other night of the game they had to have. And you know the Warriors have coughed up big leads. I mean, the one game that does go in my mind there, or the Warriors up like 25 in Sacramento and lost the game. Yeah. And the way they mismanaged the end of the game, out of the pressure, you know, Steph had a terrible turnover in the backcourt like he was never trapped before. He's like, what's going on? And then it was the play-in, you know, the, 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 not the play-in, the in-season tournament. And they, they needed to win by a certain number of points, and they were ahead, and the lead was dwindling. And Draymond wound up taking a shot or, you know, spick, committed a turnover in the front court where it's like you don't need to, sh to move the ball there, 
but they were playing to win by, what was it, nine points that game, and they wound up, it's like they lost. How did they lose that game? That's a game that's inexplicably a loss. So even if you get way ahead, you know, they're going to come at you with pressure and vice versa. I, I do think it'll come down to the end, and then it's going to be a heartbreak. I mean, somebody's season is done tonight. Somebody that won 46 games in the regular season is going to be eliminated tonight. And they're, you know, Mike Brown, we love Mike Brown. And then obviously, what does it mean for the Warriors? So I think it is going to come down to the end of the game. I'm, I have no idea. I would like to have a little build up to have a feel. That's why I wonder, John, do you, do you come right out with your best group right away at the opening tip? Or do you get in your shell, show them what you normally would show them, have Wiggins on Fox, you know, just play it straight, and then get into the exotic stuff later? And I think the one thing is look for Draymond at some point to switch on to De'Aaron Fox so he can guard Sabonis when they go into that pick and roll. Give us your thoughts again. Uh, Danny's big poll is up. Who wins tonight? Warriors in a blowout. Warriors close. Kings in a blowout or Kings close. You can vote on that one right now at KNBR at Danny Dunn 24. Any of those ways you can do it and we will keep track throughout. Um, I feel strangely confident. Um, the experience factor we've talked about so much. They did it in Sacramento in game seven. Curry in two of his last three appearances in that building, 50 and 41. We talked so much about how are, are the Warriors going to defend both Sabonis and Fox. How are they going to defend Curry? They just haven't been able to do it. Uh, and then the Warriors on the road, 17 and 4 since February 5th. They lost a game in Atlanta. And then since then, 17 and 4 with the losses at Boston, twice against Dallas and Minnesota. Those three teams, by the way, have a combined home record of 92 and 31, or 75% of the time they win. So they have truly been road, road Warriors. The thing that I'll be watching, and look, I think Draymond can control himself in any situation, but he did get kicked out of a finals game, is he's, they're going to go after him. I mean, if, if, if you're the Kings, if you're the Kings fans, the, the easiest way to win this game, you are shorthanded. You haven't played well down the stretch. Malik Monk has been a Warriors killer, and he's not going to play tonight. Herter has not been overly effective against the Warriors, but he still gives you another body, and he can get hot. You're not going to have those guys. The easiest way to win is get Draymond Green out of the game and let his emotions take over. Can he keep it together? Because before we say, well, he can control himself any time, and he says that on many occasions, no, we can't. He's been kicked out of a finals game. He got kicked out of a game up there, stomp at Sabonis. He will get emotional, and the fans are going to go at him, and Mike Brown knows him, and they're going to go at him too. I think that's a factor. James Williams, Mark Lindsay, Aaron Smith are the officials tonight. Kogots, the, the alternate. Um, so that's you're right and you know James Capers will be in the replay center a great official for years and years and um, you know he's they're gonna it was on the scouting report there's no doubt and it's you know it's we'll talk to Gary Gerald later on and Marcus is up there and JD knows and it's loud I mean the moment he walks into that building he is going to hear it regardless but what happened last year in the playoffs we didn't even get into it but the stomp on DeMontis Sabonis in game two was huge and, um, you know, they're, they're, and that's a loud building. We remember when they played at Roracle and the We Believe Warriors and that building would rock. And uh, the, I haven't been in Golden One, but what I hear is that, you know, it's an assault on all your senses. And it's going to be hard. But the Warriors are able. They had a great road record this year, unlike last year. Um, so th that does give them that experience, plus playing up there in Game 7. But Draymond's got to walk the line tonight. We've talked so much. He... The reason you're in this game tonight and not actually in the playoffs was his suspensions. The five-gamer, the indefinite, Wiggins' un uneven play, other factors, obviously. But Draymond wasn't himself. Clay wasn't himself. They came together in the second half. So uh, it would be a terrible look for this entire year for Draymond to lose his mind tonight. He's got to stay locked in. But they know him. Mike Brown knows him. Mike Brown was the get-back coach with Steve. When Draymond would redline, he'd get on the floor and bear hug him. He ain't doing that tonight. He's going to do the opposite. He's going to try <laughs> exactly. to light him up. Exactly. And they're going to, he's they're going to be him in there. He's got to, but he, you know, he's got to play with edge or he's not Draymond. But that'll be a big part of it is just the deafening roar in that building. And, you know, all of them have to play with poise and the noise. But we've seen him do it. But Draymond is just, he's got to avoid it tonight. Try not to get any technicals. If you do, walk away. Do not charge these guys. Mark Lindsay will throw you out of the game. You just can't do it. So that, that'll that be a big part of what Mike Brown does is try to light Draymond up and just get him off his game. They need Draymond to play heavy minutes tonight. I, I think you push him a little more in this game, John. He did not play in, on, on Sunday's game against Utah. 
He did not play Thursday's game in Portland. Steph did play the Thursday-Friday game. One thing we'll get into with Marcus, because Marcus is so good with matchups and, and uh, you know, how they're going to do it. I was watching the Sacramento game back on January 25th, and I was trying to figure out when did they stop playing Steph Curry entire first and third quarters. That game he did. Now, it's Chris Paul. It's Paul, you know, and it's, it's it, it, the element of Paul. Uh, Paul's a great player. I'm not, you know, but, but did you, what, did, how many minutes do you play Steph? Steph has not played since Friday night. He did tweak that ankle at the end of the game Mm -hmm. against New Orleans, and I don't think he was right. He made a barrage of shots, but I'm thinking he's not moving. He's not guarding. So right away, his mobility, and I expect it to be fine because no one's talking about it, but they don't let you watch practice. So assuming he has full mobility on that right ankle, do you go back? This is an elimination game. He's not played since Friday. He is not going to have to play until Friday. So he's got two days off. Do you lean on him a little more in the simple way, let him play the entire first quarter tonight and then bring him back midway through the second and fourth quarters or even earlier in the fourth quarter and you're down and you take his minutes total from 32 up to 36 if he goes 12, 6, a half, and then maybe even a little more where you maybe take it to 38 and bring him back with eight minutes to go in the game. So, Do you lean on Steph a little bit more tonight? If he's moving well on the ankle, he's frisky, he's light, he's bouncy. Can he play 36, 38 minutes tonight? I don't think there's any question. And and you said this yesterday, you know, you can get to the point of diminishing returns, and I understand that. But philosophically, when you're in a one and done or a game seven or a win or go home or whatever the hell people want to call it, the rotations are out the window. You have an idea of what you want to do, but depending on what the Kings do run-wise, Depending on what you're doing, like could, could you could you early in the game if you're going on a big run, maybe you know rest him a little bit more than you normally would, just because it might get tight or probably will get tight later. If in the fourth quarter of the beginning your thought is you want to rest him, but all of a sudden the Kings going an 8-0 and they start taking control, Steph's got to come back in the game. Like this is just you've got an idea if you're Steve Kerr of what you want to do, but the game is going to dictate what you have to do. Because if they go on runs and that place starts going crazy, and we've already seen the, seat, the, the, the seats, they got all the white going, and they're, they're going to be waving all that kind of stuff, and they go crazy, and your team doesn't have composure, although with a Chris Paul they should or a Clay or whatever. But if Clay's having that off night that he had in L.A. last year and guys aren't getting it done, you got to lean on 30 for possibly 40 minutes. You don't want to, but it's going to dictate on how this game goes. This is going to be a, an energetic, like you said, type of game. But what if Draymond does get kicked out? What if – you know, whatever, somebody gets in foul trouble. It's it's just going to be based on uh, the feel that Steve Kerr has for this team and who's effective. And that goes, I think, for the whole roster, right? I mean, if it's too big of a moment, say, for TJD, which I don't think it will be, but if he's getting beaten up by by Sabonis, then guess what? Kevon Looney's going to be playing more minutes than probably Steve Kerr thought he was going to play. You know, it's it, you're just going to have to feel this thing out, right? Because this is like the NCAA tournament. That, that'd be great if you could save him for a few minutes so you can play him in the, you know, Pelicans, Lakers, lose or whatever, but, man, if you don't win, he's got a whole offseason to recoup from that. Yeah, and the other thing, we'll talk to Marcus, the, the Kaminga to me is key. I, I just, the way Sacramento is built, they got the one, Sabonis is, they're big. Um, but he, he'll post, but he likes to play up top. He likes to do the DHO game, and the Warriors will sag, and you can, you know, rotate off of him. Uh, that's why I love Draymond guarding him or Looney guarding him and sagging and cutting off. You got to stop Fox at the rim when he gets there. Um, but they got shooters. They are they're they're sprayed all over the floor. They got both corners covered above the break, and you got to get out and guard them. I I just you know Trace Jackson Davis. It's not that it's going to be too big for him. It's just uh, you know he, he can be on Sabonis and sag off of him. He'll do fine. But Sabonis is crafty. He's going to give you all the head fakes. He's like an old-school player. It's the head fake. It's the ball fake. It's the step through, the step under, the drop step. He gives you all his footworks all over the place. So what happens? You bite, and you get into foul trouble. That's fine as long as you don't put him in the bonus and make it a free-throw contest. But uh, my point is you got to get out and guard their shooters on the perimeter and get back defensively. Not having Gary Payton is a problem here. I thought he would guard De'Aaron for, you know, 20 minutes tonight. He can't do that. So, you know, who does? Wiggins? Um, but then, you know, I, I think Draymond will get on to Fox and Wiggins can go over to Harrison Barnes. But Kaminga to me is a loony, obviously, the way he guards 
Sabonis. He kicked Sabonis' ass last year, just pummeled him, sagged off of him, got every rebound. He had eight offensive rebounds in game seven. Once Sabonis sees Looney coming in the game, I want him to see him at the opening tip. Here I am. Remember me? I'm the boogeyman, and we're going to take you out again. Are they not starting the rookie? I don't think they'll do that. But at some point, Sabonis has got to prove he can deal with Looney. Looney outplays That's him. your bag of tricks, right? You were talking about bag of tricks earlier. When do I want to like, do it, though? Right. Do I want to do it at the opening tip and go right at them and not fall behind? I want to play with the lead and never give it back. I, I, you know, And then Kaminga, he's, he's, his athleticism to get out and cover these guys, I think, is key, John. And I, he's not right. Kaminga did not play at the end of the year. He had tendonitis in both knees. Then he had a pelvic contusion. What's wrong with him? His back? His, what, what's wrong with him? And then he did not. He played fine against Utah in the last game, but he did not shoot the ball. And he's just, he hasn't been quite the same. And I even think about starting Kaminga because, you know, the rhythm. It, remember last year in the playoffs, John? He wasn't, he was not in the rotation. Go back a couple of years ago when they won the championship series. They started him against Memphis, and he was in foul trouble like immediately. You know, I, I now playing him off the bench. I think you need Kaminga's athleticism tonight to run the floor. He needs to find rhythm early tonight. And to me, right now, he's out of rhythm. All right, again, the uh, big poll is up. We'll give you some of the early results on how this game will go. Again, Danny's big poll, Warriors blowout, Dubs win close, Kings win close, or Kings blowout. You can go to Twitter, uh, at KMBR, at Danny Dunn, too, for the emergency big poll today. A vote on that, and we'll give you the results. Coming up next, Marcus Thompson, bottom of the hour at 11.30 to talk to, about, talk to us about this one as well. What are the keys that he sees to the game? We'll do that in about 15. Keep it coming. Good stuff on the Golden State Lumber and Build the Materials text line and call in line as well at 415-808-5627, 415-808-KMBR. We'll get to that next as well, only here on the Sports Leader. O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Stan Van Gundy, TNT, joined Murph and Marcus this morning. He'll be on the call tonight nationally. Broke down the key factors in tonight's Warriors Kings playing matchup. Check out that podcast and more. KMBR app, YouTube, and KMBR socials. Hey, it's time. Come grab the keys. Let's go right now to, you know this, the Desto Toyota. The Desto Toyota, it's the time to grab the keys and get that new Toyota you want. You know, as I've been telling you this for years, you can count on the Desto Toyota for incredible savings. So come in, check out the models and deals, or do what I did. Go to modestotoyota.com, see all the incoming vehicles, then you just pick out the one you want. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got everything you need. Great deals, great prices, and special lease deals. And this was the thing that got me saving gas with many hybrid cars, SUVs, and trucks. And, of course, I got the hybrid uh, RAV4 right now that is absolutely awesome. I can go forever on that thing. Or you can just say, you know what, no more gas. I've had it. The all-new electric BZ4X, if you check this thing out, it is awesome. It's got low prices and incredible lease deals as well on that BZ4X. So it is time. Let's grab the keys. Let's head out to Modesto Toyota. They've been doing this since 1965, family-owned and thousands of happy customers like me because of the great service and great prices. So let's get out there. I'll even go with you. Oh, you don't want to go with you. I understand. That's a long drive. I'm annoying. I get it. Um, but it's time. It's time to go out there, whether you want me to go or not. Probably not. No dealer markup. And I mentioned there's no dealer markup. It's awesome. So the time has never been better. It's where I get my Toyotas. Of course, you know that. Come find out for yourself at Modesto Toyota and ModestoToyota.com.
Wherever you are around the globe, stream Gold Blooded Radio 24 7, 365 on KNBR.com. This is the Sports Leader. I hate the play in, just so you all, I absolutely hate it. It's the best thing ever created. When you look at the play in and what it's done for basketball, it's the best thing ever created. I don't know who came up with it. I know Bron said they need to be fired. If they were fired, when Bron said that, they need to get their job back because. The play-in is insane. Like, since the NBA has added the play-in, it's taken the last month and a half of the season to a totally different level. Yeah, and, and if they didn't have it, you'd be on TNT tonight, too, not playing, commentating. So, yeah, he probably likes it. Wait a minute. Draymond Green. Did, did he swivel head that? Did he say, I hate the play-in? But it's the best and thing ever. And then came right back and said yeah. it's the best thing ever? Uh-huh. Huh? He says it's the best thing ever because he'd be he'd be in a suit well, sitting next I, I to Charles Barkley that, without it. Because he, he said, I hate the play in. I love the play in. Yeah. Which is it? I think it's he I'm loves very it. confused. I'm I think very he loves confused. it. He just he, he said he hated it. He probably hated it at first. Well, yeah, when you're the one seed, you probably hate it. I, but when you're the ten seed or the nine seed, you know, if you're yeah. the if you're the eight seed, you're kind of pissed because it's like, well, when I used to be the eight seed, I was just I was already in the playoffs. But I I agree with him in that look what sports is trying to create is a one and done in any way, shape, or form. So, like, when we talk about this when it comes to baseball, so we played 162, and we need, you know, now it's a two of three. But in you play 82, and you really need more? Well, yeah, because the league's going to make money. The Kings are going to make money tonight. Uh, it's going to be a one and done. The ratings will be great as far as the NBA. I mean, I mean, you're talking about on the west side of things, the Lakers on in one of the games and the Warriors in another. It, the, the numbers will be huge, right? Yes, it'll be monstrous. <laughs> so I, 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 loves um, it. I, but he's talking, I, I don't know, if we splice those two bites together? No, that, that was that what he said. come out of his mouth, I hate the play-in, it's the greatest That's typical thing ever. Draymond, right? Well, I, I never heard him quite that <laughs> conflicted, I understand, Draymond. He, he, can yell, he can yell at an official and then low. I, I mean, that was weird. Um, but I, the, the, the ratings are going to be monumental tonight, and TNT has them both. And you've got, you know, earlier at, what, at 4, 4.30 our time, uh, it's Lakers and Pelicans, and the loser – well, the, the the winner advances on. The loser will be the Warriors' opponent uh, if they win tonight, Friday. So that you know that's a huge rating, 
to have LeBron and AD facing, uh, you know, New Orleans and Zion Williamson. And this is his first ever. It's not even technically a playoff game. And then tonight, have Steph Curry and the Warriors and the Dynasty talk um, them facing elimination tonight. If they lose, they're out. I think the one thing with Bobby Marks and what Bobby said is really interesting. And two, it's kind of like Greg Draymond. I hate the play-in. I love the play-in. So how do you assess the Warriors? And what Bobby was saying, they won 46 games. They're really not a 10th seed. They're the winningest 10th seed in the history of the NBA, but they are a 10th seed. Yeah, that's what I. That's all these, I see. Well, I, these other teams are not going away. Exactly. Oklahoma They're getting better. City is not. They're on the rise. Oklahoma City won 40 games last year. They were the 10th seed last year. Now they're the one seed. They won 57. Plus, Sam Presti, ha- I forgot how many number one picks he has. 15 in the next five years. So he whatever can, what he's going to do is he's going to package to get specific players or draft guys yeah. and get cheap. But he's already got, he could do whatever he yeah. wants. Well, he's, he's got ton- the thing that's scary about them, maybe not this year, but in the future is they've already got a lot of really good young players in depth. And what they can do is, let's say they don't get it done, then they can package picks at some of this depth and get a superstar to put next to Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like you said, they're just going to get better. And Denver's and got no right. They're skilled. And Denver's Josh not going Giddy. anywhere. Minnesota's not going anywhere. I mean, the teams that are that are desperate in this in this playoff is the Suns and the Clippers and the Warriors and the teams that are getting older. That clock is ticking on those teams. But those top three teams uh, in the conference this year, they're not going anywhere. And they're, it, Oklahoma City, as you just pointed out, is just going to get better. Now, I, I'd want to get them now. I mean, I, I'm not jumping ahead. I think it's going to be difficult to win tonight's game. I think it's going to be difficult whomever loses in the 7-8 to win that game on the road. But if you're going to get OKC, you're going to want to get them now because, like you just said, Chet Holmgren's going to fill out. Shea Gildas Alexander's not going anywhere. The depth on that team is ridiculous, and Sam Presti's a hell of a GM that's going to make that team better. You don't want to play them, <laughs> not the future. I, so I, but the point is, what Bobby's saying is you're a 10th seed, but you're better than that, and you won 46. But you're older. These other teams, I mean, Oklahoma City's good now. They're going to be better in the future. Likewise for Minnesota. Denver's not going anywhere. And then these other owners are the owner in Phoenix, obviously Ballmer. Yeah, he's, they're aggressive. They, they are seeing openings. What this is all about is Steph, Clay, Dre are older. Andre's retired. They're at the end. When the Warriors were running this league for five straight years, they they weren't competing like this. I honestly wonder, John, if – and they, they would still be great, you know, Durant's teams and um, the HB team. But if, they, if, if that dynasty, a five-year run where they went to the finals five straight year and won three titles, if they had to compete against this Western Conference, I think they would win it. But I, it would be hell to get through all these teams. I mean, you got Oklahoma City, Denver, Minnesota – our, and Denver's got one of the best players in the game and all the pieces around it with a great coach. The other two are young and ascending. Then you got, you know, the three in, in L.A. that Ballmer's got. Dallas has got two great players. Obviously, they've, they've reworked their roster to bring in defense. Phoenix has the big three. Where's New Orleans at? They're kind of in between. Lakers are more like the Warriors. So I, the, the point is uh, that the Western, and we've been saying this forever, ever since really I moved west, the west has been just better than the east. There was a while there where the east was pretty good. But now, so how do you evaluate it? Well, there think about it like where, this. Think about it like this. If, if this would be their possible path, which I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this is this illustrates your point. Kings in the play-in, loser of Lakers, Pelicans, OKC in the first round, Mavs or Clippers in the second round, Denver possibly in the conference finals, and then the Celtics. I mean, that's... Pff, that's, that's ridiculous. This year. Yeah, that, that's I mean, that's year. a ridiculous path. Yeah, I mean, so next year, Wiggins is right from the start. Uh, Draymond does not get suspended. Clay's, Clay's cool because we reworked his contract, and he's he's okay. I mean, what are they really? Are they a 46-win team? They won 25 on the road. You know, 25 at home is easy. There's 50. You can't get up to 30 at home, and you get 25 on the road. Now you're 55. Now you're you're hosting playoff games, so I you know I don't know how far away they are. They are aging, so it's hard to assess. But this is this is a hell of a, a Western Conference, and it, it's, I'm glad we have the play in because the two teams in Northern California would be out. Sacramento and the Warriors would be playing golf now and not playing in tonight. So 
Uh, but somebody's going to be eliminated. It's not. It's not going to extend it for long. You got. You got one and done. But it's just. It's hard to evaluate where you are because the West is so is so loaded. And there were some nights where the Warriors just got manhandled. And those nights, the Indiana game, the New Orleans second quarter, those nights when you're watching it, you're like, whoa, how did that happen? It never happened to the Warriors before. Well, they're. This is the second half of the decade run. It's not the first half. So you're going to have some of those, and then you get one of those tonight. You know, you have a second quarter like you had Friday night. You're done. Can't turn the ball over and let this team get out and spray threes all over you and Fox dunk. You just can't do it. So I, we'll see where they are. But um, they, 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 the games tonight, the play-in, and when they first, you know, and when Lou Wolf was brought it up in baseball, we all laughed at him. Like, what? You say one game? After you played 162, you're going to play nine innings to decide your season? That's ridiculous. But Bud Selig, his frat buddy, was that's what they did. Now baseball stretched it out and made it a best of three. And then what basketball has done is just, you know, elongate the year a little bit. You're going right to a game seven. So uh, the ratings tonight on TNT are going to be massive, massive. And because Philadelphia – and the Flyers, are, they couldn't use the arena tonight. Philadelphia goes tomorrow night in the East. And you got you got some big – Philadelphia and Miami will be a big draw in the East, John. But TNT got lucky because this SAC Warriors game was supposed to be tomorrow night on ESPN. But Philadelphia, you know, can't play. So Philadelphia's got to play tomorrow night. They can't play tonight. So TNT, the ratings they're going to get for LeBron – and, uh, you know, he's not going to be eliminated tonight, but still, you know, they'll, they'll, that's a big ratings game. And then the Warriors and Kings tonight, we, we may have a record tonight as far – well, what are the playing? I don't even know what you look at. But as far as viewership, you may have more eyeballs on tonight on TNT than you've had in a while in the NBA. All right, let's talk to Marcus Thompson about a great piece yesterday that he wrote. And, of course, a lot of stuff on the Kings and the Warriors today from the whole crew at The Athletic. They do a tremendous job. As he writes, down to the last gap, gasp in a season of disappointment. Can the Warriors save it tonight somewhat in Sacramento and at least get to the playoffs? Let's talk to Marcus about it next, only here on the Sports Leader. Golden State Window and Door Design wants to encourage you to think beyond the wall. Larger larger windows and doors allow you to enjoy a wide open canvas of nature. Greg Papa here, so how would you like to have a wall of windows that open or a wall of windows with doors that disappear, offering you unobstructed views? It may be hard to imagine, but you can see them all for yourself when you click on products at GoldenStateLumber.com, then choose windows and doors for the image gallery featuring Marvin and other respected vendors that are sure to inspire you. Under Brands, scroll down to Marvin, and there you're going to find even more extraordinary options for your projects. As a Marvin Direct Retailer, you'll receive competitive pricing as well as phenomenal service. Located throughout the Bay Area and Sonoma County, where I was last night with Fred Warner, Golden State has been the go-to supplier for 70 years, and they're confident when they say, when you succeed, we succeed.
Follow KNBR on Facebook. This is Papa and Lund on KNBR 104.5 and 680. The sports leader. sports leader. Everybody has their thoughts on the uniforms. All I care about is, did you all give shit to Casey Schmidt for the nut oh, yeah. shot? Yeah, it's funny. His girlfriend actually did is an Instagram post of them too, and it was like, I'm nuts about you or something. It was hilarious. That's great. If you're the photographers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You had to have seen that, right? Been like, hey, move it around a little bit. Like, let's let's fix this. Of course, Casey is going around talking about it. You know, he's on. He was so excited that he was on like every <laughs> sports thing, news thing that he was talking about his his nuts. And uh, I just kept saying, hey, Dan, you got a small small bag. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like that. He said it was a picture. It's, it's the way the photo was. It's all about the lighting when it comes to the ball sack. It's the pleats and the pants. Don't act like you're not impressed. Damn. Uh, That was on the Chris Rose rotation, our friend uh, Logan Webb. Uh, That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> great picture, by the way, that uh, you guys, uh, you get him with uh, in the oh, sack. Logan and with, Dusty, uh, Dusty, Sacramento's Bake. finest, yeah. the two of them. All right, so we'll get Marcus Thompson on uh, momentarily, but Logan Webb had a minute from... Miami, we know how big of a king of a Kings fan he is. Got the Kings and the Warriors from Golden One tonight, and uh, Logan Webb, Giants pitcher, joins us courtesy of the Uma Guest Line. What's happening, Logan? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm here in Miami. Weather's nice. I'm watching uh, out on the field, watching Solaire hit some balls uh, about 500 feet. So that's fun. It's always fun to watch. <laughs> Yeah, I won't bring up the one he hit against you last year in Miami, Logan. Wow, on you just that. did. But, you just did. <laughs> yeah, right, moving on, moving on. But uh, this picture we got with you and Dusty, you're wearing a number nine Kings jersey. What, what game was this at? That was that was last year. I don't know which – I don't remember which game exactly it was. Uh, I was wearing a Herder jersey. Uh, right. I, uh, I'm sad he's not playing tonight, but – uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I actually got to meet him, uh, this year, which is really cool. So, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, Dusty, I know Dusty's a big King fan too. So we always talk about that guy, a little bit of that in common. All right. So t- tell us how you're feeling, uh, one and done here. And everybody knows you're a big Kings fan. It's, it's at golden one. They played four games this year, split two, two, and, and three of the four games were one point games. So, uh, I know it bums you out that you you can't be there tonight. So so give us your thoughts. Who's who's winning tonight and why? <laughs> you guys are gonna get me in trouble with Giants. No, of course we won't. Right. They love you, All man. Right. Be honest, brother. Yeah, they be they honest, love you. Be You're honest. not gonna get in trouble. I, I obviously I I I would love for the Kings to win. Uh, I don't think this is a position that they wanted to be in. I don't think any team would want to be in a play uh, winner take all game against Steph Curry. Uh, but you know, kind of, kind of how it worked out, and you know, nowadays it's, you know, the play-in is crazy thing. Uh, I, I think they're awesome games. You know, the last couple of years that they they started doing them, I think they're great game. I mean, it's a game seven game. You know what I mean? It's winner take all. It's kind of like baseball. Those those games. It's gonna be great. Um, it's gonna be late here for me, but I'll I'll be glued to the TV. I'll be watching, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully the Kings come out with a win. Uh, I wish. You know, that's why I think it's – you got to – if you're in that situation, you got to win the last couple and be a seven or eight seed. Uh, then you get two to play with. I know, obviously, you want to win each one. But, uh, but yeah, it'll be – I mean, every game that they play, it seems like it's coming down to the wire. And, you know, I think I think De'Aaron is, is really good against them and, obviously, Steph Curry. I, I think it showed earlier this season he was averaging like 40 against the Kings. So – I'm sure he's going to be his normal self, and uh, I think it'll be a great game. So, what's the plan? So, you're gonna your first pitch tonight in Miami is at 6:40 Eastern time, which is 3:40 our time. The Warrior King game does not tip until 10 o'clock your time, 7 o'clock our time. So, you'll have time in theory to get back. Will you watch it in the hotel? Get a ballroom? Get get some of your teammates and beers? How are you going to watch this game tonight? <laughs> yeah, we got a. Uh... I think I think we'll we'll get in the room and I think there's a couple guys that want to watch the game so um, yeah we'll hang out and watch it um, it'll be fun I know I know Harry Harry's probably gonna watch it with me he's a Warriors fan so Ooh. Uh, I gotta deal with that he's the new one I know Craw was it before 
Uh, I don't have a bet with him, but I might make one. Um, you know, uh, you always got to have something on, on 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 these fun ones like this. Maybe wear a jersey the next couple of days. Oh, nice. Might be fun. So um, you've converted some guys, right? I mean, it, it, haven't you taken some guys to some games and converted some guys to being Kings fans? I have. I have. I got uh, Alex Cobb, a switch. He's a Kings fan. You know, he's, it's funny. He'll text me, and it's, it's hard to watch games sometimes. You know, he might be busy or something. He'll text me something that happened in the game. And, uh, so it's uh, it's fun. And then uh, I think Ryan Walker, I mean, I, I don't know if he likes basketball that much. But he came to a game with me, and he, he watches them. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, trying to trying to get as many guys as I can on the on the Kings bandwagon. Uh, I've never been inside Golden One Center. I may actually go to the game tonight, but um, you've obviously watched many games there. Um, as far as loudness, I mean, going back to the old days of Oracle, Roracle, and the Warriors place Chase Center, just just how much of a home court advantage is Golden One for the Kings tonight, Logan? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be very loud. are very similar in the fact that they're a little state of the art. I mean, it's, they're both beautiful places. Um, both have great fans, and you know, I, I think um, I think it's going to be loud. I think you know, being only an hour and a half, two hours away, I think there will be some Warriors fans, uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't think they're going to take over the Kings fans. They're they're a good bunch, and uh, I'm sure the Cowbell will be going tonight. <laughs> Logan Webb is joining us. Noted but Kings not the fan. beam. Not he's, the beam. They're not lighting the beam tonight. He's in Miami as the Giants <laughs> take on the uh, Marlins. By the way, we'll have the game for you today at uh, 340 right here on the Esports Leader. Um, it, it, as an athlete, I mean, you, you, obviously you're not playing in the game, but, I mean, you've been in these situations where, you know, you got to win a game or it's a big game or something like that. Like, what's the mentality going in as an athlete to, to a game like this? Yeah, I think uh, for me, you know, I – I was lucky enough. I got to pitch in a game 162 game, and uh, I got to pitch in a game five game in, in 2021. And these games are it's it's a blast. You're nervous as all get out, and you, you know you kind of have to. For me, it was uh, you know the first the first strike, or honestly even the first you know ball put in play, kind of gets you back to your normal stuff. But you're nervous going into it, and. You know, I I would guess for a basketball player, it's like seeing the first shot go in or uh, the first stop on defense. I don't know how how you know. I'd have to ask you'd have to ask a basketball guy that question. But I I think it's probably very similar. It's uh you know it's it's win or go home, and, and that's kind of what you play for as an athlete, and it's it's a blast. And you pitched really well in that game 162 against San Diego. You needed to win that to hold off the Dodgers and beat them 107 to 106. And you were great. And then game one against the Dodgers on that Friday night, game five against the Dodgers, heartbreak. But you pitched your heart out. So you know how to rise to the biggest moments when the most pressure is on you. We, we've talked a lot about your great football career as a quarterback at, at Rockland High. Were you a hooper in high school, Logan Webb? I was not. Uh, I... I played in seventh grade. That was the furthest I played, and I played about three minutes a game. And they tell me to go sit in the corner, and uh, <laughs> if, if, and if you get the ball, shoot it. If you're open, if not, please pass. That's what I was told. So, uh, but no, I I do love basketball. I just wasn't I wasn't very good at it, um, and I you know I kind of <laughs> I'm happy I recognized that a little bit early, uh, but it was uh, it's always been a you know. A, you know, ask my parents and stuff. I, I mean, I'm glued to Kings games all the time. I have been for pretty much my entire life, and um, you know, even even the tough years, right? You know, there's been some tough ones in sack. So, uh, but I was always, you know, I'd be in the AZL, and I got some buddies that'd be like, "Why are you watching this game? We're losing like 40." And I'm like, "Well, you know, this young guy's actually get, getting some minutes. I'm excited to watch him play." Uh, so just, you know, I've I've always I've always had a uh, you know, uh, likeness to basketball. That's cool. They're even doing a they're doing a Logan Webb like basketball jersey coming up here. There you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. I, I on it. I think that's because I had to wear the 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 Curry jersey last year. That's right. Because uh, you lost Game think, Seven. Yeah. I mean, it's I, it's a cool jersey, but I I guarantee you, it's because I had to wear that one, which I didn't want to wear. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what's the bet? You're going to make one with Kyle Harrison, the pride of De La Salle, and a huge Warrior fan from the East Bay. So the loser of the game has to wear the other team's jersey. Is that what we're going to see coming up? Yeah, I mean, it's something like that. It could be. I, I haven't talked to him about it. Um, you know, he was he was busy yesterday uh, doing his thing. So uh, I'll talk to him today a little bit about it, see what we, see what we can do. So what's the first Kings team you remember? Are you old enough to remember C-Webb and Vladi and, and Jason Williams and that group? You know, that, that's the, those are the teams that uh, made me like basketball. Um, those, I think that was, they were the best team in basketball. They got screwed uh, against the Lakers in the playoffs. Some they did, but uh, that's a uh, subject for another time. Dick Pavetta was the referee. We're moving <laughs> yeah, on. Don't talk that about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about uh, that at all, man. There are some bad calls. Hey, it was yeah. a, it was it was a, it was a tough couple years as a fan. I was a Raiders fan too. I had the tough rule. I think it might have been the same year. Oh, oh yeah, it yeah. was. You're that right. is rough. Two thousand one. My goodness, man. Too. I remember that. Uh, what do you th- uh, what do you think of baseball going up there? Going up the sack. The A's playing up there for a while. What do you think of that? I think you know. I I saw Vivek um, do an interview and afterwards and kind of say, "Hey, this is a." Uh, a uh, great opportunity for Sacramento to kind of show that they can have a major league baseball team here. And, and I fully agree with that. I, yeah. I've said it a couple of times, you know, I, I love SAC. I, I, I love repping SAC. And I think they, the fan base, you know, you see the Kings games. If you do go to the game tonight, you'll see how, how much of a, uh, you know, good sports uh, city it is. And, and they show up and I think that it'll be the same uh, when they ace come. They do see them. They will have a lot of fans there. I know they can't. They won't have as many as this big league stadium because it's not big enough. But I, I think, I think that area loves sports. Um, you know, they have a a big Giants uh, crowd. Uh, I was kind of the one, you know, A's fan down there. Uh, but I think I think it'll be good. Uh, you know, I, I think they're talking about having to do some renovations and stuff that kind of fit a big league team. But it, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be great, I think. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be heartbreaking for the team that loses because their, their season's going to end. But So how do you see it? They met four times in the regular season. Three were one-point games. Clay made a game winner. Malik Monk made a game winner. He's not going to play tonight. Are we coming right down to a last possession against Steve, uh, uh, against Mike Brown and De'Aaron against Steph? Is it going right down to the end, you think, Logan? I think so. You know, I... I just look at both teams, and they're you know, both well coached, both well rounded, and I think they know each other, right? They know. I don't think there's any surprises um, with what's going to happen, and uh, you know, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a great game. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully the you know my team wins. Obviously, I'd like that to happen, but you know, you never know. And, uh, but yeah, I think it does go down to the you know last possession, last minute or so. Uh, just get the ball out of Steph's hands. Hopefully, um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be going to be a great game. Good stuff, man. Uh, by the way, uh, just to follow up on what we came into the show with, your uniform okay? Everything staying together? I know the Jung Hoo he, he had one. I mean, God, every time everybody slides, uh, the thing falls apart, man. Everything uh, everything okay yeah. with the, with the uni? Yeah, everything's been. Uh, you, I'm the wrong guy to ask. I, I, I don't have to dive or do any of that stuff. No more hitting, so, so uh, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to slide yeah. or anything. That's good. Exactly. So I, I've had no uh, uniform malfunctions yet, um, but uh, you can split those things and throw too. You know, you get the wind up. You try to throw too hard. You, can, you got to watch it. Well, that thing might split yeah, on exactly. you. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's classic, man. Hey, Logan, thanks for making the time, man. Uh, by the way, before we let you go, everything early season. You guys get it together, but a nice win yesterday in Miami. Everything, everything good so far? Yeah, everything's great. We got a great group here. Uh, you know, baseball is. It's the ebbs and flows of the season. You know, I've started – I've been on teams that we start off great and we end up 500, and I've been on teams where didn't start off as great and we won 107 games. So, it's it's a long season. Um, we've played some good teams. You know, starting off with Padres, Dodgers, Dodgers Padres. Uh, you know, that's a tough three series to start with. You know, it's very good teams, superstars on both sides. And, you know, I, I think we're – it's all about catching fire at the right moment, and I think it's coming here soon. I, you know, the the vibes have been great. Uh, you know, everyone loves hanging out with everybody, and 
uh, it's it's been it's been awesome so far being with this group, and I think it's only it's only going to keep getting better. Uh, I think as a group, right, a team and fan base, got to stay patient. You know, it's a it's a, it's a brand new team when you look at it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm excited for what's coming, and uh, you know, it's you got Hicksy tonight. I think he's been freaking awesome to watch, and uh, I think he's going to continue to do that. Great stuff, man. Thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. Uh, I'd wish you good luck to the Kings, but I can't. But, you know. <laughs> you don't mean it, Jim. Yeah, mean it. I, don't, I want to Good be... luck Thursday yeah. when you pitch against yeah. uh, Corbin Carroll in Arizona. Yeah. We're but excited to see you back yeah. home. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. man. We appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for the time, brother. Enjoy the game. Yeah, of course. All right. Thank you. There you go. There's Logan Webb. Good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. That's awesome. He took the time. That's very cool because he knew. People love him. He could say he loves the Kings. People in the Bay Area are going to get mad at him over the over one. Well, he's game. from that area. Yeah. What are you going to do? Got to rep it. All right, uh, we had to push Marcus Thompson back. We have Marcus Thompson now, so you're expecting because we uh, told you that Marcus was in hit us at eleven thirty, but then Logan had time right then. He just called into us, so uh, that was great to hear from uh, Logan Webb. If you missed any of it, just go to KNBR.com and you can hear the whole conversation. But let's get into it with Marcus. Great stuff in the Athletic. And the whole crew putting together a great uh, preview of the game tonight. We'll talk to Marcus about it next, only here on the Sports Leader. Greg Pop on KNBR, and I'm uh, asking if you're looking for a local fiduciary who is licensed when it comes to loans, investments, insurance, basically all the things money related, then please call my good friend Greg O'Donnell at the O'Donnell Financial Group, big Logan Webb fan, big Warrior fan. For the past three decades, Greg has been helping people like you get peace of mind by planning for retirement. So call Greg O'Donnell today at 866 866- 496-2300 or visit him online at O'Donnellfinancialgroup.com. Again, the number 866-496-2300 or online at O'Donnellfinancialgroup.com. You owe it to yourself to know if you're going to be able to live that retirement lifestyle that you've always dreamed of. So call Greg again right now, 866-496-2300 or online at, you can also go to odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial, because planning is a process, not a product.
is the man who's as good on the mic as he is with the pen. It's Marcus Thompson of The Athletic with Papa and Lund on KNBR 1045 and 680, The Sports Leader. Marcus Thompson, make sure you're following him at Thompson Scriber and all his great stuff. He's got tremendous stuff up right now, plus the preview at The Athletic with all the guys, and you need to check that out as well. Tonight's game between the Warriors and Kings in the 9-10 matchup. If they get by that, the loser of the Lakers-Pelicans. If they got by that, Oklahoma City. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk to Marcus Thompson about everything. He joins us courtesy of the UMA Guest Line. What's happening? What you mean let's not get ahead of ourselves? You haven't well, mapped this thing all the way out to the West Finals Yeah, I have. I've, I've mapped the whole thing out. Clippers and Mavs after that, and, and uh, maybe the Nuggets, maybe the Celtics, right? We've mapped the whole thing out. Of course, that's what we do. We overreact on everything. At, at what point does it get unrealistic for you? Like, at what level? Is it like the first round of Thunder, the second round? After this game? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't like know. Like, after tonight? Huh? Well, no, that's, that's kind of what you wrote in your piece right yesterday where it's like, we just don't know, right? I mean, they could make some miraculous run or they could be out tonight. I mean, that's that's just how they've played all year, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the season, right? Uh, and to me, it, it, it just it, – it feels so much worse because of what could be. And it's not like they're just inferior. They just have this ability sometimes to just not play their best ball. Uh, so it's, it's – it's, I imagine it's incredibly frustrating – if you're a diehard fan and you know your team is as good as Phoenix, as good as New Orleans, right? And somehow they still might be home. So I, I don't think it's going to happen tonight, but, again, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm trying to get the image of the second quarter of Friday night's game against New Orleans out of my mind completely because they just got manhandled in that quarter. The Indiana second half, there are moments where you just see them and, whoa, they may have lost during the first half of the dynastic, dynastic run, the five straight years, but they never got manhandled. So, But I, part of that to me, Marcus, was I think Steph was tired. Draymond and Clay did not play the night before in Portland. They had to play Steph. They were down five in the fourth quarter. He bailed them out, and he just looked tired to me in the, in the game against New Orleans. Then he rolled his ankle late. Uh, he still made shots at the end to somehow get it within three. And it just didn't happen. But I'm, I want to see his movement tonight. But just all that being said, he hasn't played since Friday night. He took Sunday off against Utah last game of the year. If they win tonight, he does not have to play again until Friday night. So he's got two days to, to you know, re- recover, and he's got time going into the game. Do they, do they change things a little bit as far as the rotation? For years, Steph always played the entire first quarter, the entire third quarter, then come back mid-second quarter, and then feel when to bring him back in the fourth quarter. But if you do that, he's up to 36 minutes a night. And this year, you know, they had Steph down, you know, lower in the 32 range. So tonight, how much is too much? Do you ride Steph the entire first quarter and then bring him back with like eight or nine to play in the fourth quarter if he plays the whole third quarter? Do you ride Curry more minutes tonight, Marcus? I think you do. I think how much is, you know, like on Steve and you kind of got to trust like Steve's eyes on this. Like he, he kind of, he's got this sense of when Steph is too tired or when he needs to rest. But what I do think they'll do is I think they'll start him in the fourth quarter. And he, he did that. And then he pulled him out like in the middle, like he let him see if he, he was rolling and then sit him for a few minutes in the middle and then bring him back for the end. I think that's the route because if he's on like a heater and he's rolling, you know, you don't want to pull him in that situation. And it's it's just a long stretch to end him on the bench of the third, the last three minutes, and then start the first three minutes or four minutes, whatever, on you know, in the fourth quarter of him on the bench. So I think they choose one or the other. I think they'll choose start the fourth quarter, but it's it's really going to be on Steve's eyes. But I also think what makes this different is I think if Steve tries to pull him out and Steph, Steph is, doesn't feel like he's ready, this is a game he might say something. He might say, no, nah, I'm good. Like, keep me in. And you, he might get a little pushback, which is all Steve needs, right? If Steve, if Steph is like, nah, I'm, don't take me out, I think Steve's going to leave him in. Marcus Thompson joining us, obviously talking Warriors and Kings from Golden 1 tonight in the uh, winter go home. 
Um, isn't that kind of what Steve has to do tonight? I mean, th this is with anybody because this is it. So let's say TJD, for example, is struggling with Sabonis and, and obviously Looney had played so well or he's not getting something from somebody. Don't you have to just kind of, like you said, you, you said it perfectly, use your eyes, use your gut, whatever whatever it is you use. You, you know, if Seth has to play 38, he plays 38. I mean, you don't want to get to the point of diminishing returns, but isn't this the ultimate end? You have a game plan going in. But depending on how the game goes, that thing could go in a number of different ways. Yeah, it's like it's like you know, game seven in a baseball series, right? Like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm starting you for five, but <laughs> you might need to go seven. You need to go seven. You need to go eight. I, I do feel like the difficulty with C's setup is the depth is their strength. The 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 thing the Warriors have going for them that helped them go twenty seven and twelve is you don't have to play. Steph when he's not fresh. Like you've got Chris Paul, you've got Brendan Pajimski. You can put put the offense through Chris Paul and feed Kaminga. So a part of it is, even though it might not look that good, he's banking on the bench, the the the, the Warriors bench eventually wearing down the second team of the other team, forcing them to play their starters, and then bringing in a fresh bunch down the stretch. Like that's kind of their plan. But it's difficult because now if you're down five or if you had a big lead and you blew it, you know, now this this last stand really has to work. So it's kind of difficult. The Warriors live on their depth. So I don't think he'll go away from it in the first half. I think it's going to be, yeah, let's throw Moody out there, Chris Paul, and let's keep Draymond and Clay and Steph fresh. Well, maybe not Clay. Clay plays 40 minutes a game now. But, like, keep Draymond and Steph fresh and bring them in at the end like kind of firing on all cylinders against a team that you're hoping has worn down. And to, to, to John's point, and I think that's strength in numbers. We're going back to the initial championship team. That's their oh, strength. Cool, and, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and Mike's going to play. He's going to play three guys off the bench. He's going to start his guys, Barnes, Murray, Savonis, Ellis, and Fox, and he'll play Davion Mitchell, Trey Lyles, and Alex Lennon. And that's it, uh, where the Warriors could come at you and they could bring a whole second group in. Uh, Kevon Looney. Um, he played so well against Sabonis last year. I think that was the, the uh, determining factor, that along with the finger injury for De'Aaron in the seven-game series. Uh, we assume Trace Jackson Davis will start, but Looney really guards uh, Sabonis well. He sags off of him. He meets him at the rim. He out-rebounds him. He had three 20-rebound games in that seven-game series and eight offensive in game seven. Uh, how much is, is Kevon Looney? Anyway, they start him. Tonight, probably not, but is he the first guy off the bench in to go get Sabonis? I, I do think so. I do think, because normally what they do is they go Draymond at five. But I, I do think they go Looney. There's another way to save Draymond. But also, you know, if, if Sabonis wants to get a little his, his lick back, that's kind of what you want if you the Warriors. Like, if Sabonis want to make this a show and get his revenge against Looney, that plays right to the Warriors' hands. But – He's more – he's like a hub. You can drop. You can play and drop with him. You can – you don't have to worry about Sabonis dropping 30 on you like you would a Jokic. So I do think this is a game Looney can play. I do think this is one of those matchup situations. And then Sabonis is not, like, so huge that he gives Looney problems. Uh, I do think Looney plays, if for nothing else, is to bait Sabonis into doing too much, which is highly possible because Looney took his lunch last time and I'm sure he's been he's been hearing about it since then. And this is like, you know, like his one chance to get it back and prove to Sacramento that he's better than Looney. Marcus Thompson joining us. A big picture in it. We kind of talked about it right when you came on. Uh, Kawakami wrote a piece of at this point, what is reasonable to expect from the from the Warriors? And and my thought on the whole thing is, is that isn't it always no matter if they're the ten seed, the one seed, or anything in between? Isn't it at least from a Joe perspective or a Warriors perspective? If you don't win a championship, then it's a disappointing season. I don't. Yeah, I think there was a time they thought like that, but I do think they think about it differently now. And that you can credit like Andre Iguodala for that because there's been voices behind the scenes kind of championing like how tough it is to win a title and how their dominance made it seem easier than what it is. I do think, especially if you're Mike Dunleavy and you took over this team, right, in a bit of like a transitional period, you can already say this is a successful season because you learned some things you really needed to know, right? Like you needed to know about Kaminga. You just had to. 
You got two draft picks that are functional role players that are good for you. Uh, you you play kind of high level basketball. The only thing that would make it really disappointing is you might go a third year without Jonathan Kaminga not getting any real playoff minutes. Uh, and if he's going to be central to what you do moving forward, you kind of want him to get that experience. So I do feel like if they got into a playoff series, and no matter what happens in the playoff series, it, it won't be like obviously the victory they hoped, but it will be better than the alternative. And I do think they learned a lot about their team this year. Guys played 70-something games, right? It's not like, oh, you know, that, that was Bob Myers' line the whole time. Well, guys aren't playing. We haven't seen our team. We don't know what we have. They've seen a lot of this team, right? They've seen a lot of it. So now they know what they need to do in the offseason. And in that sense, if you're telling Joe, we need you to keep spending 400 350 because we're on to something, you have enough evidence to sell that to Joe. So he doesn't say, pull the plug, let's start over. Yeah, and uh, we were just talking to Bobby Marix. You know, the Warriors can extend Jonathan Kaminga in the offseason, and he could he could make big money in a couple of years' time, much like the decision they had to make with, with Jordan Poole. And I think Kaminga is a big factor in the game tonight. When you look at Sacramento, they got the one big in Sabonis. Then they spread the floor with shooters. It's more of a runner, sleeker game with Murray and Barnes and Allison Fox, obviously, and Davion off the bench and Trey Lyles shooting threes. So Kaminga, to me, is going to be a factor Um, where's he at physically? He wasn't playing at the end of the year with tendonitis in both knees. He came back. He played well. Then he had a pelvic contusion. He was out. He looked out of rhythm. The other game against uh, Utah, he played well, but he didn't shoot the ball. And I do worry about him playing off the bench and finding rhythm. What what are your thoughts about Kaminga tonight, Marcus? I, I think he's still a little sore, at least he was in the Utah game. I think you're right. Like, there wasn't that aggression you see at Kaminga, you know. Like, he wasn't forcing away. And I think part of it is him, like, showing Steve, I can play in this year's game. I can do it, right? Don't don't forget about me. Watch me move the ball. I know you want me to move the ball. Watch me move the ball. I do think a little bit because, remember, last year he was playing, he was playing, he was in a rotation, and then, boom, he was out, like, when the playoffs started. So I do think a little bit is him showing the things that help that kept me out, I can do them now. But he also wasn't aggressive. I talked to a couple of people. They still a little sore, still getting his rhythm back. But I, I think you are spot on. I think this is a Kaminga game through and through. Uh, they have no rim protection, and the only answer they have to that is to throw Alex Lynn out there. And if they do that, that's probably going to mean a lot of high pick and rolls with Alex Lynn trying to cover Steph. So it's almost like the chess match of. If Kaminga's getting downhill, forcing Sabonis to try to protect the rim, like now Mike Brown's got to make a move, and he he can't have four shooters out there because he's got to do something about it, or Kaminga just punishes them. I, I think this is a big Kaminga game. The only way it's not is if Wiggins does that for them instead, right? Uh, but I do think you're going to need Kaminga on uh, uh, Fox because, remember, they don't have GP2. So you're not going to put Wiggins on him the whole game, so you're going to need another body on Fox. And I'm sure Moody will get some some time in Potemski, but you figure the two guys on him is going to be the size and the length, and that's Wiggins and Kaminga. Watch, so watch Draymond. A, watch Draymond. Remember last year they yeah, put Draymond oh yeah, great on point. Fox? Excellent point. Excellent point. Yes, Draymond. Do, do you start that way, actually? That's no. A great point. I wonder if you just no. start that way. If it was a seven-game series, and a seven-game <laughs> series, I wouldn't. Tonight, I think you want to play your shot. I don't know. I mean, but the, the whole point is to put – they had Draymond on, on Fox last year in the series, and then when, yep. when, when, uh, when Sabonis comes over to set the screen, then he can switch on to Sabonis. I don't know if they start that way, but I think they'll finish that way where Draymond's on Fox. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It was the chess move last year, so Draymond can switch. And now that you have TJD – like as the rim protector, remember, because you had Looney back there, so you felt good about that. Like that having that big man back there allows Draymond to do stuff like that. That that is an excellent point. That might be the way they go, but you just figured out another way to not play Kaminga. <laughs> that's, not- that's a good. Point. Now I'm playing him too. I'm playing him too. So kind of kind of as you just as you wrote. I mean, you just never know. But I mean, on the surface, they haven't 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 played since January 25th, and three of the four games were one point games. I understand that, but. Given that Warrior Killer Monk is out, Herter is out, um, 
TJD has has developed since that point. Kaminga has developed since that point. Wouldn't it be a disappointment if they lost, especially if they're seventeen and four in their last twenty one on the road? I mean, this does scream Warriors win, but hell, we never know. Yeah, they should win this game. Like Sacramento's down two key rotation players. I understand Keon Ellis has been pretty good, but if he's beating you, I mean, and in fairness, all season it's been those type of guys, right? Keon Ellis hits six threes, and and you're right. in trouble. But, I mean, Sacramento's a different team. They're not the high-scoring team they once were. Offensively, they, they're having a tough time finding buckets unless Harrison Barnes drops 30 like he did the last time they saw him. But ideally, you figure you should be able to score on this Kings team, even if they are better defensively. I think they should win this game. you got one problem to figure out. That's De'Aaron Fox and stay home on shooters. You can't let them go crazy from three. That's the only way they can win the game. But if you manage Fox and keep Keegan Murray and Keon Ellis from going crazy from three, you're fine. Sabonis is not dropping 40 points and beating you. It's not who he is. Their issue is they don't have another reliable scorer. That's why they're the nine seed, right? Like, that's what happened to them, losing the league month. The Warriors should win this game. They should win it. But we've seen them lose games they should win. And hopefully for the Warriors, like, Steph Curry is still on his – dominance at golden one because they should have won the last game they played there remember those two turnovers Mm -hmm. by steph and draymond at the end of the game but they had a 20 something point lead and started playing for that end season tournament trying to get the score up so they could get in (laughs) i remember i remember remember? (laughs) but i I choose to remember game seven last year when steph dropped 50 on them so and they controlled that game so is it does it come down to the end though and you know last year's clutch player of the year De'Aaron fox against maybe the guy that'll win it do the Warriors win, you know, by 10 or so, or do we go right down to the end and it's a last possession game? I think I think they win pretty – I think if they win, it's going to be that way. They're up by 10 or 14 and a couple big shots put them away. Kings start getting a little desperate, just like we saw. I don't know if it grows. So like, then they win that game something about like 20-something. Like, it ended up being a route at the end. I don't think it gets that far, but I do think they just get a little comfortable. I don't know if you want to deal with – that go to one crowd at the end of games. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like Keegan Murray's gonna hit a shot, or somebody's gonna yeah. do something crazy. And you go home. How loud is it? Did, 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 does it rival Roracle back in the day, Marcus? Is it that loud? It, it more the like championship level Roracle. Not not that we believe Roracle. You know, not the like 2012 13. It's more like that. I would say somewhere between 2012 13. And the championship years, like, it's a very great environment. It's lit. Like, they're loud. They do pump some sound in. Like, they're turning the music up. So it's a little uh, – it's a percentage of it that's manufactured. But, like, everybody's engaged. Like, it's it's a good crowd. It's very reminiscent of Oklahoma City, like, where everybody is locked in. And you would think the entire town is shut down because you're in this arena. Like, they got that kind of vibe. It, it's It's impressive. If somebody rang one of those cowbells behind your ear like they did Bob Myers last year, would it be on? Like, would you be like, you have no patience for that? No, I kind of, I kind of like the cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> he needs more cowbell. All right, I feel go. like you do, do. I feel like man, do your thing, man. Be you. Like yeah. I used to love that. Remember the Knicks oh, versus dude. the Hicks? I used to love that and the Kings and the oh, Lakers back and the Cowboys. Like, oh, man, that thing those, was those those like cultural clashes and. That meant a little bit more to basketball. That's what that's what yeah. turned it up. I like it. Yeah. yeah push, push that envelope. All right, man. Great stuff. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one. See homie. you, man. Thank you, you. That is the great Marcus <laughs> Thompson at Thompson Scribe. Warriors by double digits. He's saying. Well, and just to go back to Danny's big poll here, and again, you can vote on Twitter at Danny Dunn two four uh, at KMBR etc. Sixty six percent saying Dubs win close. 14% dubs win blot, 16% uh, kings win close 4%. So 66% say this is going to be a close game. So, I don't know. Like you said, like Marcus wrote, man, you just don't know. I mean, you look at this thing on the surface and you think they're missing some guys. You've had guys emerge. You're 17 and 4 on the road in your last 21. I mean, you're, they should win this game. But who's, you know, <laughs> this season, who the hell can predict what the Warriors are going to do? Nobody. It's crazy. All right, Gary Gerald, the Kings side of things, is going to join us. Uh, at uh, 1230. So we're going to do that in about uh, 13 minutes. Your thoughts on this thing. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. Golden State Lumber and Build the Materials text line and call in line the same number at 415-885-627-415-808-KNBR. Did you want me to do this right now? Uh, between now and 1 o'clock, 
you can win two tickets to see John Fogarty with George Thorogood at the Frost Amphitheater at Stanford on the 31st of August, 2024. Tune in between now and uh, 1 o'clock. We'll give you a cue to call. A cue to call be the 10th caller. Not now, but when you hear the cue to call, the only number to call is 415-896-KMBR, 415-896-5627, and you'll win. Furnished by AEG Golden Voice. That's what they should call you, Golden Voice. Uh, find official rules at KMBR.com. Tickets on sale now at AXS. Dot com golden voice now that was my handle in was the it? uh in the days of cb radios oh. <laughs> you remember break a break or one nine, nine. Break one nine. Golden voice here. keep the women hot and the beer cold and never let your meat loaf <laughs> this is golden voice remember that my dad uh, uh, this is a true story my dad bought like a big old gmc blazer or something like that when i was in high school and he had a cb in it there was a cb in it and we would sneak out there, and we'd mess with guys. We'd be like, oh, break a one-nine, break a one-nine here. And they That's would where get, I did my first broadcast. It was on CB Radio. Did you really? I got you in the rocking chair. <laughs> truckers so did not I, I find that I think I'm going to get on the CB Radio and go up to Golden One Center go. as the Golden Voice. The Golden Voice. And then right after the game, take a golden shower. <laughs> I knew Perfect. that was coming. Perfect. I knew that was coming. I was going to make that joke, but you did it for me. And if Elliot would have go. got me tickets to the game tonight, I'd have Gold Bar Whiskey oh, very as nice. well. Very right, nice. No, oh, we, there is a sounder. I almost forgot. What, what is the sounder? Oh. oh, there you go. A little John Fogarty. Where is Frost Arena? Where is that? On Stanford campus? Is that Stanford? Yeah, I don't think I've ever Where been to that? Frost Amphitheater. Is that the new name for Maples Pavilion? No, uh -uh. can't be, right? I do love amphitheaters, though. You know, the little out, the outside thing. You know, Shoreline. Nice. Shoreline. That is the best. All right, so check it out. Again, between now and 1 o'clock, you'll have a chance to win. George Thorogood and also uh, John Fogarty, as you just heard there, and that is your sounder. Best of luck. All right, we'll get you ready for the Kings side of things. Bottom of the hour, Gary Gerald's going to join us. Longtime radio voice of the Kings. It's Bob and London only here on the Sports Leader. O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Kings beat writer James Ham, and I am a big fan of Ham. Join Pop and I yesterday and discuss the keys to tonight's Warriors Kings playing game. Check out that podcast and more on the KBR app, YouTube, KBR socials.
And now, 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 time for the Protect Your Assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report. And kick it with KNBR on the gram for everything blue and gold. Follow the sports leader on Instagram at KNBR. Our Gary Gerald, the longtime radio voice of the Kings, will join us in five minutes to get the Kings side of things real quick. Off of this, just quickly, uh, Brock Purdy was on Pat McAfee. We'll play some of that for you later on in the uh, show. His latest, John Deere. He's going to be like the king of like farming, farm equipment, seeds, anything farm. He's going to make a ton of money. He's from of Arizona. <laughs> he's not from Iowa. I'm just saying, man. He met his wife. Uh, he did yeah, go to Iowa State. But no, he, he got it. He's, he's now a big spokesman for John Deere. He's going to wear one of those big John Deere hats around. So anyway, that's his newest. It's pretty funny, actually. There's a story about him saving a uh, like a reporter from a coyote or something. So he told that story. Well, so that's, we'll play a that's Arizona like. Yeah, that's that's, the, to, uh, that's, different. that's the desert. But anyway, and he had that thing over the weekend with all the kids. What a what a guy he is. That's the kind of guy you'd want your daughter to marry, right? Brock has He's already married, thing. so you probably wouldn't. But well, I, you know, I, I, I know, we all know that that's kind of hit yeah. and miss sometimes. At least with me yeah. and you. But uh, not for Brock. I, I'm sure Brock he'll be fine. One wife. <laughs> One tractor, <laughs> one pair of blue jeans his whole life. He's That's Brock true. Steady. That's He's true. He's the same guy. He doesn't even need going. the money. He'll just be casual, oh, wearing the khakis. Don't, don't start that. No, I'm he's, just saying. He's, he's going he's to get the he's money. Just gonna, he's going to be like, he's going to wear khakis and everything else. Speaking of khakis, did you see the video with Harbaugh and his RV at Huntington? Yeah, he's, he's living down there. He's living at Huntington RV Park by the beach, and they did a tour of his RV. It's so Harbaugh. It's unbelievable. Anyway. Uh, by the way, uh, this shameless plug, uh, what is it, a week from Thursday. Make sure that you tune in because the Giants are off and we have your NFL draft coverage. By the way, Dante can't make it. Not what? Dante. Yeah. What? That's what we heard. Dante is not going to Because he be. knows J.J. McCarthy's good, and the Ohio State Buckeye cannot see that quarterback going so high in the draft. Well, he knows that Marvin Harrison's going Why high. is he? Yeah, Marvin's pretty good. Too. Yeah. He's what, was just me and you alone? Or are we going to bring in? No, uh, I think we have. I don't know if it's confirmed of who we're going to bring in, so I don't know that I can say. But uh, we do have a replacement who's going to do outstanding work. And let's just say they'll the early in the draft with all this quarterback talk, there could be as many as six going in the first round and four going in the top four. We've got a quarterback to help us. That's all I can say right now. That's all I can say. Right now. So anyway, hmm. a week from Thursday, a week from Thursday, uh, we will have that coverage for you. All right, let's get it back to the Kings and the Warriors. Let's talk to Gary Gerald, the Kings side of things. We'll do it next with Pop and Lund on the Sports Leader. see better would that be something that you'd be interested in well i was and papa was and that's why i've got something really cool coming up for you the laser eye center of silicon valley the free live i tell you clr webinar which is coming up april 26th at noon so i was just telling you about the uh, 
draft, well, the day after the draft, this is going to happen. You have to have yourself ready. Now, look, for me, uh, couldn't see near, couldn't see far. That's a problem. Uh, years and years ago, I had a laser procedure. Didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So uh, Papa was crowing, literally, about the CLR that he had done, custom lens replacement. I was like, all right, we'll check it out. Well, I had it done almost been a year now, and it has been life-changing for me. Now, what's cool about this webinar is the doctors, they're going to answer any of the questions you might have. Now, I tell you about this procedure and what it did for me all the time, but these are experts, I tell you. So the difference between CLR and LASIK, if you're a good candidate, what's the cost? Is there financing? How long does the procedure take? Well, I can tell you that, just minutes, and it's very easy. So any of those kind of things, any of the things you want answered so that you can see better, that's what they're going to do in this webinar at the Laser Eye Center of Silicon Valley. So why don't you do it? Why don't you check it out and just uh, do this, and then you'll know. So it's the permanent solutions to glasses, no cataracts. It's the Laser Eye Center of Silicon Valley. So it's a free CLR webinar, and it's April 26th, Friday at noon. Space is limited, though, so it doesn't cost you anything, but space is limited, so you do have to register. So just go to lasericlr.com, and they have the answers to all your questions. Again, that's lasericlr.com. This is KNBR, and they are Papa and Lund. Listen to us here and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We are, we are KNBR 104.5 and 680. The Sports Leader. Well, we, we welcome anybody that's in front of us. Um, we're just excited about an opportunity uh, to play. And, and again, you know, situations like this, uh, we as a group 
right now haven't been uh, through. And so to, to go play one game right now, that's how I look at it, and swing for the fences, try to get a win. It's a great opportunity for us to go do it while trying to move on and growing in the same breath. And, of course, former Warriors assistant and uh, Kings head coach Mike Brown, our pal, as we get ready for the Kings and the Warriors from Golden 1. Not quite the playoffs, the play-in. And let's uh, let's get the other side of things. Uh, Gary Gerald, the great voice of the Kings for many, many years, good enough to give us a few minutes on game day, joins us courtesy of the Uma Guest Line. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. A lot of anticipation, a lot of butterflies, I think, for everybody, and a little bit of drama in this uh, one-or-done situation. Yeah, gee, man, great to hear your voice. And uh, we had you on last year, and here we go again. It's not a playoff, it's a play-in, but it is Warriors and Kings, and we love it. But we just heard from Mike Brown, and you've been the, the radio voice of the Kings ever since they moved to Sacramento in the 80s. And it's just a long history uh, former Warrior assistant coaches or head coaches hired as Kings head coaches, starting with the saintly one, Gary St. Jean, Rick Adelman, Eric Musselman, Keith Smart, Michael Malone, George Carl, Luke Walton, Alvin Gentry, and now Mike Brown. So just give me a little lay of the land. We talked to you about how Mike changed the culture last year, jumping to 48 wins in a number three C. This year you slid back a little bit with 46 wins and all the way down to a uh, a ninth seed, and now you're in a play in the night against his former team, the Warriors. So how would you assess the first two years of, of Mike Brown, Gary, as the head coach of the Kings? Well, he talked a lot about <clears throat> changing the culture, and I think he did that. He checked an amazing number of boxes in that first year. And, of course, when you're enjoying that kind of success and after you have been starved as an organization for success for 16, 17 years, what a welcome change. But this year, you're not, you know, the Kings weren't able to sneak up on anybody. There was a different kind of pressure evolved. They didn't make dramatic changes to the roster and the makeup of the organization because they wanted to see what could be built. And I'm not sure that that's worked out the way the Kings had hoped it would. But uh, I look at this, Greg, as seeing a couple of teams that are that are trending in different directions. I mean, obviously, the Warriors have had tremendous success over the last couple of months. And, and the Kings have been slipping. They're five and seven in their last 12 games. Well, the Warriors have won 10 of their last 12. And so you wonder what kind of pressure is at stake. You wonder how a team will react. Uh, I have so much respect for Steve Kerr and that organization and what they've accomplished over the last decade. And certainly, I think that that, that experience facing virtually any and every kind of situation play in or play off, uh, there's a huge advantage for Kerr and the Warriors. And I'm anxious to see how the Kings adapt to that. Gary Gerald, longtime voice of the Kings, as we get you ready for the Kings and the Warriors in a winner go home game at Golden 1 tonight. Gary, is it as simple as Malik Monk, a Warriors killer? He, he's been out, obviously, and will not play tonight. And, and Kevin Herter, is, is it as simple as that, the struggles? Well, it's, it's made a huge impact. There's no question about it. And I think one of the areas that you see it, uh, defenses load up on Sabonis and they clog the paint and you know he can't sneeze or move without two or three defenders there clawing digging scratching trying to knock the ball away forced to turn over disrupt him take him out of his rhythm and the Warriors were superbly successful I thought a year ago in the seven game playoff series in you know denying the effectiveness of Demontis Sabonis so, so clearly, you know, there's a master plan and there's a game plan that's been implemented with success by Kerr and company. And you wonder, you know, how much have the Kings grown from that? But clearly, when you don't have two of your, you know, six best rotational players, you're at a disadvantage. And I think the Kings are still adapting and trying to find a way. They've been pleased, of course, with the, with the growth of a young player in Keon Ellis, but you're throwing him into into the jungle here now, and and when you're facing this, I, I was fascinated. I saw one of uh, one of the notes from the Warriors about the the trio, the great trio of Steph and Clay and Draymond. 420 regular season wins for that threesome, man, that's a great impressive number. And to have that kind of success, 
they faced all these different scenarios and, and they know what to do. They know what to expect. And I, I think that's a, that's a huge mountain for the Kings to conquer. And they've got 98 playoff wins, which is the third most of any trio in NBA history behind Tim and Manu and Tony and Kareem and Magic and Michael Cooper. So, so I hear you. And you made the point without, you know, without, uh, and I think Malik Monk is a top candidate for sixth man every year because he plays so well on both ends and he's a tough cover um, going downhill. So he won't play off the bench, but in Kevin Herter, your minus a starter. Tell us more about Keon Ellis, a young player, undrafted into the NBA last year, a two-way guy up and down, and now he's moved into the, the lineup. He can guard. There's no doubt. And I wonder if Michael put him on Steph a little bit tonight. Um, so tell me about his defense. And then as a three-point shooter, G-Man, I see him make shots, but I see teams invite him to shoot shots. Well, you know, we know the Warriors will sag off a of Sabonis. If they sag off of Ellis, is that a good game plan tonight? Well, I think it plays somewhat into the Kings' uh, hands if that was to be the case. Uh, a lot depends on whether or not the first couple of shots that Keon launches go down. Uh, you mentioned his three-point shooting. It's it's not the biggest sample size, but his numbers on the regular season were 70 of 168, which translates to roughly 42% success as a defender. And that that's where he was hanging his hat, trying to, to make his way into the league. Uh, keep in mind, Keon was not drafted coming out of Alabama. He has extreme length, long arms. He has great anticipation. He is, a, in my mind, a quality defender. But he's a young player finding his way and trying to get experience here. And I, I don't think there's any question he's learned an awful lot, particularly over the last month when he's been filling in for Kevin Herter. But he's young. And, you know, I'm sure that the Warriors are going to try to find a way to exploit his inexperience in these type of situations. Gary Gerald joining us, doing the other side of things as we get you ready for the Kings and the Warriors tonight from Sacramento. Gary, what kind of a game does it have to be for the Kings to win? Well, Sacramento, I mean, Mike Brown always talks about pace, and it's pace at both ends of the floor, and it's pace in the half court as well as transition opportunities. But one of the things that, that Mike Brown has talked about, he says when you're you're going against a veteran team that's won championships. Hopefully, you can find ways to create easy baskets. And that's, that's you know, the ongoing challenge for the Sacramento Kings. And they love the spray, you know, to, to touch the paint, kick it out, spray threes. That's a, a term that Mike uses all the time. And he always encourages his team to let it fly. So some nights, it's wonderful. Some nights they really struggle. I mean, you live and die by the three in that sense. And there've been games. We had one recently where the Kings started out. They made eight of their first 11 threes in the first quarter. And you think, man, you're rolling, but those things always seem to find a way to level out. And from Sacramento standpoint, you just got to hope that they find a way to drop some of those shots. So I think pace will be very, very important. Mike Brown always talks about physicality and to their credit, the Kings over the last month to six weeks, have become significantly better in their defense. But then you look at the Warriors and you say, okay, <clears throat> what have they done over the last, uh, was it 12 games that they've won? They've held their defense or held their opponents to a, 105 and a half points. Terrific numbers. So both of these teams, I think, are, are similar in a lot of respects. And I, I'm just, I'm fascinated by the matchup. And I don't know that anybody is, you know, truly prepared. It, I was thinking about how abrupt the season ends. And for one of these teams, that's going to be the case tonight. Yeah, you're right. You lose, you're out. So we know Mike is going to, you know, play about three guys off the bench, Mitchell, Lyles, and Lynn, and uh, heavy minutes. We'll see how much Keon Ellis plays. But you know the other guys are going to play a lot of minutes. De'Aaron Fox, Sabonis, HB, Harrison Barnes are going to play 40 and beyond. And, mm -hmm. and Keegan Murray who's a guy who's a heavy-minute guy now in his second year out of Iowa, G-Man. When we saw him last year in the seven-game series, he looked a little intimidated early in that series. He was kind of, whoa, I I'm in the NBA playoffs. But later in the series, he became a real factor. His game six at Shea Center, when you guys won to force game seven, was big time. Where is he at in his game overall now in his second year? We were talking about the three-point shooting a Keon Ellis. Keegan Murray 
is at about 35 and a half percent. And I think he's a better shooter than that. Yeah, he he hasn't had the greatest success in terms of percentage this year. But I was reviewing a number earlier about the fact that he is now in his first two years made, I think it's like 387 threes. And that's second only to Damian Lillard in the first two years in the NBA. So he's still, he's a terrific threat on the deep perimeter. Uh, the, the thing that's impressed me about Keon this year, Keegan, I should say this year, is the fact that he has become such a more aggressive player and a diversified player. He no longer just settles on shooting threes. He attacks the basket and with varying degrees of success. And he's also got a lot of defensive uh, pressure placed on his shoulders because he is arguably, along with Davion Mitchell and Keon Ellis, one of the the best on-ball defenders that the Kings have. And so Keegan will draw a tough defensive assignment. There's no question. I'm sure that, you know, Curry and company will see a lot of different defensive looks, nothing different than every night of their life in the NBA. But to Keegan's growth, uh, I've been very impressed. I, I think that he's showing that he has the tools, he has the instincts, and he, he's very quiet. He shows very little emotion. He's somewhat stoic, uh, but he's a sponge, and he soaks up knowledge, and he doesn't make the same mistakes two and three times like some young players do. So I, I'm encouraged by what I've seen from Keegan Murray this season, no question. Gary Gerald, longtime voice of the Kings, talking Kings and Warriors at uh, Golden One tonight. What is it going to be like tonight? Because I, I, I covered games years ago at, at Oracle. I've been up there a couple of times, but, I mean, it's a Game 7 atmosphere all of a sudden. It's like the NCAA tournament. How, how crazy are the fans going to be going? What's it going to be like? Well, I think there's no question. They'll be cranked up. There'll be tremendous energy in the building. And, you know, I'm sure one of the things that, that Coach Steve Kerr and his staff want to do is they want to find any way that they can quickly diffuse some of that energy and, you know, quiet the crowd. Uh, the, the Kings – Fan base is terrific. Uh, they had they went through that long, long drought where there, you know, it just wasn't anything to really, truly be excited about, and yet they continue to bring great support. Well, they've been re-energized as we all were through last year and through this season. This year, you know, I've been blessed to be involved in this organization for 39 years now, and without question, in my mind, this has been the most erratic season that I can remember for the Kings in terms of a, a roller coaster ride. But through all of that, the fan base, you know, they're still fervent. They're still, you know, packing the place, and they're they're bringing great energy. So can the Kings feed off that? Can they avoid getting overhyped? Can they, you know, take care of their business? Uh, that That's the thing that we're all looking forward to seeing in this showdown this evening. And we've been talking to you for about 20 minutes, and we haven't mentioned your best all-around player. Um, and they've got a lot of good ones, but – Swipe it to Fox is the best by far, De'Aaron Fox. And I do recall um, him coming to Palo Alto uh, to have a, a, a summer mini camp with Steph Curry and, and Clay was there and some other players. So he had three days in the gym of hard work with Steph in the offseason. They have great respect for each other, obviously. Mm-hmm. Does it really come down to De'Aaron Fox against Steph? I mean, I wonder if Steph will guard him much tonight. He can, but they may, there are options like Andrew Wiggins, but... De'Aaron Fox is a really good on-ball defender. Uh, He'll likely guard Steph a lot. Does it simply come down to the two point guards tonight, G-Man? Well, I don't know if if it's that simple, but you're on the right track. I mean, there's no question that those two players are going to be the ones who influence, I think, to the greatest extent, the outcome of this ballgame. Fox has been terrific. It's hard for me to believe that he's now a seven-year veteran in this league. And one of the things that he was challenged after the All-Star break to be more effective defensively and to see him step up and to slowly uh, make his way forward in terms of steals. He's got a steals streak going into this game that's now up to, I think, it's 28 consecutive games. And he caught Shea Gilgis Alexander. They ended up with the exact same number of steals on the year. But Fox has become, I think, uh, a better defender, a more consistent defender, and he's still explosive. He has amazing quickness. And uh, the Kings, you know, they, they succeed or don't succeed based on what the combination of Fox and Sabonis are able to generate. Gary, thanks for a few minutes of your time. We appreciate it. Have a great call. I know Kings fans in Sacramento is lucky to have you up there. You're, you're great. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. 
Appreciate it. We appreciate that. We yeah. look forward to it. Always a pleasure to chat with you guys. You too. Thank you, G-Man. Good luck tonight. All right, that is uh, great, the great uh, Gary Gerald. He's on the call tonight for the uh, Kings Radio Network, giving us some great insight on what's going on with the Kings. Uh, top of the yard, about 10 minutes. Do not move because we got the foreplay. All the principals will give you their thoughts on this thing from Stan Van Gundy, who's going to call it on TNT, to Draymond, Steph Curry, and Steve Kerr. I'll preview the game in about 10 minutes. Do not miss it. Pop and Lund, getting you ready for the big game up in Sacramento, only here on the Sports Leader. Jordan Hicks and the Hot Licks in South Beach, but I'm going to the North Beach tonight in the Tony's Pizza, the best pizza I've ever had. Tony's has been ranked number one in the world, and it's my go-to spot for Neapolitan, New York, Detroit, Sicilian, and Grandma-style pizzas. They make fresh pastas as well, and I strongly encourage you to try the Spicy Bucatini, all-time ranked number one. And don't forget about Tony's other locations like Capo's, where he makes delicious tavern-style cracker thin and deep dish pizzas. And one of his specialties is his Chicago Italian beef sandwiches. Those beefs are gigantic, but they are delectable. Save room for dessert when you're watching the Warriors and Clay Thompson. So get the Holy Cannoli or the Tiramisu. And then tomorrow morning, Giants play a morning game in South Beach. So go to the North Beach and take a morning stroll through the North Beach and try some of Tony's homemade sourdough breads, pastries, and New York bagels at his bakery, Toscano Brothers. And uh, if you are going to head to Levi's Stadium later in the year in the fall, or hopefully the Warriors play a home game as well at Chase Center, or certainly at Oracle Park when the Giants come home on Thursday for Arizona, stop by Tony's Slice House, fast, casual ro- uh, restaurants where they serve up delicious slices. Get one uh, big pie, get a second one, you got a full meal. So that's across the Bay Area. So Giants are in South Beach, but I'm going to North Beach for Tony's Pizza. Now, no, from no. the O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk, learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Tyler Harrison, who got the win yesterday in Miami, he joined Murph and Marcus this morning, discussed his start to the season, how he can improve. Check out that podcast and more. KMBR app, YouTube, KMBR socials.
Papa and Lud continue live from the KNBR Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpot Studios. Casino Matrix, Progressive Jackpots are here. Where are you? Just drop in. Please play responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Hello, friends. About three minutes. We'll give you a, a preview, audio preview, featuring uh, Stan Van Gunyu, who will be on the call with our good friend B.A. tonight. Uh, Jeremon Green's got a little preview for you, as well as Steve Kerr on the games this year and Steph Curry. What if they do not win? Look into the future. We'll give you that in a minute. By the way, Pop and Lund sponsored by good friends at Redwood Credit Union. Watch your money grow with a high yield savings certificate at Redwood Credit Union. See how much you can earn at redwoodcu.org. Easy for me to say. So here's have you a- seen this Brock Purdy, John Deere? <laughs> yes, I have. It is hilarious. Colt McKibbins <laughs> is in it. it. Yeah, him and Colt Colton's McKibbins. in it. He's perfect for it. He is um, so good. Here's what we'll do. We'll do the foreplay for you and preview this thing, and then at um, 115 we'll play Brock's uh, latest uh, John Deere uh, commercial, as well as he was on Pat McAfee and talking about how he saved a CBS reporter from a coyote. So we'll do that. And then uh, John Dickinson. Uh, at one thirty, and uh, he's at Golden One, or he's in Sacramento doing something. I'm I'm not prying. Maybe he's at the arena. It's awful early to be at the arena, but maybe he is. I don't know. He's in Sacramento, and uh, he's Sacramento's own, so he he knows who he is. Doing. So uh, we will do that at one thirty. So that's what we have uh, coming up. I, by the way, I like the uh, the River Cats hat there. Very nice. YouTube Vivac and Twitch. Ronald you can check this owns this team. Joe Lacob owns this team. Mm-hmm. That's going to be Very interesting. interesting. Although Sac and West Sac are two different cities, so don't get that twisted. Sac and West Sac. The River Cats are in West Sac. <laughs> okay. I Golden didn't... One Center uh-huh. is in Sacramento, California. Yeah, I have been two there. Different cities. Two I have not cities. been at the uh, the 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 baseball field. I've you have been not. There. No, I've not been there. Been to <laughs> Golden One. <laughs> you just bash it every chance you get, no, and you haven't been. It's there not yourself. a major league park. It has nothing to do it with Sacramento. It is a beautiful minor league not a major league park. It's a beautiful minor league park. It's, it's a 10,000 seat. Go sit on 3, the berm 000. and drink a fifth, and you'll oh, be fine. Believe me, I love now. minor league baseball. I love it. I just yeah. I don't, I don't know they should be playing major league baseball there, but and it's not a knock on Sacramento. Love Sacramento. It's a good time. But I'm um, just saying, like, you know. But, hey, who knows? I, I got a weird suspicion not to go on a tangent, but you think I don't know that Vegas is going to come through. I don't trust John Fisher. So then what? Now they're free agents? That's why Vivac ran a exactly. Dive alone a team in SAC it. and alone a team in the Major League Baseball in West SAC. Yeah. So squatters rights. That's yeah. why. <laughs> oh, boy, we could get on it. That would take man. us a whole show to talk about that. We won't. I All want right. him to play the kind of defense tonight where he only has four go back defensively, and he has, uh, you know, like uh, De'Aaron Fox basket hang and plays the Warriors with uh, four guys on five. Like it's a power play. I want him to do that. Yeah, well, power play. That There you go. Very nice. He proposed that when he first bought the team. To, to, to have a, have that kind of a thing? Well, he was coaching his girls' uh, team, his youth league team. Make team. it like hockey? And they did, yeah. You could play, did you're playing initially. shorthanded? They, yeah, exactly. Oof. Get into a zone? That kind of thing. Did that. How's your power play? Yeah, but most How's teams like to play a, a two-one-two zone, not a two-two. Yeah, exactly. So, that and would not be good. Middle. But anyway, now Vivek's a great owner. Good luck. All right, uh, Pop and London, KBR, AM and FM, San Francisco, the Sports Leader, Cumulus Media Station. Let's do a preview. Four. Time for some foreplay with Papa and Lund. I'm Dirk Digger. Four chunks of audio that really get you going. I have a gift, and I am trying to not be selfish about it, but to use it. On KNBR 104.5 and 680. The Sports Leader. All right, we do have great sound for you, but, you know, speaking of foreplay, that's kind of like a play-in game. You know, it's not – it's like a seven-game series. You have foreplay, and you you can go out to dinner and have drinks, and there's a – not not, not about the play-in game, man. You're straight to business tonight. I mean, you got to get it done. There is no foreplay tonight. Uh, let's start with Stan Van Gundy. He's on the call for TNT with Brian Anderson with some key factors for the Warriors to get a win. Yeah, Golden State's played as well of late as they have any time in the season, but there's still two factors, right? You're playing on the road, and I know Golden State's been great on the road all year, but you're playing on the road, and it's one game. I mean, that I, I say it all the time when we're broadcasting the, uh, the NCAA tournament, it's Tough to predict in one game. If the Warriors were playing a seven-game series right now against Sacramento like they did a year ago, I think they'd win the series in five games. But 
it's not a series. It's one game, and Sacramento's certainly capable of stepping up and having one great night at home. Brings up a good point. That is a great saying. point. That is a great point. One game, man. Think about the tournament, how many upsets there's been. I mean, it looks like the Warriors, like he said, based on what they've done and playing on the road and playing better and not being shorthanded and blah, blah, blah. But it's like the NCAA tournament. The 16s would be to one. That's 15s be plenty, you know, his beaten twos. I mean, it 48 happens. minutes. It's not a seven-game series. He's right. Coach has got it. It's a, it's a two-factor. And don't you hate those two-factor authenticators that you have to? <laughs> oh, my God. Is that God. like the plague of your life? i got to get another code? Just yeah. never stops. The two-factor authenticators. And, go and that's, they'll probably bang it. Go away. If, I'm, if I'm going into my bank, I get it. Like, you know, I, I, I can handle that. But it's like when it's something – like ESPN Insider. It's like, really? If somebody hacks my account, is that that big of a deal? Like my bank, I get it. But like everybody right. does two factor now. It's right. like, come on, yeah. man. The two <laughs> factor really to authenticator. Yeah, I'm glad. Although you I, that I think I, I think I know Blake Snell's password <laughs> that he has. You know, you know what it is? What is it's it? It's oh two three two. Yeah, I know. Is Blake Snell? Let's see, because every at bat he starts oh two and he winds up three two. He's like brain and belt. That was his password. So. Two-factor authenticator. You mean still free plague, agent, Brandon Bell? Plague of my life. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like two-factor. Uh, here is Draymond Green on the Draymond Green podcast, highlighting Jonathan Kaminga as the key tonight. If there's one player that I would say is very important for us to win this game, uh, obviously Andrew Wiggins is important um, on both sides of the ball. But I think our X factor is extremely important in this game and Jonathan Kaminga. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga brings a different flair to our team. Uh, he brings something that not many people in the NBA bring to a team. Uh, great getting downhill, great finisher at the rim. Uh, so I think Kaminga is going to be very important to our success tomorrow with his athleticism. This being a young athletic group, um, you know, he makes us more athletic. And so I think Kaminga, Kaminga plays well, we win. And I have no doubt in my mind that Kaminga's going to be ready for the moment and play well. He's taking that next step, uh, and this is the moments where when you're taking those next steps, you got to go. And I expect nothing less from the young fella Kaminga. Interesting. A couple of things. A, he's getting ready for TNT, doing all that analyst work. And then B, um, the Kings really haven't seen Kaminga as currently constructed. Last time they saw it was January 25th, so Kaminga wasn't Kaminga yet. No, but I watched that game back uh, today, and he came off the bench, and he was a factor in that game. And, uh, I mean, Draymond, sometimes you think you shouldn't tell the whole world everything. You know, what, what are you thinking, telling everybody what you're thinking? But it's obvious, and I've been saying it all show, and you heard us talk with Marcus about it, Thompson. He's the key, and I, I look at it more defensively, where, to me, this is more of a speed game. I, I don't know if you want to play Draymond and Trace Jackson Davis together you need one to guard Sabonis. you got to get out to their shooters. So you need Wiggins. You need Kaminga. I like Gary Payton the second to play, but that's not happening. you got to get out to Barnes. Clay does not cover Barnes well. At least he didn't in January. Can he guard him tonight? Wouldn't that be ironic? You know, Barnes comes back and knocks you out. It could happen. And they I'll got Keon Ellis. They got Darren Fierre and Fox. Harrison Barnes is a good player. Brick. you got to cover these guys. But I look at it more... I'd rather play one big and have speed on the floor. So I like the Wiggins Kaminga combination with Draymond. You know, Looney could match up with Sabonis, but Draymond's playing crunch time. So I, I agree. But then Marcus brings up the speed element. I look at it defensively. If you get stops and get up, you can score. If you don't get stops, you're in trouble. But then when you want to attack them, they don't have a shot blocker. Sabonis is not a shot blocker. He's a good defensive rebounder, but you can drive right. If you can get past their perimeter, you can attack them, and that's where Kaminga comes in, both in the, the scattered court, the fast break, and also in the half court. He can just take a, you know, a DHO or uh, a, a, a screen off of, uh, as a primary ball handler. So I, I totally agree. I've been saying it all show. It's a, he's a huge factor. But um, how healthy is he, right? Based on what Draymond said, he's seeing practice. He must be healthy. The little guy I've seen at the end of the year, he missed games with tendonitis. He's got the pelvic contusion. He looked tentative to me Sunday against Utah, so Draymond's been practicing with him and against him, so he must know. So that, there's no doubt we want a healthy Jonathan Kaminga tonight. Uh, here is Steve Kerr. Of course, uh, they did have four games, three close ones. The first one was an eight-point win by the Warriors, but then the final three 
all one-point games, but Steve Kerr says, despite that fact, since they haven't played since January 25th, both teams are different. Jeff. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the game, the two games in Sacramento, I just remember the turnovers. We won one of them, but we tried to give it away. And the other one we did give away, and it was all turn, based on turnovers and poor execution. So uh, that's, uh, that's what I remember about those two. The one we lost here, I regretted after the game not taking a timeout. Um, we had a chance at the end, and I let the play play out. It didn't turn out. and So that's one I beat myself up after that game. Um, I don't remember the other one. No, no, the other one was Clay hit the game winner. Um, and that's when I, um, that was really early in the season. And um, again, I didn't take the time out and he came off the screen, was open and knocked it down. And um, so, you know, those are, those. I mean, it is crazy that all four uh, came down to one play. Um, yeah, it's interesting though, uh, with them missing their two key guys that they've got, especially Monk and with what TJD is going to do. And we just talked about Kaminga. As, as crazy it is and as close as those games are, I, I do think these games are going to be different just for those factors. And I love Steve's honesty, you know, saying he, he didn't he didn't take a time out there, regretted not taking one. Uh, I, you know, the other part of it is the coaching. You know, and obviously Steve versus Mike Brown, but Leandro Barbosa is on their staff. They've, they've got assistants that have helped develop Warrior players that are instrumental with De'Aaron Fox's development and, it's just a cross-pollination, you know, Harrison Barnes, HB, LB, Mike Brown. It comes down to situations. If it does come down to crunch time, and so many of these games do, when do you take a timeout? When do you not take a timeout? How do you sub? How do you deal with foul trouble? And, you know, Steve's kicking himself about a, a, a regular season game with the Kings this year. I think Mike Brown, at the end of game four last year, John, um, they, they, they cleared a, a defensive rebound. They were coming up the floor. And uh, he elected to call a timeout when they had a fast break situation. I don't think they should. You know, a lot of times you just want to rip it and run, and they wound up setting it up, and the Warriors trapped um, De'Aaron Fox at midcourt. He had the bad finger, but still, and he kicked it out to Harrison Barnes. And Barnes, the Warrior, the war, you know, remember Draymond kept talking about Harrison Barnes and that shot. You know, left above the break, he makes that shot. The Warriors go down three games to one. They may be eliminated in five, but he missed that shot. It's 2-2. The Warriors go to sack and win game five, lose game six at home, win in seven. So it, it comes down to a lot of factors. The best, the great players will decide it, but they're going to be coaching moves tonight, whether it's early, middle, or late, a timeout called, a timeout that's not called, that ultimately decides your whole season tonight. All right, we'll hold this Steph Curry one. Um, what happens if they don't win tonight? We'll play that for you a little bit later in the 1 o'clock hour. Coming up next, though, we will do an early version of uh, Caboose because uh, there's some Brock Purdy that we want to play for you. He's got a new uh, – well, he's going to be a spokesman for a company, which is kind of right up his alley, although he's from Arizona. This is Iowa-related, so we'll get into that conversation. Then bottom of the hour from Sacramento, John Dickinson, super reporter, is going to join us at the bottom of the hour. We'll give you more on Kings and Warriors. It's Pop and Lund on a Tuesday only here on the Sports Leader. O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group, because planning is a process, not a product. Stan Van Gundy, TNT, joined Murph and Marcus this morning. He'll be on the call tonight nationally. Broke down the key factors in tonight's Warriors Kings playing matchup. Check out that podcast and more. GMBR app, YouTube, and GMBR socials. Day after tax day, Steve Moskowitz is here, and he has the answers to all your tax issues. So, Steve, what do you do now if you didn't file? 
You call us. It's not the end of the world. And you didn't file or file an extension yesterday. And maybe you didn't for last year either. And maybe the year before that and the year before that. You know, it could be just this one year or five or ten or more years. It's real common that people don't file. But don't wait for that IRS agent to come knocking on your door. Don't wait till your bank account is cleaned out. Don't wait until your customers were ordered to pay IRS, not you. We have a free attorney-client privilege consultation. Talk to us. We'll explain all your rights, and you have a lot of them, all your options, and you have a lot of them. And then we want to go ahead and do everything for you so you don't have to talk to the IRS, deal with them, have anything to do with them, and then you can have a normal life and stop worrying. If you didn't file yesterday, you're okay. Steve Moskowitz is here to help you out. Simply call 888-TAX-DEAL. That's 888-TAX-DEAL. Or go to MoskowitzLLP.com. Protect your assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report.
Kuzma and Lund Show now continues. Follow us on Twitter at KNBR. This is KNBR 104.5 at 68, the sports leader. What's happening? Thanks for joining us. Super reporter John Dickinson, bottom of the hour. Dubs OT, of course, after the game. Uh, by the way, if you missed anything today, Bobby Marks, Marcus Thompson, Gary Gerald, Logan Webb called in to talk Kings and uh, Warriors for the most part. Just go to KNBR.com. It's been very enjoyable. By the way, did he send you that picture of he and Dusty? Uh, that was sent by our staff. That's very cool. I like that. Uh, this is Brock Purdy, Colt McKivitz, John Deere. TikTok. Ready videos. for it? Hilarious. All right, so uh, Brock's latest, and we'll play a couple of cuts for you, is uh, John Deere. John Deere, and he's with Colt McKivitz in this big tractor. So I'll play the cut for you. And then uh, apparently he saved a CBS reporter from a coyote, which is more Arizona-like. Uh, John Deere, more Iowa-like. So uh, here is uh, his latest endorsement. He and Colt McKivitz sitting in a big old tractor. Take a listen. Colton, where are we going? Cross country. Cross country? Yep to find a chief tractor officer for John Deere. The chief tractor officer is a real job where you get to be the face of John Deere's social media. The quarterback at tractor and the QB of JD. Let's go. Road trip on two. Going on a road trip. Gonna need some onion dip. That's beautiful, man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> That's it? Oh, boy. You stopped it there? Uh, we got Tyrese Halliburton showing up. As yeah, Tyrese Halliburton's in it. There's quite a bit. But, so uh, good. Anyway, so good. Uh, there you go. He had Colton. Colton? That's his latest. A little overacting there, Brock. Oh, yeah, they're going Colton? On a, they're, Is that you? <laughs> they're going on a road trip in a tractor, and they're trying to find... Colton? Uh, Colton? They're trying onion to find the CEO of... Uh, what, what, is it? what are they looking for? That, I think you could do that. The chief... Tractor officer. CTO? I yeah, I think Chief we tractor yeah. officer. What do you got to do? I could see you in something like that. Just put on, you know, I, put on a John Deere. You have until April 29th to uh, apply for the job. Sorry Is that a paying draft, position? Chief tractor officer? To find a know. chief tractor officer for John Deere. <laughs> for John Deere. He's the QB of JD. What's he got? Does all this, did he all of a sudden get a... play that? Can you play that again? Because he did do a little draw there. Colton? Where are we going? Colton? Cross country. Cross country? Yep. To find a chief tracker officer for John Deere. For John Deere. <laughs> who's the uh, who's the better actor? Oh, not Jimmy Colton. Garoppolo in the subway oh. ads? Or we pull that one up? The QB of JD. I got to be Colton? honest. Colton, is that uh, you in whoa, my tractor? You're talking Italians? Come on, Jimmy's better. I mean, the better quarterback is Brock. The better actor is Jimmy G, right? I, mean, that's, I don't even know. That's close. Wow. Play the whole subway commercial. You talking Italians? That's not bad. <laughs> not bad. Yeah. He's, he, you know, a few more endorsements. He's not quite Peyton Manning, but a few more endorsements. He might get there, you know. Not bad. Brock's out there. there. He's becoming a celebrity oh QB. Oh, my God. If I was him, it's like I'm making a million bucks, which, again, to, to, you know, to everybody listening, that's a good amount of money for a quarterback. It's chump change. So, you know, you got to take everything that's not nailed down. That's Even the ones that make $50 yeah. million, dollars, like my homies – how many ads is he in? Well, look at look at uh, Kelsey right now. Yeah, he he's taking advantage. I don't know how long he and it's my home. Oh, what's her name's stop. gonna be gonna be d together? But I mean, he's taking advantage of everything. He he's on everything. My goodness, man. Yeah, I would. Are you kidding me? I mean, think about the guys who were retired, like Peyton Manning. I don't know how much he makes endorsements. Jordan, all those guys. They make a boatload. That's that's good. That's yeah, I think there's money. a I think there's a credibility there, and you got to be careful if you overendorse. Like uh, Greg Papa here for the Laser Eye Center of Tony <laughs> Gemignani. You, you got to be discerning. I know, just, Brock's, you know, be, Brock's, you Brock's like you. <laughs> Loan Depot. Call one eight hundred Loan Depot. You and Tolbert, man. My yeah, goodness, you gotta be man. You got to be careful. You can't do it too much. Yeah. He, so that's anyway, true. do we have the Jimmy? Brock, Brock's doing well. Brock's doing well. All right, let's comp the two. We do. We heard from Brock. Let, let's hear Jimmy. This is this is this is the subway, yeah. It's still the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're refreshing everything, even their Italians. Whoa, you talking Italians? Jimmy's going to take it from here. Refresh Italiano. See, Subway Nile has Italian-style catapult, and you could try it on top of Bel Gioio's so fresh mozzarella in the matzo meat, or stack on three more Italian-style meats in the supreme meats. That's just like my Nona makes when she cooks. I don't cook. Wait, what? It's a good thing he's so handsome. It's the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. 
And wow, even Barclay. Nona said he's not smart. <laughs> Take it easy, Grandma. Wow. Good thing you're also handsome because wow. you can't read defenses, wow. you dummy. That's basically what she just said. How about Steph Curry as an actor? Oh, I never dance saying, yeah. in public. Oh, he's... Festus Azili does, but Steph yeah. never dances in public. No, he's top notch. I mean, Steph's... I mean, but that, you know, think about how long he's been doing stuff. I mean, it takes you a minute. You know, did the he's SBs, everywhere. all that. He's over. Yeah, he's... Who's the athlete that's on more commercials? Steph? Barkley. Mahomes My or Kelsey? God, Barkley's on a ton, too. During the NCAA tournament, that those Capital are, One, it was like, so dude. So bad. Like, was writing no. Those? They are those, so were, those were terrible. <laughs> They can bad they like Samuel years. Jackson in them, and it's and it's Who's and it's Spike these? Lee. I mean, you have one of the best directors and best actors of Jim all time, Nance. and they still suck. Just, oh my God! Terrible. Who the hell's doing so that? So bad. Oh, those are terrible. It's not even the acting; it's the writing. It's all like, of it. That's the script. Really? And it was every commercial. My dad used to do this. He would it would drive me crazy. He he would turn down the TV during commercials during sporting events, and now I know why. Because it's like I can't watch that again. You just fast forward. Back. Yeah. Oh. Like, Gosh. Ugh. Chief Tractor Officer. That's a CTO. <laughs> I think I like that line. Hi, right. right, Greg Papa here for John Deere. Yeah, you can do it. Oh yeah, you're you yeah. You got no problems. <laughs> you got no problems. You got it. All right. Uh and then this was uh this morning, so he's promoting John Deere, of course, to do the uh, ESPN car wash and he's on McAfee this morning. And he tells a story of saving a CBS reporter from a coyote. Listen you this. saved a reporter, a coyote was coming, during a John Deere shoot, a coyote started tracking down a local CBS no. reporter and her dog in Brock Purdy Street. Yeah, here's, here's the video right here. It, it, they, sorry, it's a photo. They spell your name wrong on the right. Don't love that. Back on his tractor, but this lady right here, I watched this video this morning. She said, I, I just so happened, I just happened upon Brock Purdy and a couple offensive linemen and John Deere tractors in the middle of San Francisco. And then funny story, I was walking my dog away and uh, I hear Brock Purdy yell, coyote! I turn around, biggest coyote I ever seen was stalking me and my dog or whatever. You saved a life, you saved a dog, you shot a John Deere tractor commercial in San Francisco, you're pick 262, leading a team to the Super Bowl in your second year. You're a magic man, Brock. Keep going, brother. We appreciate the hell out of you. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I can't believe that that was a real thing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, she walked by and then sure enough, she said she's a news anchor and I was like, dude, I just saved a news anchor's life from getting eaten by a coyote but <laughs> it's real man i can confirm it so she but, said that coyote was like the biggest she said like big ass guy i didn't know san francisco had coyote what the yeah, hell's either. going on over there uh, i didn't either dude we're shooting this commercial by a hill on the outside of the city and i see this thing you know trotting by and it had a long tail i was like bro it looks like a mini wolf and sure enough i like no one was gonna scream and i was like, all right and so i screamed and i was like yo there's a coyote and uh, that thing, that thing went running off. But uh, yeah, it could have been an ugly day on the on the shoot. But we saved her. What Bro what can Brock not do? He just, I mean, I don't know if the, Wiley Coyote. I mean, I don't know if the coyote eats the eats the woman, but definitely the dog's done. I mean, the coyote's getting the dog. Well, so, I, I mean, was we a little concerned the on how he saved the coyote. Don't don't <laughs> wrestle the coyote, Brock. We don't need that. But he so, just yelled like. Red 18! Yeah, he yelled something. And the coyote ran yeah. away? Was yeah. that it? That's what he's saying. Right. Like he yelled yelled at the thing and then it right. ran off. But I, went there. I didn't know there was giant coyotes oh, in San Francisco. They're out in yeah. the East Bay. Are you kidding me? I've had many a coyote come up the driveway and just stare you down. And I was like, yo, there's a coyote. <laughs> but he probably yelled it. Yo, there's a coyote! I mean, he probably, you know, he gave it some, like you said, some cadence. He barked it away. Yeah. That. that was during the John Deere commercial. Yeah. Say, because... Where the hell was Colton McKivitz at that point? I thought he would have would have tracked the thing here down and, and watch the John Deere tractor yeah. while Brock gives the vasectomy to the charging coyote. I mean, Colt McKivitz is from West Virginia. Didn't his dad have a Daniel Boone hat and all that kind of stuff? Where was Colt McKivitz at this point? I thought he would have tackled the thing and eaten well, it raw. Colton's voice didn't scare the coyote. It sounded like another coyote. You needed Brock to go, Red 18! Clearly. Anyway, there you go. All right, uh, John Dickinson will join us coming up next Live from Sacramento as we get you ready. Live as we get you ready for the Kings and the Warriors. We'll do that next on the Sports Leader.
Now that the sun has returned, for the most part, you may be thinking of spending more time basking in the sun with friends and family. Greg Papa here for Golden State Lumber and Building Materials, and they're the ones who can get you one step closer to the ultimate outdoor living space. They partner with Trex, the largest manufacturer of composite decking. Trex offers options for every home and every budget. Timber Tech is another leader in composite decking with real wood appearance made from 85% recycled materials and last much longer. See them under brands at GoldenStateLumber.com. Builders and contractors can take the guesswork out of projects with the Golden State app. It offers account login, codes, and regulations, a variety of guides, and can be accessed immediately from the job site. Available at the App Store and Google Play. Golden State, celebrating 70 years in the Bay Area. When you succeed, we succeed. Wherever you are around the globe, stream Gold Blooded Radio 24 7, 365 on KNBR.com. This is the Sports Leader. All right, we're uh, going to catch up with JD momentarily. John Dickinson, our super reporter, and Dubs OT is in Sacramento, and he's going to give us a preview of 
kings and dubs. By the way, real quick, we haven't talked to any Giants today. Um, interesting lineup against a lefty today in Miami. Uh, Slater leading off, Wilmer Flores two, Jung Hoo Lee hitting in the three hole, then Soler DHing in the four, Tom Murphy hitting fifth, Matt Chapman who's been struggling in the six hole playing third, Conforto in left hitting seventh, Nick Ahmed not hitting ninth. That would be Tyler Fitzgerald who's in there for Tyro Stride, and he's hitting ninth. And Jordan Hicks is going interesting to move Jung, Jung Hu Lee out of the uh, the leadoff spot against the lefty. Uh, yeah. We'll get more into it. I I actually had an idea about batting him second and have uh, a true speed guy lead off or have Fitzgerald bat ninth and have Jung Hu Lee. I heard Marty and uh, and uh, Bags talking about it over the weekend, and it's really interesting. But uh, Jung Hu Lee is going to hit left on left, and he's in the three hole, which is interesting. But they think the three hole is the least uh, important when you look at uh, second-place hitter, leadoff hitter, and cleanup hitter. The three-hole hitter is no longer what we thought of uh, for years, decades, centuries in baseball as being the most important spot. So it is interesting. All right, so uh, let's get it back to Warriors and Kings. Our good friend John Dickinson, Super Reporter, dubs OT after all Warriors games, tonight being no exception, so make sure you're listening. At J.D. John Dickinson, he joins us courtesy of the UMA Guest Line live from Sacramento. How are you? What's going on, fellas? Yeah, good to be with you. A big one. Seem, seems like we were just here yesterday, whatever it, it would be, 352 days ago, I think, or something like that for an elimination game that Sunday afternoon at the end of April that, that capped just such a compelling and competitive and, and just fascinating first-round playoff series. And uh, I think a couple of teams that thought they were going to be in better position all season are winding up uh, right back where they ended last year, and uh, somebody's going home tonight uh, among the two Northern California teams. But uh, should be a lot of fun, and the, the Warriors are feeling pretty confident, I think, about their standing in, in this matchup right now. And obviously Steph is back to Golden 1, and they had an epic meltdown in the regular season this year. But we're thinking of um, elimination games, and his game, a game 7 performance when he dropped 50 uh, was one for the ages, and Davion Mitchell didn't play in that game uh, they used other defenders now just give me your thoughts on how they match up with Steph did Aaron Fox is a good defender great defender has a steel streak that's rivaling going back to Doug Christie days 20 years ago plus uh, but it does where you are to guard Steph and then you know play and score as much does on the other end Keon Ellis can can guard him they do have Davion Mitchell um, as well just how do you think Mike Brown and then I, I think when they run the pick and roll later in the game Mike has shown that he'll just flat out blitz it and trap it and get yep. the ball out of his hands and make Draymond make a play, you know, out of the out of the pocket there. But how do you think Mike uh, defends Steph Curry? All those guys, some of those guys. What do you think? I I think it's all of them. Uh, and and look, Keon Ellis. I I think you know they're basically playing eight right now with the injuries to Herder and Monk. You know they're they're playing Fox and and they're playing Ellis, who's been starting for Herder, Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes, Sabonis. They play Alex Len a little bit, and then Trey Lyles and Davion Mitchell, and and that's really been the eight that that he's played here down the stretch, and so Mitchell will get some time on him. I think Keon Ellis is going to get some time on him, and De'Aaron's going to get some time on him. They actually, in in some ways, have three pretty good options, and you know one of the reasons Davion was was kind of taken out of the mix was Steph would just beat him off the dribble and and get you know into the into the lane, and and you know he really hurt Sacramento more than any other way with with the paint points and and getting to the rim and you know the Kings don't have a lot of rim protection I know from talking to some people in Sacramento they go back to the the game seven and and kind of lament the fact that they didn't once Steph started to get going they didn't blitz him sooner that they didn't just take the ball out of his hands sooner I I wouldn't be surprised if they mixed it up a little bit more earlier in the game. Now, that's dangerous because you allow the Warriors to kind of get in a rhythm playing four on three. And I, I do think that's an area where, you know, Trace Jackson Davis at the rim could could end up uh, getting some, some easy buckets. And maybe even Kaminga, when he's out there, could could get some easy buckets at the rim if, if the Warriors are buttoned up and Steph recognizes what's coming and he can you know make the right pass and then the Warriors can hammer Sacramento in the paint. When the Kings don't play well, you can really score on them in the paint. And then similarly to the Warriors, they don't defend the three well. But, you know, this has been a much better defensive team. I'm sure you guys have been talking about it. You know, this is not the – you know, one of the worst defenses of all time that the Warriors faced last year uh, in, in that Sacramento team. And, and with Monk and Herter out, 
Uh, they've been, you know, much better. Uh, now their offense isn't what it was. Uh, so maybe don't expect the 135 to 130 kind of a game tonight, especially with the, the new rules and, and allowing so much more physicality. I think both teams have really been helped by that. I think the Warriors in the last two months have been helped by the, you know, allowing more physicality. And I think the Kings uh, have tried to, to do that as well because they're down two of their better offensive players in, in Herter and Monk. And, and Monk, who obviously killed the Warriors, I mean, he was the, the second best player in that series uh, beyond De'Aaron Fox. So uh, a fun matchup. Uh, I do think that in some ways the Kings are better equipped with the emergence of Ellis and Fox and Mitchell against Steph, but the Warriors are going to have to to be buttoned up and handle it, and Steph's going to have to know when to take it all the way to the rim and the, and recognize the trap and you know beat the blitz and try to hit him for for easy points at the bucket if if the Kings want to do that and do it early. John Dickinson joining us, our super reporter, and remember Dubs OT like all Warriors games will be on right after the a game from Golden One tonight in a uh, winner go home. Do you worry at all about Draymond Green in this atmosphere? In Sacramento? No, I, I think Draymond's been composed. I, I mean, I know he had the incident, obviously, with, with Sabonis. Uh, and, and you know, they're going to be all over him. Uh, but uh, I, I think the Warriors thrive, uh, to be honest, in, in this. I think they get added energy from uh, being the villains and, and the, the raucous atmosphere. I, I think that's part of the reason why they've played better on the road this season than than they have at home. I I think at home sometimes it's you know everybody comes out and it's you know they kind of they just they, they kind of play their game and the crowd's kind of waiting for them to do something and if the Warriors don't do something then the crowd never really gets into it and then all of a sudden you know they aren't quite the team that they've been in the past and maybe they're down and it, and and whereas you know in this environment uh, of, of Sacramento and it's going to be a it's going to be a whiteout again all all white t-shirts and everybody in in white at, at golden one center tonight and uh you know being at shoot around you know you just you, it just it it you can feel it already you know being in the building just for for shoot around uh and and it takes you back to the the games uh which were all just tremendous atmospheres uh in in the four games one two five and, and seven in the playoff series a year ago and the, the two games they played here earlier in the year but no i think draymond can handle himself uh i i think he knows he's down to that final strike i mean at, at this point you know the only way i would see draymond maybe having a meltdown would be if the Warriors are melting down and, and, you know, you never know how things are going to end. You know, if, if let's say the Warriors do play a bad game and, you know, uh, it, it, you know, maybe he loses his cool once the game's decided, but I, I don't see him losing his cool with, with as much on the line, as much as they believe that they can not only win tonight, but win Friday and, and, and then have a shot at OKC if they, if they can get through it. Like, I, I think they believe they can still salvage what, you know, being the 10 seed is pretty disappointing, but I think they believe they can still salvage it, and Draymond keeping his composure is a, a huge part of that. Uh, Steph has not played since Friday night, and I thought he looked tired in that game. And He played the night before in Portland, and then at the end of the game he tweaked his ankle and he turned the ball over too much. But uh, he made some big threes to get it close, but uh, New Orleans just uh, manhandled him. But he's not played since Friday. Uh, took Sunday off. Uh, if they win tonight, there's none of the game till Friday, so he's got two days off. Um, do you think Steve this plays him more tonight, JD, and goes back to the old days when he played his the entire first quarter, some of the second, maybe half, the entire third quarter, and then the call is when to bring him back for the fourth quarter. Um, you know, eight nine minutes to go in the game, then you worry about an overtime, and he's got to play five extra minutes. So. Do you think he stretches out his minutes from 32.7 this year to, to 36, maybe 38 or more? I think it could get to 36. I mean, the game will dictate it. I, I think, you know, first half, the plan is probably going to be as it has been, uh, you know, with that sub right around the, the four-minute mark, three, four-minute mark, first quarter, come back around eight, uh, finish the half. But uh, if if the game starts to get away, then he's got to get back in the game because if you lose, obviously you're you're going home and and you know you can kind of you, you can kind of feel it. You know the the game seven here, the Warriors took control toward the end of the third quarter, and you know they had the ability to 
to not have to play the frenetic you know fourth quarter where the, where the kings are coming back and you're blowing a lead and and you know or you're getting down 8 points and you feel like you got to put them back in the game so i i think 36 is probably on the table uh and i think it it's going to have to be on the table pop because i i think it, and i already mentioned sacramento playing only 8 uh the the kings are desperate like and i know the warriors are too and it's like but the kings are younger and they are really desperate to like they, their season and, and the Warriors could say the same thing, but their season, you know, from being here and talking to some people here will be a complete and utter catastrophic failure if they lose this game tonight and go from the three seed and 48 wins to not even making the playoffs and, and basically being, uh, you know, the first team out uh, in, in the Western Conference and in, in the play. And so I, I think Mike Brown is going to lean on De'Aaron Fox maybe playing 44 and being in attack mode. And Sabonis plays the most minutes in the league already. And, and I think they're going to lean on him. Uh, and Harrison Barnes is somebody that can play a lot of minutes if he's, if he's playing well. Keegan Murray's a second-year player. Keon Ellis is obviously a very young player as well. So I do think Steve is going to have to manage the game situation and all of that, but I think he has to know that there are going to be windows. And there were windows last year in that series where Steph was out, and Fox was in. And in some of those games where Steph was out and Fox was in, Fox would go on a little 8-0 run and, and, and change the game to where the Warriors would have to either you know, reestablish or maybe they'd get down 6 or 8. And so I think all those little runs, the Kings haven't quite done that as much this year as they did last year, but, but they are capable when they're on of getting on a you know, having an 8-0 run as quick as anybody. And so a lot of times it's just Fox going coast to coast, hitting that little pull-up 10-footer. He gets in between. Uh, the, the circle and getting all the way to the bucket. Uh, they love to dump it into Sabonis and, and try to have him draw attention and kick it out for corner threes for for Barnes and, and for Murray. You got to defend the three point line. And uh, you know I was looking at a lot of the Sacramento games and you know they've lost a lot of close games lately against some good teams. But in a number of those games they have been hot as all get out from three. Uh, to build some of the leads that they've ultimately blown. There's still a lot of firepower. Teams have dared Keon Ellis to make threes against him, and he has. Uh, so I'm not sure, you know, how you defend that. But the, the Warriors are going to have to play a, a buttoned-up game uh, to, to get this win tonight. You talk about disappointment, though. As, as, as I look at this game, and I know they haven't played since January 25th, but the Warriors are 17-4 and four since February 5th on the road, so they've played well on the road. They've won in this building. They're the veteran team. They're favored to win this game. The Kings are short. Um, TJD and Kaminga weren't huge factors, and they're going to be factors tonight. I mean, I, I I would be surprised if the Warriors didn't win this game. So I'm not talking about who has more pressure because both teams have pressure because whoever doesn't win is done for the season. But, I mean, just on the surface, doesn't this look like a game again that the Warriors should win? Although, hell, who knows what the Warriors are going to do. That's been kind of the thing all year yeah. long. It couldn't be set up any better. All of those things being said, it, it couldn't be set up any better for the Warriors. There, there's there's no question. I mean, this is, I think if they could have picked it, you know, they, they might have picked it this way with the game and, and low travel. And, you know, Sacramento has been down of late. The Warriors are you know playing great, obviously, since since January 30th, fourth most wins in the league and all of that. And a, a couple of the losses were without Steph. No, it, it couldn't have been set up any better with the the. You know, comfort that the Warriors have on the road, but in this building, in this building, even in an elimination game. But and and yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see about TJD. Like, yeah, I, you add TJD to the mix, but you know, I think him and Pajemski are two I'm going to keep an eye on because you know we we know Steph, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins. Uh, you know, Looney if he ends up in the game, we know what those guys are going to play. Chris Paul, poised, you know, veteran presence. We don't really know Pajemski. And Trace Jackson Davis, and I'm even going to throw Kaminga in there. Uh, he played well in that game in in Chase Center in January, but he, the Kings annihilated him in that series last year. I know he's a different guy. They hunted him. They put him in actions where he had to, you know, he would give up three point shots, and you know, they they ran pick and roll and and abused him with with Fox last year. Like they made him unplayable in that series last year. They made Steve sit Jonathan Kaminga down after game four, and it was you are not playing the rest of this series un unless the game is decided. And, uh, you know, so you know, he's been 
he was playing great, and then he was banged up, and then he came back, and then he was out again. And, you know, that was one thing I asked Steve yesterday after practice. You know, how much can you can you count, you know, fully on, on Kuminga to be, you know, as big a part of things because he might be a little bit out of rhythm and a little bit banged up. And, you know, Steve kind of gave the – the well, you know, well, it, it, it's a one game, and you got to figure it out. And if if a guy has it, you roll with him. If he doesn't, you you know, you don't roll with him. So, uh, you know, I, that that's I think Kaminga because he didn't play a lot in that series in this environment and didn't play well in it. And Pajemski and TJD, I think all three of them, you have to look to see how they handle the moment because it is going to be different. I think for all three of them. Do you have your feel the roar T-shirt on? I do not. <laughs> I do not, but there of, are yeah the fear of the roar white thousand of yeah. them that I was yeah. just looking at fear the fear the <laughs> roar fear the roar is what the white T-shirt says so we'll see those tonight at the whiteout. All right, man, uh, enjoy. We'll uh, listen to you right afterwards. Always appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you soon. Yep, looking forward to it, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Sure, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, that's the T-shirt. Feel the roar. Feel the roar. In case you go up there tonight, and you know you got your seat there, you gotta. Got to have the fill the roar shirt. I don't think you'll put that on, though. Not you. But that's Is it all white? It's a yeah. white T-shirt? Yeah, have all the, the white T-shirts on the uh, on the seats that say fear the roar. Fear the roar. All right, uh, there you go. There's the latest on the Warriors and the Kings from Golden One. We'll give you a few things before we get out of here, including an old face in an old place for the 49ers. It's Pop and Lund on the Sports Center. <laughs> From the O'Donnell Financial Group Sports Desk. Learn more at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial Group. Because planning is a process, not a product. Kings beat writer James Ham, and I am a big fan of Ham. Join Pop and I yesterday and discuss the keys to tonight's Warriors Kings playing game. Check out that podcast and more on the KBR app, YouTube, KBR socials. Greg Papa here. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt-free from credit cards, car loan, and personal loans. Loan Pronto's Equity Express, Express line of credit can make it happen. 
Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly with Loan Pronto's AI-based system. You can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. And you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month by doing this. Your home value is going way up. You can use that money to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 415-808-5721, 415-808-5721, loanpronto.com at 415-808-5721. and Lund continue live from the KNBR Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpot Studios. Casino Matrix Progressive Jackpots are here. Where are you? Just drop in. Please play responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Oh, we got another surprise? You know who we got here? Logan Webb again? <laughs> no, not Logan Webb. Well, that, that John was cool. Dickinson, not John Dickinson. Gary is, Gerald again. It, I, we I are going back to Sacramento. I know in Sacramento, except for Carmichael Day. Yes. Uh, is it David? Yeah, we talked to Carmichael. I Dave want to last feel year. good about the Warriors winning tonight. So Carmichael Dave is the black cloud going back all. They're going back to Dick Bavetta. He's going way back. Uh, the Sacramento Kings heartbreak. David, how you feeling tonight? Going into one and done. You know, first off, one to enter gamblers. Yes, I agree. Secondly, <laughs> uh, who's this? Epi? Know, <laughs> Take it easy. You, Epi's you know, taking Greg, the Kings tonight. Exactly. So. Yeah, he's got the Kings and the over <laughs> from Epi's his cell. Gonna be, Epi's uh, going to be out of a house. Exactly. Uh, Greg, uh, you know, I got to bring it up since you call me the Black Cloud. You know, you realize this is the first time you and I have spoken uh, since the I Super Bowl. Know. Remember, I, I was know. off the following week. And so we haven't really done our postmortem yet. So let me just say I to know. start, tough yeah. loss. Tough Moving loss. on. Oh, wow. Yeah. He knows, yeah. really how, okay. he knows how to turn on. the knife with you, doesn't he? Wow, yeah. you're killing no. me. You're killing oh, me. Oh, no, I'm a, I'm a diehard Niners fan. He knows <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. I, I, know, I know you are. He took, yeah, Carmichael Dave, he took off the next two weeks. He stayed for like a day or two, and no, then he's like, I, I don't know. want to talk about this. And he left for two weeks. No, right when Kansas City was having the Wednesday. Like, you lasted two days, and you went for two weeks. We're moving on. This is a Super Bowl of basketball tonight. It was Greg Papa on a couch in his boxers on a ski slope, <laughs> yeah. surrounded by Gucci Dada cookies. You're right, exactly. Trying to get, a, I, I'm with you. All right, moving on, moving on. Yeah. Okay, one hundred gambler. <laughs> okay, what? Uh, what were you? What were the numbers you were giving me in elimination games for the Kings franchise, Carmichael Day? Well, there is a bright side. We, <laughs> by we, I say we, journalist here, uh, have had six uh, uh, winner take alls. You know, game sevens, game fives for you older people, you know, all of those. This is actually the first play-in the Kings have ever participated in. And uh, the, the the bad news is uh, they haven't won one yet. I don't have good news. But the bad news is for Kings fans, they haven't won. They're 0-6. 0-6 so, in elimination oh, games, winner-take-all games? W yeah, winner-take-all. I was corrected. Right. I was corrected earlier because I guess technically we've won a couple of eliminations, like a game six or something. But right. No, when it came, two. right. Yeah, but when it comes down to winner-take-all, big old donut. Yeah. Hmm. That's yeah. not good. That's not good no. for you guys. 
Hey, so when was the last least... time you were in one? Oh, game seven last wow. year when Steph dropped 50 on you. I, yeah, that was last time. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, thanks for reminding me. Right. Actually you brought up the there. Super Bowl, brother. I'm trying to move on. <laughs> you know so, you're not. so here in the Bay Area, we're getting, you know, Moving what, if they, on. what if they don't win in the dynasty and all that? Just if the Kings don't win tonight, and yeah. Vivek Ranadive is the owner, and you know the relationship and the rivalry with Joe, and obviously Mike and Steve are buddies. They'll hug it out, but you don't want to lose to them two years in a row. And I thought you guys weren't going to get 48 wins last year, a three seed, and now you're in the play-in, 46 wins. How pivotal for the Kings' future and now is tonight's game, David? Well, I have an idea, you know, to make it a little bit. Let's really make this interesting. How about... How about the winner of tonight's game? Whichever owner, whether it's Lakeham or Vivek, whichever get the A's? one wins, they get, get the, the A's? A's. There you go. That's oh, exactly yeah. what you do. They get the leg up on the A's. Um, I don't know. <laughs> look, it, I don't want to get. I don't want to get That's dramatic good. here. Um, look, the, this was definitely the West got better, and Monty McNair, the GM of the Kings, thought, "Hey, uh, let's run it back." You know, you guys know this. You never know what's offered or on the table at the trade deadline or in the offseason, but. He felt like running it back, continuity was key. And uh, I, I won't blame the Monk and Herder injuries because they were blowing games before that, games they should have. This has been a real Jekyll and Hyde team. We, And again, we uh, can beat Oklahoma City and Oklahoma, uh, Minnesota and Minnesota twice, 3-1 and one against Denver, 4-0 and oh against the Lakers. And I'll just run this to you real quick. Home loss to Detroit, home loss to Charlotte, Portland, the Wizards, um, blowing a lead that hasn't been blown since 1984 against the Suns on the road, up one with 7.8 seconds left in Boston and the ball, up four in overtime in Milwaukee at the free throw line, all blown, all blown. So I don't know what team's going to show up tonight, but they're doing the opposite of what the Warriors are doing at the end of the year. You guys have won 10 of 12. I think the Kings have lost uh, 8 of 10, 7 of 10. So you definitely have a Jekyll and Hyde situation going on right now, as you know. All right, so what happens tonight? What do you think? What's your gut? My gut is you've got one team that is incredibly hot right now that is filled with three Hall of Famers and, well, four if you count Kerr, and definitely is playoff tested in a one-off situation. You have another team without two key cogs, but again, not to use it as an excuse, also a team that was – getting roughed up before that at times in big situations. You have the Warriors, who showed a really good game plan last year with Kevon Looney on, on uh, DeMontis Sabonis, who might have more pressure or as much as anyone tonight. Uh, if I'm a betting man, I, I, I think I'm matching the uh, the line tonight. Warriors favored by 2.5, 1-800-GAMBLER. But with my heart, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they, it would be really nice, guys, for Kings fans if they could dispatch – the old gray beards tonight for the season and then turn around and assuming <laughs> the Pelicans me. win. The, I'm not me. talking about you. I'm, t I'm talking about the Warriors. Oh, I, that's a, he, I, he took it as a personal shot. Well, I saw no, that. No, 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 no. I love you, Greg. And then well, turn around. You don't work them every Pelicans day. Beat, Pelicans beat the Lakers. We can exercise the 2002 Demons and Monty McCutcheon, thank you, and beat them. And it, we have wow. an opportunity to send home our two biggest uh, Goliaths here as David, but am I betting my kids' college fund? Nope. I've well, already done I, that. It I'm willing work out to well. be. I'm willing to be dispatched, but I need to get in the building. So the only reason I really invited Carmichael Dave on, um, <laughs> well, this bit was funny. It was good. One eight hundred gambler. To ask about but I, I, I texted him like, well, as soon as we knew they were playing, you got any uh, inroads into two tickets for the game? And it was crickets. Nothing back at all. So wait, really? Any way to sneak really? me into Golden One tonight, Dave? That's all I wanted. Hold, That's all I wanted. Hold on a second. I've never you been in that building. I've never been there. Did you? Did you You're America's guest. For, I don't have America's guest. You can get in. Sunday, six twenty-eight p.m. I think of coming to the game Tuesday night. Do you have connections I'm, for a couple of tickets? Nothing hey, back. Hey, Greg. Nothing. I, I yeah. will send you a screenshot. Here's what I'm looking at. On right. um, let's see. On Friday. Well, did I February send you a group 6th, text? Maybe you didn't get the group text. Uh, I, on Friday, February sixteenth, I've got <laughs> skiing is great for the back. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I know you don't have Sunday six twenty. Some of those you may this, not this... want to read. I can't read all no. of his texts. No, on I know. The one about sure. John Lund. Don't read that one. Exactly. <laughs> no, you want to come lot. to the Bay Area and be my host? Like one out of no, ten don't read I that one. Read. <laughs> I, you didn't get I've the got, one I've... from you didn't get the one from Sunday at six twenty eight p.m. 
No, and I would ask you this honestly, and I know you'll be honest here. Have I ever not returned? Ne- never, never, never. I'm always never. very quick about it. So no, no. I didn't. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, you, you said you are coming up tonight, maybe. Well, I'm going to send you one today at 2:02 p.m. Thinking of coming to game tonight. <laughs> There's no way to sneak us in there. Any way to get into that game? I, I've never been in Golden One. Never uh, been in the building. You're not you going to do, what? don't you know who I am? I mean, my, you're not going to do that for you? No, no, no with, with Greg, it would be Sacramento. For him? No, yeah. Greg, it would be. It, for, I'm John for Fisher. This, Can you help me get for, in? Wow. For this, <laughs> for this, it would be, don't you know who Greg is? Yeah. Not, not yeah, you've got more pull than yeah. I do. No. Um, I, no, I will make the effort. Text me. I, I Let no me know. Promises, but All right. Yeah, I Let me know. Can. All right, man. Uh, will you, wait, Greg, if if I do, will you wear a Kings jersey? Jesus. Just that. What if they're really good seats? You mean like a Reggie Theus light blue one? Uh, I could do like a, maybe a Vlade or a Kevin Martin. Well, how about a Nate uh, Tiny Archibald? I'll do a Tiny uh, Archibald. That's Buffalo. Jimmer for dead. No, he was a he led the league in scoring and assists for the. All right, man, uh, we got to right. jump. All right, I'll go, Dan. Don't don't bet Thanks on it. One hundred gambler. Right, bye bye. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. All right, uh, the boys are coming up next. Thanks as always. Uh, Danny was back in the building today. Thanks, to Danny. Thanks to Walter, uh, Bobby, Marks, Marcus, Thompson, Gary, Gerald, John Dickinson, Logan Webb called in to opine on the game tonight. Any of those at KMBR dot com. Tolbert copes now on KMBR and FM San Francisco, the Sports Radio Cumulus Media Station. Going on a road trip. Gonna need some onion dip. NBA brought him to the Bay. While his co-host was born and raised here. Adam, that is great co-host work right there. That is amazing. (laughs) You're lucky to have Adam, Tommy. Oh, absolutely. It's time for Tolbert and Copes. Let him get it on. Tom Tolbert. Yeah, thank you. Now if I could ever get some beer. And Adam Copeland. Adam Copeland has arrived! On KNBR 104.5 and 680 Sports Leader. What is shaking? Adam Copeland, Tom Tolbert along in just a minute here. He's uh, he's actually on his way up to Sacramento for tonight's play-in game. No guests today except for Tom Tolbert. We'll talk to him in about 2.15, get his thoughts on the uh, the game tonight, Warriors and the Sacramento Kings, and we'll get right into it. Short show today. We'll be off again at 2.40 as Giants pregame coming your way for game two down in Miami against the Marlins after a come-from-behind victory last night. We'll get into that a little bit later, but I, I think everybody's mind today is on what Greg was calling the, the Super Bowl of basketball. I don't know that i go that far. I don't know that i go quite that far. Warriors and Kings in a play-in. Neither team's in the playoffs quite yet, which is sort of a funky thing for me to get hyped about in that it's been a fun run here at the back part of the season. It's been cool to watch them become a team that seems like they can make noise in the Western Conference playoffs. And because of the way the, the NBA has shaped up over the last couple of years, and specifically the Western Conference, with the powers that be really sort of filtering up and down in the, uh, in the top 10 in the West, not just powerhousing up at the top like we'd seen for so many years where getting the one seed and playing a home game or getting home court advantage was far more important. The Warriors have proven that they can win on the road. It was the, the home victories that were weird this year. So the difference in this game from last season, right? The Warriors come in uh, as a, uh, an underdog in that one. They're a favorite in this game, going on the road. Uh, there's a couple of questions for tonight's game. I think number one is, how the rotations will look different this time around than the last time the Warriors saw the Kings. They haven't seen them since January 25th, a 134-133 loss. The time before that, November 28th, November 1st, and October 27th, three of the four times they saw them came before uh, we hit January. Excuse me, before we hit December. And as Anthony Slater pointed out in his piece, sort of outlining this game and what the key points were as we look at these matchups, the Warriors uh, are, are a much different team. The first three times they saw Sacramento were either during Draymond Green's indefinite suspension, before certainly Steve Kerr decided to mess with the rotation, and we talked a lot about that when we started to see guys like Jonathan Kaminga emerge for bigger minutes. Trace Jackson Davis, uh, a huge piece for them this year. We'll talk about that as it relates to tonight because Kevon Looney uh, was probably the second-best player on the team last year in that seven-game series and really dismantled uh, the Sacramento Kings on the glass. He was the primary defender against DeMontis Sabonis, uh, and so we'll see what happens tonight. I expect we'll see some Looney, but not... At big time minutes, but we'll see how they 
they match this up. I also don't think we're going to see a lot of Looney and Draymond next to each other in this one. The fact of the matter is, this team is going to look different tonight than any of the four previous and really the first three times the Warriors saw them this year. And the Warriors are going to look far different, right? First time they saw them or the last time they saw them, Malik Monk and, Ke- and uh, Herder combined for over 50 minutes played in the game. Thank you, Tim. No, we're not going there. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, – the, the, uh, uh, See, I lost it now. You threw me off there. I'm uh, sorry, bro. No, you're good, dude. You're good. Uh, anyway, the rotations are going to look a lot different. They had those two guys, Monk and Herder, played a combined 52 minutes or something in that final game uh, that they saw them in January. So it's been a long time, right? Three and a half months. I think the key question for this is, what does a victory for the Warriors in this game mean for the franchise? You still got to get into the playoffs. You still got to go down and beat either uh, Los Angeles or New Orleans, right? Which is going to be a, a tough ask either way. Just lost to New Orleans on Friday and a one-game playoff with LeBron and AD to survive in the postseason uh, or to the postseason is going to be a, a tall task or a tall order, I think, for this Warrior team, despite having beat them a handful of times this year. What it comes down to, though, is even if they're to get into the, the playoffs as that eight seed, what does that mean for next year? What does it mean for Clay Thompson's free agency? I, you know, I, again, I've said this all this year. This is an organization now and a team with, with Clay Thompson and Steph and Draymond that has one standard, and it's the gold standard. It's win championships. It was a team that was desolate, right? It was built from basically nothing into what's become a global brand and one of the marquee franchises across North American professional sports and specifically the NBA. Steph, one of the most recognizable faces in all of sports. If you want to continue that run and you believe, and I do, that Steph Curry is still in a window where he can be the best player on a championship team, you know what Draymond's capable of, how he's been locked in since coming back from the indefinite suspension. So the question is, what happens to the rest of the roster if they lose this game or if they get in and make a little bit of noise against a team like Oklahoma City, right? Can they make noise against them? Maybe. They can make it tough for them. I don't think that's a team they're going to beat in a seven-game series because I don't think they match up well. Though they were close games, it's been a long time since you saw OKC too. I think if they're to lose this game, if they lose this game, I I can't imagine you run it back with a roster that looks all that similar to this year. You don't have Gary Payton the second tonight against De'Aaron Fox. He was the primary defender Last couple of times you saw Sacramento. Uh, That's going to look a little bit different. As I mentioned, Trace Jackson Davis will be on the court, I assume, a whole lot more than uh, than Kevon Looney. And Kevon Looney last year was averaging, what do you average, 15 boards a game in that series against Sacramento? He was the first guy since, like, Dwight Howard to have three 15-rebound games, eight offensive boards in one game, and and handled Sabonis pretty well. Sabonis playing different than he did last year. A lot of mid-range jump shots, which is what Mike Brown says They've made a focus for him with uh, with his work with Doug Christie, but that's all stuff that's going to come into this game that's going to look a lot different than a seven-game series we saw them dismantle Sabonis and the Kings in last year. And, and really, Kevon Looney was a huge part of that. We'll see what happens with Trace Jackson Davis today. Adam Copeland with you. Tom Tolbert's going to join us when we come on back. We'll talk to him as he's on his way up to Sacramento. We'll get his thoughts on the uh, on this play-in game tonight. We'll get his thoughts on how much he thinks we'll see Kevon Looney versus Trace Jackson Davis tonight as well. And what would a loss in this game mean for the Warriors franchise beyond this season. Uh, 415-808-5627 is the number to text if you want to get involved in any of that. Giants pregame at 240. After I tell you, we're still giving away tickets to go see the Marley Brothers. How about this? September 10th at the Concord Pavilion. Go see the Marley Brothers. It's the Legacy Tour with Ziggy, Stefan, Julian, Damien. They're all going to be there. Uh, Toyota Pavilion at Concord. Tune in between 2 and 240 today. Uh, when you hear the cue to call, be caller 10 to the studio at 415-896-KNBR. And you can uh, you can win. Furnished by Live Nation. Grab the rules at KMBR.com. Tim, what's our Q2 call? He is the Todd father. He homers to left field. In Todd, we trust. <laughs> so stupid. John Sterling calling it a career. Uh, so, by the way, he was like, yeah, decision wasn't even tough. It wasn't even hard to make that call. Uh, when you hear that again between now and 240, call or 10 to the studio, 415-896-KMBR. And you'll go see the Marley Brothers Legacy Tour at the Toyota Pavilion at Concord, September 10th, 2024. Tom Tolber joins me next, talking Warriors and the Sacramento Kings in a play-in game. It's the Super Bowl, John. That's next on the Sports Leader. Roner Park, shout out to you for supporting KNBR. Roner Park's Sports Leader.
No Gary Payton the second time for the Warriors, and if they advance, he'll be out for Friday as well. How confident are you the Warriors win tonight? Let us know on our socials at KNBR. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Adam Copeland here for O'Donnell Financial Group. Look, retirement planning and investment management, it's all about knowing the rules. It's like overtime. Got to know the rules in overtime, especially when it comes to planning for your future and your retirement. There's no do-overs in these, in these uh, big lifetime decisions, right? So if you're looking for a local fiduciary who knows all about this stuff, he's licensed when it comes to loans, investments, insurance, basically all things related to money, call my good friend. It's Greg O'Donnell at O'Donnell Financial Group. For the past three decades, he's been helping people like you get peace of mind by planning for retirement. So call Greg today, 866-496-2300, or visit him online at O'Donnellfinancialgroup.com. Again, 866-496-2300, or uh, online at O'Donnellfinancialgroup.com. You owe it to yourself. You know, if you're making the right decisions or if you're setting yourself up to live that retirement lifestyle that you have always dreamed of. So call them now, 866-496-2300, or online at odfigroup.com. O'Donnell Financial, because planning is a process, not a product. Protect your assets with David Hollander Business and Technology Report.
listen anywhere, anytime on the KNBR app. Now back to Tolbert and Kerps. Tolbert, Kerps, how you guys doing, What's man? Up? I'm good, dude. On the Sports Leader. Tolbert and Kerps with you on a Tuesday afternoon, uh, getting ready for the play-in game. Warriors and the Sacramento Kings running it back. Haven't seen them play each other since January 25th. Three of their first four games against each other came before uh, December. They were like either without Draymond or... Uh, different rosters, different health uh, on both sides of uh, on both teams here with uh, with Herger and Monk out, and then with Gary Payton the second out for the Devs tonight. We'll go out to the Uma guest line where our guy Tom Tolbert is in Sacramento. Tom, what's up, dude? How are you? Woo! I made it. I'm on the Uma guest line. Look at you, dude. You... <laughs> I don't know if we ever said Tom's on the Uma guest line. Good connection. You want a, you want a landline too? Uh, no. Does it sound like it? it sounds solid, dude. Yeah, she's not Mark Spears' phone. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not like you're in Africa. No. So if you want me, if you want me to, I can drop it on the ground, step on it, throw it against the wall, and then I'll talk. Maybe that'll sound like Mark's phone. I think that's how Tom Brady got caught up for Deflategate, uh, <laughs> destroying his phone. Remember that? Uh, so how, how we feeling about tonight? What, just your initial take on this? It's been it's been kind of a fun day leading up to a one game playoff for the Warriors and the Kings. Like we got guys here in the station who are our Kings fans from Sacramento area. A lot of our textures. Uh, our, our Sacramento Kings fans and, and a little bit of a, a run it back. We thought this maybe could be a rivalry thing that started last year and already getting a second spoonful of it. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I'm pumped for the game. I mean, we get two straight years, two elimination games. Uh, it, it, I think it's great. It's great for both franchises. Uh, I don't know how many uh, fans across the uh, across the country are digging this, but it's Steph's involved, so they're digging it. Uh, but I think the Kings are a fun team to watch. Darren Fox is uh, lightning quick. He's fun to watch. As far as how I feel, I feel good about this game, uh, which seems unfortunate because it seems like everyone is picking the Warriors to win this game, like literally everyone. No one's coming up with the, the Kings on this one, and I get it. Kings, I think, are 13 and 13 over the last 26 games. Warriors have been rolling lately. They've been playing better on the road than they have at home. Everything seems to be kind of gelling right now. Everyone knows their roles. Everyone's playing well. So I just I feel really good about it. That's the only problem I have is that I feel really good about it, and everyone else seems to feel really good about it. Like this is. A, this is still a very capable team, and it's more of a defensive team, too, the last few weeks. They've been playing much better defense, and they, they got very capable guys. I mean, we saw what Harrison Barnes did earlier this year against the, the Warriors uh, in the Bay. Keegan Murray is very capable of hitting seven, eight threes in a game, although he hasn't shot it that well this year, like 35%. Sabonis is a walking triple-double. Keon Ellis is probably better than people think. He's really good defensively, and he hits about 40% of his threes. And then you got Darren Fox. I mean, Darren Fox can go for 40 in any given game and take over take over a game. So I, I just think the Warriors right now are playing better, have more of this type of experience, although last year will probably come in handy for the Kings playing in that elimination game. The crowd is going to be on fire tonight. So I, I guess the spread's probably about right. I think the Warriors fair by two, two and a half. So that sounds about right. I thought they would be favored going into the I think it was game. a three when I saw it this, this afternoon. I, I, got, I took a was money it? line. I took a money line yeah. at like 137 yesterday. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. It really does. I mean, I just think, it, and they're better on the road than they are at home. So, I mean, to me, everything points towards the Warriors. And I don't. Like I said, the only problem I have with it is that everybody, and usually when everybody sides with one side, usually the opposite thing happens. So we'll see tonight. I know the crowd's going to be going crazy. The atmosphere was fantastic last year when the Warriors played here. So I, I'm really looking forward to doing the game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the voice you hear on the UMA guest line is Tom Tolbert in Sacramento getting ready for the Warriors and the uh, the Kings tonight. Um Tell me about what you think is going to happen with the center position. Because Kevon Looney, I was saying this before you came on, last year was probably the second best player on the team in the seven-game yeah. series. He's the primary defender last year for Sabonis. And Mike Brown noted uh, what well, was in Anthony Slater's piece in The Athletic had talked a lot about, and we saw this early in the year when the Warriors played him, how he's shooting from a little bit further out now. Draymond talked about it a bit. He's taken a lot of his shots, Sabonis is, mm -hmm. from 15 yep. to 17 feet. Now, Kevon Looney last year, insane numbers. Uh, he became the first player since Dwight Howard in 08 with three 20-rebound games in one series. 
and then he had that eight offensive rebound performance in uh, in the third quarter of Game Seven. How do they split the time tonight, and do we see a little bit of Looney? That's a really good question. I think for sure you'll see some Looney, uh, but you're not going to mess with the starting lineup, and that has Trace Jackson Davis in it. Trace Jackson Davis though hasn't guarded. Sabonis much, if at all. I can't remember if he was even in the rotation last time. I don't they think played so. The Kings. Yeah, because it was so weird. They played the Kings. I got the dates like for the you. first month and a half of the season, and then they were done with them. October so 27, like, November 1st, November 28th, January 25th. So yeah. three times before December. Yeah, it's like, it, and then done. <laughs> you know, I've got that plan in my, so it's weird. It, it feels like you don't really have much to draw on uh, other than the fact the last three games they played were decided by one point. Uh, so I would imagine it's going to be a close one tonight, but I thought about that myself because Looney was fantastic last year against Sabonis. And that was one of the things that really jumped out to me last year was Sabonis. Sabonis' refusal to take that 15-foot jump shot. He just wouldn't take it, and he kept trying to run Looney over, and he tried to batter ram Looney. Batter ram. I love that Toddy T song. But he tried to do that, <laughs> and it never – it never worked. Like he just he he would he, his footwork would get messed up. He chewed it hard off the glass, and he just he wasn't as effective. So I'll be curious if he continues with taking that 15 foot jump shot, especially if Looney is guarding him. Draymond gets a little up closer on him, but Draymond also does a great job with him. They kind of stuffed him at the rim last year. I don't know what his shooting percentage was in the restricted area, but it had to be well below his season average because he wasn't finishing hardly at all. So. I'm curious about that myself, how they allocate the center minutes. You have to assume Draymond's going to play some five. We know Trace Jackson will be starting at five. But Steve always has that kind of uh, uh, ace in the hole where if Trace Jackson Davis isn't playing that well or they're doing some things yeah. that are giving him trouble, he can always bring Looney off the bench, and Looney could play 15, 20 minutes in this game. But it could be a heavy Draymond five, Draymond at five minute. But, hey, look, the way they've been playing – and the way their defense has been playing, and the reason their defense has been playing so well is because Trace Jackson Davis has been at five. He protects the rim, allows Draymond to kind of roam a little bit, and maybe he can roam and help on some of the Darren Fox drives. Uh, I know that may leave uh, somebody open at three, but you really don't want Darren Fox getting in the middle of your defense and creating havoc. But, yeah, I, I would expect at some point to see Looney, and depending on how Trace Jackson Davis is playing and how the game is going, you may see him a little bit more than you're used to seeing him because, and that's the great thing about Looney. That's why I love Looney. He can play 20 minutes. He'll give you everything he has. He can not play. He'll be ready for you if you need him. He can play five minutes. He'll give you whatever he has. So, But this is the type of game. This is like a Looney game and a perfect matchup for him guarding a guy like Sabonis. Uh, the rosters look a lot different, too. It's not just rotations. Uh, Herder and Monk both played. Well, they combined for 52 minutes in the uh, the last yep. time the Warriors saw the Kings back in January. Uh, as Anthony Slater had noted, I said this earlier, all three of those, the first three games all before December, and they were either prior to or during Draymond's indefinite suspension and before Steve overhauled uh, the rotations. No GP2 tonight. He was a primary yep. defender on, on uh, De'Aaron Fox. He was like an ace in the yep. hole against a guy like that. Where do they go defensively there, you think? Well, I mean, you need help. Uh, because other than GP, too, they really don't have anybody that can stay in front of him. You may see some Kaminga on him. Kaminga's very good at just being a ball hound, like on-the-ball defender. Uh, not as good off the ball, but if you just put him on Darren Fox, he's long, he's athletic, he can stay in front of him and maybe uh, obscure his vision, give him some problems. Draymond might even be on him. At some, I know last year what they did is they put Draymond on him, and then they'd set the high screen roll with Sabonis, and they'd switch Draymond off to Sabonis. And then uh, whoever was guarding Sabonis would switch off to uh, to Foss. I'm sure Mike Brown will be ready for something like that. But I think you could see a bunch of defenders on him. You could see Clay on him, uh, maybe even Steph on him a little bit, although I would think he'd put Steph on Keon Ellis because Keon Ellis isn't much of an offensive threat uh, to this point, but he's very good defensively. So I think it could be multiple defenders. But, look, it's going to take a team to guard him because what happens in the NBA now, it doesn't really matter who you start on a guy. They'll just keep setting picks until they get the switch they want. Wiggins could also be another option uh, to put on Fox. But, again, like really the biggest key to the game, 
Uh, I think Murray and Harrison Barnes uh, hitting some threes would be huge for them. But it's kind of all predicated on keeping Darren Fox out of the middle. And it's tougher than it ever was because he's better at shooting than he was when he was younger. Like, you can't just sag off him anymore because he'll, he'll bust you with threes. But if you get up on him, he goes around you and gets to the middle of your defense. He can hit those little floaters and jump shots from, like, seven, eight feet. And then if you collapse the defense, then he's very good at kicking it out. And they got your defense all spread out. And guys are just firing threes right and left. Like I said, Ellis can shoot threes. We know Harrison Barnes can shoot, especially corner threes. Keegan Murray is a very, very good three-point shooter. Sabonis won't shoot much. He may shoot one a game. Uh, but he's been shooting, as you noted, that little mid-range jump shot a little bit more. But, yeah, stopping De- Darren Fox goes a long way towards giving you a chance to win. Talking to Tom Tolbert here on the UMA Guest Line, getting ready for the Kings and the uh, the Warriors up in sack in the play-in. Winner will go on to play the winner of the Lakers and the Pelicans on Friday. GP2 would be out for that game as well, uh, they say, with that calf strain. Uh, so what what does this mean? Uh, a win or a loss tonight for for the team for the franchise. I mean, is is you know we've talked a lot about the 2021 Giants setting them back uh, with with building for the future. Yeah. And, and it, this is a huge offseason. It is like every year now with uh, with Steph trying to decide how you build around Steph and keep this team competitive. What does a win or a loss mean for this team in the franchise? Uh, I don't know that a win means much. If you win two and get to the playoffs yeah. and maybe win a round which I think would be a as good a matchup as you could hope for OKC. for an eight seed playing OKC. Uh, and, look, I got I think Dagno is going to win Coach of the Year. I think they have a great roster. I think they fit well together. But they haven't done this. They haven't had the expectations they're going to have this year. They're the number one seed. They're supposed to get to a conference finals. That's what a number one seed is supposed to do. Now, I think anybody would expect if they win one round, that would be a success because it's going to get really tough after the first round. But I think if the Warriors were to do something like that, then maybe you get a few tweaks here and there. But, again, you know $400 million that Joe Lacob spent on this roster, the 10th seed isn't what he had he had in mind. And, I mean, you could tell yourself, look, if we had Draymond all year, maybe we could add a five or a six. But do you really want a five or a six for $400 million? So I don't know exactly what it's going to mean and what maneuverability – they have. I, I think there's really three players you'd look at and say, okay, those are the three that if they really wanted to change the dynamics of the roster, those would be the guys they could do it with. Clay going somewhere else, Wiggins being traded, or Kaminga being traded. Like, those are kind of your, your three options. Or all of it. At, or a bunch of this it. Point. Or all of it. I mean, yeah, but I mean, those are those are kind of the three guys you'd look at and say, if this team's going to change its complexion next year, its spots, so to speak, those would be the three guys. Because those are three guys that are either starters or main rotational players. And if you don't feel like this is the roster to get it done with, I think those guys could still get you something, specifically Kaminga. Kaminga would probably get you the most out of all three of those, but that's a massive risk because you don't know exactly what he's going to be in two, three years. His trajectory is pointing up. But do you think, okay, I want somebody that's better now that can help us win a championship while Steph is still viable? Or do I want to stick with him and kind of roll this thing back because of what we are able to do with Draymond? Then you have to ask yourself a question, well, can we count on Draymond for 80 games next year? No. I mean, how many right. game, any game, How many games are you going to miss because of suspension or tees or, or points that are accrued? I, I don't know. But it seems like this is kind of like – this season is, is leading up to this point has been kind of like a, okay, now we really need to, after this season, we really need to ask ourselves a question. Like, where are we going right now with the roster? How all in do we want to be in the next couple of years while Steph is still playing it? Maybe not an MVP uh, uh, clip, but pretty damn close. I mean, he's definitely he can a, be the best a, player on a championship team. Yes, yeah, yeah. they absolutely can do that. So I think that's what they have to ask themselves. Now, if you win a round, if you make it to the playoffs, win a round, maybe that changes the dynamics a little bit. If you lose tonight, maybe they say, look, 10 seed isn't good enough. Uh, that was kind of fool's gold at the end of the year. Uh, we can still make the playoffs. We can be good. But we're no longer a viable championship contender, and that's where we want to be. That's where maybe we see some uh, – 
some kind of some major changes going into next year, trying to put themselves in a position, you know, to go into the season being a top five or six uh, odds to win a championship where, like, you are one of the five or six teams that has a real good chance to win a championship. So it's going to be a really, really interesting offseason. But I think those two things, I think went around, maybe they say, okay, let's stay with this. This is working. Young guys are going to get a little better next year. Uh, we'll have Draymond a few more games yeah. next year. Uh, and Clay's been playing really well. Or you lose tonight and they say, look, that that ain't, that ain't cutting it. $400 million for a 10th seed and out in the first play-in game. we got to figure out a way to give ourselves a better chance. Yeah, uh, and we got to get out of here. I forgot it's a it's only a, a forty minute show. Uh, Tom, fun oh, time. Yeah, we got to go, dude. Sorry, you wasted all my time. Uh, we got to. I'll tell you this: we got a sound swore Dre coming up next uh, that you're going to miss out on. Sorry, Tom. Uh, we'll oh, uh, enjoy the game tonight, dude, and we'll talk tomorrow, dude. I don't know why I said dude there. so many times. <laughs> all right, later, Tom. <laughs> uh, oh my god! No, not yet. Uh, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, if we have some time here, we do have a quick uh, soundbite from Draymond on hates the play-in. We'll get that to you next and to our texter on the YouTube chat. He said, this guy kind of sounds like Tom. It was. Tolbert and Coves on the Sports Leader. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Adam Copeland back here. Steve Moskowitz hanging out with me on the line. Steve, tax day was yesterday. What do you do if you didn't pay your taxes? The same thing you do if you didn't file your tax. You didn't. And if you didn't, it's not the end of the world. Maybe you didn't file the year before that either. Maybe the year before that. Maybe five, ten years before. Very common. But don't stick your head in the sand. Don't wait for that IRS agent to come knocking on your door. Don't let him go to your customers and order them not to pay you, pay them. They'll ruin the customers what want to know. Instead, talk to them for free. Attorney client privilege consultation. We'll explain all of your rights. All of your options, you have a lot of rights, a lot of options. We have a free attorney client privilege consultation. We'll give you a course of action. And if you'd like us to, we want to do everything for you. So you don't have to talk to the government, deal with them, have anything to do with them. We want to do the whole job. And then we hand you back a normal life. Just give us a call before one of these new agents comes calling. Thanks so much, Steve. Let's see Moskowitz do it for you. one 888 tax dealer online at MoskowitzLLP.com.
is the Todd father. He homers to left field. In Todd, we trust. All right, wrapping things up, another quick 40-minute show today as the uh, Warriors are getting ready to take on the Sacramento Kings up in sack at the Golden 1 Center. We're going to do that again, Tim? We're going to flick the beam again? Is that what we're trying to do? Yeah, I said it. I did it. I, did what I, I, said, I said what I said. I've been rolling with that. It's a play on words. If you're thinking something else, it's on you. Uh, Giants are taking on the Marlins, game two of a three-game series. I found this out in the game notes I was just looking at for the Giants. How about this? If they win today, they'll win their first series in Miami. Since 2016. Tim, they haven't won two of three against the Fish since 2016. Oddly enough, I think the Marlins have made more playoff runs uh, than the Giants, or playoff appearances. Maybe it's as many. Bottom line, they were a a wild card team last year, and we'll get you uh, some award-winning diamond notes coming up here shortly. Uh, Thank you to Tom, our guest, our our one guest today. We didn't have time for uh, for the Draymond sounds for Dre. Yeah, we didn't have time. We'll see if people do care. Uh, thanks, everybody. Check in on the YouTube chat and, uh, and of course, on the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line. Giants and the Marlins, game two of a three-game series. Giants are seeing a lefty for just the uh, the third time this year. They saw James Paxson and Patrick Corbin. They'll see Ryan Weathers tonight. Jordan Hicks takes the ball for the Giants 2-0 and with an ERA of one flat. Thanks to Derek. Thanks to Tim. Giants baseball coming up next. Till then, take it away, Dirk. Oh, my God. Oh! 